I've just gone live, but um, if if you've got the the stream up, I've even got a little bit of fan art on the on the on the front now instead of a video to make it look slightly better. Oh, you know, well, instead of let, slightly let more me, professional. Let me no, let me take a look. A surprise, to be sure. What a welcome one! What a welcome one! What a welcome one! They didn't put an A inside of the A. That would have been difficult, though. Yeah, I don't know if that would work. I guess they probably they probably had a vision of that. It would have um, looked like every frame. Ah, pause. I like the I like the pause on the P though. I've um uh, a couple of people I've spoken to like other YouTubers where they find out like where I'm like oh you can come on to uh, EFAP as a guest. They'll be like, uh, does that stand for anything by the way? And I'll always go like yeah every frame of pause. Then they go oh like they're always pleasantly surprised that it's not just EFAP. <laughs> So no, it's electric, electric jerkaloo. But but it's an F. How'd you get jerkaloo? Because um. All right, that in-depth analysis from Rags. That's why that's you gotta give the people what they want. <laughs> I hope I hope audio levels are good as well. I uh, should be. I mean, you're maybe. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I look at Discord and it's telling me good things, so just, just let me know, chat, say something like, we, we hate how loud X person is, you know. Um, we, yeah, we sort of have a logo, it's wonderful, who are today's guests? Uh, it's just me and Rags, if that's okay. Jeez, Hello. does it always have to be about a guest? God. Are we not um, good enough for you? Despicable, but we will, there, there are a few things that are worth, uh, worth, worth mentioning, so in the last stream... We covered a YouTuber who has since not taken it very well. Uh, first of all, he deleted comments on his video. Uh, then he deleted the videos, or at least made them private. And then he made private basically all of his videos, which you could obviously ask me in rags or whoever else was covering it at the time. Who, who was in that pocket? It was me, you, Alex, and Cinema, Cine, Cinic Snacks, that's it. Uh, none of us would want that. Because the whole point is that everyone gets to say what they want to say, and uh, discussion is encouraged, but that is the unfortunate result, and, um, you know, you, you might be like, oh, well, is, is it just that he just can't take it and he went off? It's like, well, I wish it was something of a, sort of, he just didn't want to, to come on or whatever, but um, he, he said, like, that he's receiving racial slurs, insults, trolling, angry, mm. like, all this horrible mm. stuff. Mm. And I'll have you guys know that at the end of the EFAP, I was curious and went onto his video and went to newest comments because I wanted to make sure that it wasn't, like, toxic. We never, ever, ever want that from this podcast, obviously, because we wouldn't want yeah. it for ourselves. It's very, it's supposed to be self-evident, of course, but, um, so we, 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 I checked it and there was a lot of stuff. There was a top comment that had, like, 12 upvotes already and it said, um, hey, who else here from EFAP with a happy face? So I don't think Hooray. you guys would count that as a, as a troll, right? That's just, <laughs> that's just a happy thing. Uh, someone, I remember reading someone say, it's interesting that you, you know, criticize uh, Wolf for throwing criticisms, at, uh, 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 insults at people, and then he, like, simultaneously does it to everybody he's covering. Like, that doesn't seem to make sense. And then there was a couple of essays, like, people being like, okay, at this point you say this, at this point you say this. And there probably was, I didn't see them myself, but I'm happy to admit there probably is a couple of, like, really angry people or racial slayer people and stuff. But um, he sold it as, like, everybody was doing it and I was just you can check it on Twitter I was just like that that wasn't the case um so you know it, it, it he said at the end he hopes we're proud of stopping his videos which like what how exactly should me and rags even respond it's like we we responded to your uh, assessment yeah. of my video so and yeah man I mean it's all stuff you said and then uploaded to YouTube about people and so, like you us. know, we have this perspective of, like, some, some people, like, you should have a disclaimer, you should, at every point when covering, share with people that you should absolutely not uh, talk about this person. Then there's the other thing, where it's like, don't cover anybody below a certain amount of subscribers. Um, it's not principled, really. Like, the idea is, when you upload to YouTube, you put your voice out there, and you have to accept whatever consequences come as a, as a result, because freedom of speech is cool, but freedom from consequence... <laughs> Is, is a little bit more um, complicated. Now, the comparison would be that if I uh, made, made a video on, let's say, Joseph Anderson, which I technically did with the Soma ones, and he like put out a tweet, 
Actually, I got a better example. I make a video on <laughs> Bomber guy, and he puts out a tweet saying that I didn't understand and, and made it wrong and I have bad criticism. I don't then nuke my channel and say he shouldn't do that because I have a smaller channel. I just accept it because it's part of the response sort of thing. But I mean, this guy didn't uh, didn't only put out his video. He directed it at me and Wolf, and he gave insults to us. So it's just like, how is it that it's not one hundred percent fair game? Yeah, I'm not exactly certain. At what point is and, and I've been saying this for a long, long time. At what point are we not allowed to respond to people who insult us? I mean, how see. big do you have to be? What what's the cutoff line? And how many subs are we allowed to have before we can't respond anymore? And as uh, Sin Sins just said, surely a disclaimer couldn't hurt. And it's like, we, we, we'll happily uh, say what we, we don't want to happen or do. But like, if we had like an intro video for EFAP, which could happen eventually, it could have a couple of highlights and then like a quick explanation of what it is, we might throw a disclaimer in there. That would make sense. But this is just like a casual stream that gets started up where we just watch some videos. And the, the idea is obviously that if there are people out there who are going to go attack other content creators with no other interest in other, other than annoying them or hurting them, then I doubt a disclaimer from us is going to stop them. Because, like, we do talk about it during coverage. We're like, this is not something you should do. It's, uh, it's just leave people alone. Obviously, criticize people, because that's what we're doing and that's what we get, but... Yeah, boy. <sighs> yeah, it's annoying. Um, the, the, the it's unfortunate the guy is because this is it's funny having sin sins in in the in the comments because I would say that he took criticism fantastically compared. <laughs> it's like that's how you do it because we would have had Shinobi odd if he really wanted to and he could clarify some stuff and we may have been able yeah. to like promote him, make a friend out of him, sort of thing. But it just went really badly. Um, and like I said, his most of his channel is now privated, so. And there's nothing much we can do about it other than say you don't need to do that and that um i don't know if you're gonna say you shouldn't insult people don't insult people just remain consistent because i don't think like what's your take on insults rags when you respond to people be prepared to get as much as you give mm -hmm. and uh I'm, I'm okay with insults oftentimes i can ignore them if uh if you had at least got a strong argument otherwise it just seems like you're doing it for uh uh, just to annoy or, or to insult, right? Like, as opposed to sort of switch it up and stay... You know, like, a lot of people, when they're responding, they'll throw funny jabs or s smug responses, and you can sort of get a laugh out of it. And as long as you can see that there's that angle, you're fine. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, to say absolutely none and then do it yourself, that it, it's a bit weird. Uh, and yeah, people will be brutal. Like, this is the thing. When I, you know, if I responded to... Anybody, me and Rags will get bad, bad, negative comments on these EFAPs alone. Yeah. So, um... We're bad people. <laughs> but anyway, you know, it's, uh, there's nothing mo much more we can do. And yes, we, we, we were absolutely in favor of people being nice in, in comment sections, but me and Rags can't control people. Um, uh, z z what else can we say, really? Um, and honestly, um, if you make stuff on YouTube and you get into this, uh, side of it really if you're on youtube at all you just gotta you gotta have a thick skin i mean honestly it kind of starts with you i mean it's only as if it doesn't bother you then it doesn't bother you and that's probably the most you can do to help yourself with this kind of thing is that you just can't you can't let it bother you because mm -hmm. no matter what somebody out there is going to say something mean or somebody's going to make a response to you eventually and if you just and if you just let that stuff get to you on a personal level, then it's not going to do you any good. Like I don't know if YouTube's the platform for you if you are not prepared for this, because this is something that I'm sure Rags knew, and I certainly knew well before even making a video. Like it's uh, it's a tough world on YouTube. You, you're going to get a thicker skin as every day passes, or you'll um, you know, you could do a lot of different things. Like Toll Biscuit gave up his uh comment section and his subreddit and his Twitter until they were, like, uh, curated so that he wouldn't get as bothered and everything could be filtered, which, again, like, that's fine if that's what you want to do. But, uh, you know, you'll get all kinds of stuff on the internet. It's rough. Uh, but we did not encourage anybody to, to rip him to shreds. But, I mean, you know, he, he, called, he called Wolf 
an asshole. He called me an idiot. He called Nostalgia Critic a whole bunch of things, which, again, just opens him up. Because, um, you know, you get you YouTubers who are really inoffensive, and they don't even talk about people ever. They only talk about games or movies or whatever, and, and you'll find that they're rarely uh, attacked. But they still will be. You'll get people who yeah, are like... Yeah, it doesn't matter who you are. People will, people will say mean things about you. It's just the way people are, especially on the internet. But yes, uh, people are probably curious, what's what's the plan for today? Well, uh, we're at, you know, episode 15, which is hugely significant. It's a big number. That's it's, right. You separate um, it out, you get one and five, and you, you add, add them together. Five. That's yeah. the, um, the, the 15th is, um, like, like uh, you know how every, every, like, anniversaries have, like, a different... Like a stone or a precious metal or a mm -hmm, mm -hmm. thing like that. Uh, ours is um uh, the the fifteenth traditional anniversary gift is crystal, and it's not like an anniversary, but we are at the big one five. The one five. Um. Yeah. And so if you separate so, it out, it equals six, and, right? Yeah. Like and the five. most popular song fifteen years ago was "In the Club" by Fifty Cent. That's true too. You have to consider yeah. these things. It's very important. So. You take that, and then you take the you separate them out into one and five equals six. You take that, and then you take me and Rags, which are, are two people. That's two. You take that off the six, which is four. So now we got four. And, and that's, what name? It, that's a that's almost my age in dog years. What name is four letters long? Rags. That's true. What other name is four letters long? Um. Uh. uh Adam. Adam, that's another one. Is yeah. The, Bill? Is, is the, the, what? <laughs> Hello, everybody. <laughs> I was going with wolf is a four-letter word. I mean, geez. Oh, yeah. What do you know? That fucking that profile work. picture. It's fucking amazing. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Look, I mean, I think that Quentin is, he's got some skeletons in his closet. He, he doesn't like those orange people, you know? I, I think he... I think he's got a little bit of an issue with them, with them orangies. Well, uh, I, I was going to say that's from his older days. He doesn't like people bringing up that um, that moment, that time. Did you just make that, by the way? <laughs> like, is this something you planned? I made this four days ago. <laughs> of course you did. It's the uh, it's perfect. We're lucky. Quinton will never touch uh, EFAP. He's far above that. He's like Joe's fan. So. We can do anything we want and say anything we want because he won't. Uh, he wouldn't dare. He wouldn't dare That's reference just EFAP. That's an anodyne statement. But yes, welcome back, Wolf. Do you know it's been thirty-one hours of EFAPing since you've been here? Thirty-one hours. Yeah. I mean, Man. considering the uh, the response to Quinton, that's not really a surprise, right? That's like a third of it. <laughs> me and me and Rags uh, really sorted that out. Yeah, I I watched all the Quentin one after I left. Yeah, and then I watched the TRO one, but I couldn't finish it because he was really pissing me off. Not because it was wouldn't... eleven hours. <laughs> well, <laughs> no, that no, fine. no, no. I I mean, TRO was pissing me off. Oh, in, in what way? It, Wait, wait, it's you mean the, the one? Just the like all one? the shitty yeah. excuses he was making for Quentin. It's like we have video evidence of him constantly taking rags out of context and misrepresenting his arguments. And then you're just going to sit here and jerk us around and not admit that he's just a piece of shit. He was very uh, clearly a bit emotional because uh, the fact is, like I told you, I gave him all the timestamps he needed. So we could, in, in the same way that you do for like prosecutors and defenders in law, like, you give them all the evidence beforehand so they can prepare defenses. I was like, here's here's all the biggest things we're going to hit on. And then he was just like, oh yeah, I didn't check it out. And I was like, no! Because now it's I, I, awkward, because you just have to deal with it face value. Damn it! I'm sorry, someone said Wolf's back, Bilbo Baggins. <laughs> <laughs> I like that the Bilbo memes, they're still going too much. The months. Bilbo meme has survived, despite so many people having no idea what it is. Yeah, it's amazing. Do you think the majority of our audience doesn't know what the Bilbo meme is? I genuinely think, and this is a loud minority that keeps the Bilbo memes alive. I, I know, know of it. I'm more familiar with Rhino Milk, though. Oh yeah, that's the popular. Well, one. You, your internet died right as the Bilbo meme was being born. Yep. Yeah, that's a shame. 
That would have been a great... We, we should just cover that video on some kind of anniversary, like the 100th EFAB. We'll just cover that video again. And, and <laughs> yeah, when the yeah, Bilbo thing comes up, people will be like, oh my god, I finally get it. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe um, we can do that as the Christmas special, Bilbo Baggins. A very special Shire Christmas. So, uh, how are you, Wolf? Is there anything you want to sort of catch everyone up with, or...? I'm doing good. I haven't been on the internet too much lately. Oh, maybe I should rephrase that. I haven't been on YouTube too much lately. Obviously, I haven't been on uh, Twitter or Facebook, which is actually great. It's like, wow, the, the normal world is much more peaceful mm -hmm. when you don't have to hear about people arguing about stupid shit no one cares about. Oh, Although yeah. I heard the creator of SpongeBob died yesterday, and that's yeah, really Steven upsetting Hunberg. to me. Yeah. Yeah, from uh, ALS as well. I, I was I was curious what would kill someone at 50-something, because it's always... At 50-something, it's usually not, you know, going to be some kind of horrible disease, and it's just like, ugh. Yeah, I was a little upset by that. Wouldn't have found out if he didn't send me that, uh, that tweet from Shinobi <laughs> about how he was, like, losing his mind. Yeah, a little bit. He hasn't... I don't, I don't know if he's said anything since, but, uh... We did, we've done our best to cover that in the opening of this, this EFAP. There's nothing more we can do, I'm afraid. We'll just not cover him again, even if he covers us, because apparently it's... I don't know, it, it just like ruins his psyche, and I don't, I don't particularly want to do that to him, so... If we'd known this in advance, we would totally have covered something else, people, okay? Just didn't realize that was going to happen. I feel I sorry for Nostalgia Critic a little bit. <laughs> like, he tore into him. I just think him. it's stupid, because it's like, you, you made... Was it four or five videos on us? Four, made, I think it was like yeah four and then update like a, or an I'm sorry or something mm -hmm. yeah and I'm sorry that really wasn't much of an apology anyway and wasn't even warranted in the first place and on top of that I guess he had like numerous videos on Nostalgia Critic so I, I his whole channel is guy. like yeah I mean his whole channel is based on shitting on other YouTubers I mean and because of his videos sorry. I went and watched uh, Nostalgia Critic's uh, a Wrinkle in Time video and it was good. <laughs> Oh, well, we're covering him in future, apparently, for the uh, Van Helsing thing, so that'll be interesting. Yeah, we gotta watch Van Helsing. Shit, man, yeah, we got loads of plans. EFAP is just brimming Oof. with ideas, because... Uh, it's booming. Have you guys heard? A certain yes. Anderson of the Joseph variety has put out a new video that basically spits in everything that we consider to do with art. Not directly, it's not like he mentions us, but... Nothing in art is, is objective. Oh, well, he says subjectivity is implied, so... Everything is subjective, and even if it's, it doesn't sound like it is, it's, it is. Yeah, well, when did Joseph Anderson ever know anything about art? Uh, Somer's not a horror game, how dare you? What? What? <laughs> what? <laughs> but yeah, uh, it wasn't a huge shock, by the way, for any- someone's- I saw someone put a super chat in, uh, Wolf's channel is actually already in the description, as well as I took a screenshot of, of, of his, his PFP is going to be in the thumbnail. So a couple of people would have found it surprising, but a lot of people would have been like, why are they fucking around? Wolf's coming back, right? What the, fuck, what the fuck's going on? <laughs> also, um, yeah, I don't know if uh, you want to say anything else, Wolf, before I sort of set up what we're actually here to do today. Uh, yeah, sure. I'll say a couple things. Uh, I haven't really done much on YouTube, so I'm kind of out of the loop on a lot of things. Uh, been watching all the EFAPs, though, aside from quitting halfway through the TRO one. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, I've been looking at the comments and looking at the chat, and it's just nice to see all the people that were, like, mentioning me. It's pretty cool to me. You have been missed. Yes. Th thank you, chat. That's I, pretty much I, what... I, I like EFAP that. is a collection of our three fan bases. I, I pretty much see it as, anyway. Yeah, I we guess. do have a lot of crossover. Mm -hmm. Makes mm -hmm. sense, considering we like popped into all of each other's podcasts. <laughs> we need, we need Let me remove chips. Adolf Quentin from the screen real quick. <laughs> it's too late. It's too late. It'll be there forever. It's like when people hold their hand up to the camera. It's, like, it's too late, mate. Once they get you once, it's over. Oh, oof, I forgot. I deleted my last profile picture. I gotta re-download it. <laughs> Just go on to another one now. <laughs> yeah. It's nice that I think because you put my my current profile picture on the thumbnail, right? Oh, the whole that's a thing, Rags. I I haven't talked to you about the whole water is Whoa. wet thing. That's gone crazy. There's people 
have started like a war about that in the in the not only on YouTube but on on Twitter as well. And like I keep really? getting added with videos that explain how one side is right or how the other side. And at this point, I'm just like, yeah, I'm good. <laughs> I'm backing away from this now. The whole water is wet. I'm just gonna oh, say man. water is a liquid from now on. And uh, someone pointed water out water is a liquid. Yes. Uh, on my post to Joseph Anderson, I actually said that uh, there's some things that are just factual, like water is a liquid, because <laughs> I have clearly. Uh, Accommodated that now into, into my into my language. It, it's there's loads of poles I've seen, and they're split so far down the middle. It's crazy. Like there's, it's like a fundamentally a semantic thing, which is fine because we're going to be doing that at one point later today with a whole different subject. But um, fascinating to watch. And yeah, um, th there is a question I want to ask you, Wolf. That's not actually related to the water, and that is we're going to run this. It's like almost like a bet, but with no winning or losing. Who is going to be the most inconsistent character of episode nine? And your choices are everybody but Kylo, because that's the obvious one. Ah, uh, who took the Kylo one? No, it's, that's no, the. You can choose whoever you want, except Kylo, because everybody would go with Kylo if that was an option. Oh, <laughs> just um, to give you an idea, we got me and uh, Cynic Snacks went with Finn. Uh, Alex has gone with Poe, and Rags has gone with Hux. Hmm. I'm gonna go with Ray because she changes her personality every eleven minutes. Does she? From what to what? That that's the million dollar question, isn't it? She doesn't know what she wants to be, so you can never really nail down what she's supposed to be. Well, Ryan Johnson doesn't know what she wants. She's gonna be either. <laughs> exactly. Well, I was gonna say I I would have said she doesn't change necessarily just because she's like nothing. She's a nothing burger the whole time. I think so too. That's kind of how I feel. But I mean, you know, it could. This is the thing though. That could be the interesting point that maybe in this one she's so radically different to the other two. She's well, maybe just she very has a consistently period. She's consistently what? Consistently inconsistent. All right. Some people thought I said Adolf Clinton in the chat. <laughs> Adolf Clinton. Yeah, um, it, it's it's close. The names are the names are similar, and they they are kind of fascist in nature, but mm -hmm. no, not quite. Fun fact about my profile picture: this wolf, I actually met him. Hmm. Yes, in Colorado. Did you, did you get his consent to <laughs> use his imagery for your? Profile picture. Look, he's not like Anita Sarkeesian, okay? He allows you to take pictures of him. That's beautiful. He even plays tug of war. He, he's a fun. He's a fun wolf. Yeah, I, I kind of wish we'd been doing this since the beginning of EFAP to get all the guests' takes on this. But from now on, we will we will ask that for every guest, and uh, we'll see once we all see episode nine, and we'll probably have an EFAP about episode nine. Like it won't even cover a video. We'll just talk about it, I imagine. And man. It'll be fun to figure out who was right. The reason I'm going with Finn was because um, I'm almost certain he's going to be this like radical hero type thanks to the end of The Last Jedi, and it's just going to be like bizarre compared to everything he's been through before, as well as mm -hmm. how he's a yeah, I probably idiot. would have chosen Finn if you didn't already, because I, I can't nail down what they're trying to do with him. Well, I, I think they're all really good choices, because I think like Hux, for example, is funny, because it depends on which Hux they're going with. Are they going to go with the Force Awakens <laughs> Hux, or the Last Jedi Hux? We'll find out. And then you've got Poe, who... What the hell is Poe going to be in the next one? Leader Man, maybe? Leader Man. You never know with these things. You never know. Maybe they should just, like, completely rip off what he was in Ex Machina, since he was actually a character in that movie. Man, I like that movie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I like that movie too. Um, but yeah, that's I mean that's that. Unless unless there's anything else, we can talk about why we're here today. Either either yeah yeah okay well <laughs> the um <laughs> as many people will be aware of um practically like I don't know the actual timeline, but it's like on the day that Wolf fucking left. Or went on his hiatus. I think it, I think it was like two days uh, afterward. Yeah. Eric Taxon's video came out. You may have heard of him. Uh, he did a response to Wolf's video on forced diversity, which many of you we enjoyed. use we use the word response very loosely. Mm -hmm. uh, he... I think it's because I think it's because he feels like without uh, diversity hires, he wouldn't ever have a job. <laughs> so what you, I, th I think I know what you're getting at, but uh, um, we'll, 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 we'll delay this. Shall, shall we bring forth the Well, I was going to say, just the setup is that uh, this is why we're covering this, is that Wolf's just come back and fuck it, that's going to be the main thing people want you to cover. I know that um, it's been a while, but let's be honest, me and what Rags took fucking ages to respond to uh, Quentin and Tiaro, so this is, this is 
this is expedient compared to that, you know? And um, Yeah, th this is like a Jared Genesis review. You know, you got to marinate <laughs> on it a little bit. But so, then it's amazing when it comes out. We were going to jump right into it, but he's disabled ratings. And so before, you know, I see you chat. I can see you, you go, you're jumping onto the whole, oh, what a, what a coward or trying to ignore criticism. No, no, no. No, no, he's, he's got a video explaining why, because it's much more complicated than you may think. So we're going to check that out first, and then we're going to look at the response. Shield your eyes, everyone. So, um, yeah, that's, that's, that's about it. So just, let me just take down the, uh, the Prepare thing. Prepare thine selves. So this is the, this is the video. Everybody's Buckle in. Buckle thy bootstraps. Um, it, I just, yeah, the only thing left to say is, is everybody ready, I suppose? He's going to explain oh. to us why he hides likes. Could, could we... I like that he says why he hides likes rather than why he hides dislikes, by the way. <laughs> I love the, the, the first... I just look at the chat, I want to see... <laughs> oof, what? oof, oof, dear God. Sweet G... A lot of sweet Jesuses. I know, but... Okay, okay chat, I, I, want to, I want to hold your hand. We're going to, we're going to do this together because we're a family. So, what we are looking at here is the bastardized love child of YMS and Freddie Mercury in his late stage of AIDS. And he's going to tell us, you know, it's not a very nice whole... thing. It's not a very nice thing to say about somebody with a facial disability. <laughs> <laughs> not to mention it's like Wolf is back. Yep. Here we go. This is definitely evidence that Wolf is back. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, I don't have any qualms with, uh, with criticizing his looks or anything else about him, mostly because he shit talks me a lot in his video. So, you're fair game, Eric. Um, yeah. I, yeah, unfortunately, I, I he, did. Him, he did. He did. I want to call him blood. Eric. I want to call him Eric, but I also want to call him Marika. I don't know what gender he's going for here. He's his gender. I believe his pronouns are he they. I he, do they. believe that is how he likes to be referred to. So. Do you think that hair's real? Um, because it looks really. Well, I'll tell you what. It does look you like. Think you buy that low quality of a wig. I was gonna say that does look like the kind of thing you would buy, but it might just be because he hasn't like styled it at all. I don't know if you have hair that long. I would have thought you'd want to do something with it as opposed to just leaving it as it is. But I mean, everybody's up to do whatever I mean, they yeah, want with their hair. I mean, just do what I did: shave your head bald and grow a really big beard. Then you'll yeah. be fine. And then Just Kratos. do Kratos. Like <laughs> yeah, that's yeah, the exactly. Kratos way. So my friends even photoshopped me as Kratos. I mean, my hair's that long, and I always, I always comb it. Really? And, well, yeah, combing yeah. and put it in a ponytail or something like a. Yeah, but I, and I've got like fo facial hair, and it, I trim it at the ends, and I make sure that it's all in place and that it's neat looking. I mean, I have people to impress in my life. Man, I have to completely reevaluate the image I had of you in my head because I didn't expect a long oh, the old part. one. Oh, I'll send you a pic of me later. But <laughs> I'm like, I don't like anything like I used to. Oh, will you? That's okay. the thing. Like you're just hiding behind a profile picture, bitch. I'm gorgeous. Freaking not even half an hour, and then e February returns, and you guys are sending nudes to each other. It's fucked up, dude. Look, it's been a while. This is true. This is true. We got a bit to release, but anyway, he is going to tell us why he hides likes and dislikes, and I'm not saying that if he'd allowed them, his wolf, his video on wolf would show a bit of criticism, <laughs> but it's interesting that they're gone. So anyway... I, I love that people are calling you rag in the chat. <laughs> that, I can't I believe that, that kicked off so I don't know who so that much. is. I don't know who that is. Hmm? So, I... I don't know who rag is. That's totally rag you. Is? Rag, I, rag is a person I don't know. I don't know who Rag is. Can I be Rag? And you can be the Rags. That could be confusing. Yeah. Who was it again? Oh yeah, it was one of Tiaro's editors, I guess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which is that's rag, what I mean. It's such a rag, weird apost rag apostrophe s. Wolf Rag and Skull on Wheels. <laughs> it just feels like it came out of nowhere with that shit. This um, belongs to Rag. Rags. Rags is. Ragu. Raggy. Oh, <laughs> all right. Anyway, Raggle. so Eric is going to enlighten us as to maybe why we should all hide likes. You know, if this the, wait, if the yeah. advice is for strong. his music, he doesn't hide the likes, dislikes, does yeah, he? Yeah, yeah. You're gonna you're gonna discover exactly why he hides likes. I, I want you guys to before we get into his video on me, just just think to yourselves, why exactly? Who who are the kind of people you think he typically hides likes from? 
well, um, alt right Nazis? Absolutely. Like you. I'm exactly. gonna go with I'm gonna go with Russian 4chan bot trolls. <laughs> It's is one or the other. It's always one well, or the other. Well, it's it's me. It's uh, he he did one on the amazing atheist. He did one on Paul Joseph Watson. And you are People all alt right, and you're all fairies. Like that's how that Absolutely. works, right? Alt right. Yeah, P yeah, yeah. PJW is a furry. <laughs> Absolutely. If he was a furry, his, yeah. his persona would be. Um, Something I sobbing. Imagine my shock. Always has those like about to cry eyes. <laughs> I, I'm thinking a raccoon. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that could work. That's a that's a weird. We haven't even started this video. I'm already bored of it. But yeah, <laughs> we should. <laughs> um, well, all right. Maybe, maybe when he starts talking, it'll get worse. So yeah, his Sona name can be Joe Paulsif Watson. <laughs> Paulsif. I love Joe. that name. Uh, you, you well, guys, you guys already? Y'all, oh, we are Walsh all already. Y'all, Joseph Potson, I believe. <laughs> oh yeah, dude, Walsh. If you got a shaven Walsh. head, they will compare you to a skinhead now. You're a, you're a freaking, you're even worse. <gasps> oh, I no. just need to get like a tattoo on my head now. A big like old a nose ring. And yeah. then you can say, no, 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 I converted to Hinduism. This is a symbol that represents the four winds. Uh, no, and I, then you can I call racism on to, them. I converted to Kratosism. Did you see that, by the way? Not to go off topic, oh, but they, they were trying were just, to... I thought you were just a faggot. They're no, trying well, to classify yes, but... Islamophobia as racism somewhere. I saw it on Twitter. Apparently, like, some government is trying to uh, uh, mm. treat Islamophobia as racism. And, well, like... well, you see, there, there are black Muslims, Middle Eastern Muslims, Asian Muslims, and white Muslims. So, racist yeah, sure against that works. every race in the world, then? We're all one race under Allah. <gasps> <laughs> yeah, I, I, oh, is it France, Sweden? I don't know. You guys would probably know it in chat. Uh, That's the I'm UK gonna government? Take oh, a, God. I'm gonna take a jab at Sweden. I'm almost positive it's then. But it to exactly like absolutely it. get get on get on track, let's let's hear it from, from Mr. Eric, shall we? Salah Allah Allah wa salam. Good afternoon, viewers. This is my new camera. And I'm I'm taking this opportunity to camera. do a little vlog, you know, like like the normal big boy YouTubers do. Are you a boy so, or are you a girl? The question. Well, did he misgender himself? Well, he did say he did say him they correct. So, so big boy YouTubes are hims. I believe that is how it was. So shouldn't it be this is our new camera? <laughs> if, his pronoun, if his pronoun is they, shouldn't it Does, be? Do you think he has a communist flag saying, in the background? Is he saying that's how you'd want he'd want to be referred to in the? I forget what the the name is. You know, like how you could refer to rags as they if if you were like, no. How, when is this? I don't fucking know how words work. Are you kidding me? It's, like it's if, impossible. if you didn't know what my gender was, which is strange, which is strange considering how how, how often I flop my big ass dick around. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But if you didn't know and you were still unsure. I get, or if you just heard the name Rags, you could be like, "Oh, I don't. I, that's that's kind of that's kind of um, what's the name? Um, androgynous name. I can go either way. So I'm just gonna call Rags they until I know. Ragger, Ragger. Is that the female, the feminine version? Ragas, Rags, Ragses. Gollum has got a hold of your name. But yes, anyway. Um. I have been getting a lot posed in both nice and mean ways is uh, why do I hype likes on my on my YouTube videos um, and and why specifically the here's thing you don't hide likes you hide dislikes well I guess he hides both of there's got to be someone out there who liked it come on ranks come on let's go essays as well like the, <laughs> leave the likes on in the albums but not in the essays well yeah interesting it's, it's not it's not to to get get rid of any sort of dissent that I might might end up being exposed to. That's mm -hmm. right. <laughs> yeah, sure. that's what they're. Uh -huh. it's yeah. not no, what it's guys, for. I don't hide likes just because I don't want people to shit on me for my stupid opinions. I I get the likes and the dislikes. It's still functional. It's it's hiding them, not disabling them, as many people it's say. It's basically the same as it's disabling. The same yeah, well, thing because. You're the only one who would know. Well, you know why, right? Because uh, likes and dislikes help you in SEO, or like at least it'll push your video. However, so if he was to disable them, it would actually be detrimental to him. But if he simply he... hides them, 
Then I'm sorry, is, is, is he pulling a Brett Keen? Because I distinctly remember his wife being like, now everyone, the likes and dislikes are still enabled, you just can't see them. Mm. That's what that's what it's for. It's it's to get the benefits of likes and dislikes, but to remove you know the the down he's, side he's of it. He's literally doing a a Brett King. Okay. <laughs> Why does Wolf's impression of Eric Jackson sound like a gay hag hill? <laughs> well, well, you'll man. you'll come to understand this is this is not a very straight person we're looking at here. He might. They might be. Sorry, I didn't want to didn't want to fuck that. Up. Look, look at <laughs> their shirt. Yeah, that's an interesting shirt. But hey, you know. Yeah, that's an interesting shirt. Look at the uh, color I, of their wall. I was about to say, their wall is... There is some lore here. We've got a <laughs> book in the background. Here. I'm not sure what the deal is with that. And then the ca Can you see the camera? It's like tilted kind of weird in the bottom left. Is that a camera? I assume it is. I, I don't, don't know. I don't think that's a camera. I think that's... Um, it looks like a speaker, like a really small speaker. Oh, it could be a speaker. Yeah, it looks like a speaker. Maybe like the faceplate isn't on or something. I can't tell what that is. I don't know either. Chat, tell us what that is, so we can find out the tax and the lore. Yeah, they're the, they're the real lore experts. It's a metronome. Oh. Oh. Neat. Mm. That makes sense. You know, I remember I used to, I used to, um, yeah, I used to use a metronome when I played piano. Before I could learn how to keep the will time building, in my head like an adult. The will building for Eric Taxon is much more consistent than Jared Genesis, I will say that. Well, so far, but we already, we know so little, that's the thing. That's true. We, we know so This is little. just one angle, who knows what's going on. The One guy in the chat said piano. One guy in the Pencil chat shop. said, "God damn atheist vote box." <laughs> well, that's, atheist vote bots. That's some deep lore. Fucking atheist vote bots. I can still see exactly how many dislikes a video gets, um, and I can get the pithy amount of feedback that you get from that. So it's not. It's not really. It's not for any reason like like that, like any of any of the shitlords would would have you believe. It's actually because um, I don't think any of you really need to see that information. <laughs> I, what? I don't think you need to see it. But okay. it's perfectly fine to see it on his music videos. It's, yeah. Listen, it's, it's not because it's not because I don't need to see it. It's because you don't need to see it. <laughs> I just like the, he's like, I'm, I'm your dad, like you don't need to see it. He's okay? making it up as he's going along. It's like, mm-hmm. Oh, uh -huh. Like, what it means is that someone's raid is working. Like, that, that's the feed. No, it doesn't. Right. Wow, see, you were right. You're, uh, you, we, we were right, the raid. Someone's raid is working. Because you know if know somebody funny. dislikes your video, it's because someone raided your video. And those dislikes aren't really dislikes. You know, what's funny is that uh, after he made this video, I noticed a very high spike in dislikes on my uh, video mm -hmm. on Force Diversity. Only problem is, is that it has so many likes that it doesn't matter at all. Also, are we yeah, supposed to really get good. into what is what one needs to see? Like, do you really want to go yeah, there? Er Eric, we, we don't need to see what we're looking at on screen right well, now. We didn't need to see anything from his chat. What, is, what does that even mean? Nobody needs to see anything on YouTube unless they're, you know, in a situation where the video would save their lives. <laughs> like, what, what, I don't Fucking understand. classic nonsense. If people dislike my video, if there are a lot of dislikes on my video, it's not because I have shitty opinions and can't back them up. It's because I was raided by Russian Fortran alt-right bots or whatever. Fortran? <laughs> Fortran. 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 Feedback that, that you get, like if if it has a lot of dislikes, it means your raid is working. <laughs> okay. So what does yeah, he, I thought, what does he I, think okay. the dislikes mean I, on I, Wolf's I, I video? I got it. I got it. So it means that uh, every video in history is only disliked if there's a raid. Yeah, you know, Rebecca Black's Friday, that was because it was a raid. Everybody actually loved that song. Oh, it was yeah. an amazing totally. song. The it trailer for Battlefield Fox. 5. Everyone loved it. It was just a raid. Yeah, Call Fucking of Duty amazing. Infinite Warfare, the most disliked video on YouTube. Everyone yeah, loved it. The Battlefield 5 trailer, it was just a bunch of um, Russian men's bots. rights activists, ninja men, Russian, uh, bots. Russian trolls, ninjas from outer space. <laughs> Makes sense to me. And I, I don't, I don't think I need to give you that that consolation. That's that's not my responsibility. You can. That's so fucking. He's so How are we supposed to that. find out for ourselves if you disable the radio? Stop yeah, just really. being able to get that information. It's just so fucking pathetic. He just you. If if something has dislikes, it's because 
a bunch of people raided my channel and disliked it. There's not really a reason. It's not because of me. It's not because of anything I said. It's not because of the agency of my audience. You can't even give them the credit for that. It's got to be I mean, sort of fucking... I mean, he's practically raids... said he can't make a bad video at this point. He's practically said Yeah, that. I mean, it, look, raids do happen. We're not saying that they're just non-existent. Mm -hmm. However, he's trying to say that, like, any mass dislikes against his videos must be a raid. But remember, he has... He makes uh, music. I don't really care about any of it. I don't think it sounds good, but whatever. That's subjective on my part. But he doesn't disable the ratings there. But he's saying, you don't need to know that information. Well, why do we need to know it on your music videos? Not yeah, to mention, why, why, did, why did they get the music videos? I guarantee you, when he was, if you talk to anybody about your video, and it's, I, I doubt he looks at the likes, dislikes, and goes, those dislikes? Yeah, that's just a raid. Wolf's video was loved by all. Like, I wonder if he ap ap applies this to other content creators, uh, probably just himself. Which People then makes you go, it. he really thinks his videos would never be disliked? Are you kidding? So, Wolf, how did you feel when you found out that people were raiding your Black Panther <laughs> review? I mean, clearly I'm the second coming of Hitler, so Makes felt sense. it was I thought that was Clinton. Well, <laughs> let's see, Qu Quentin's closeted. He, he still needs to come out a little. I fucking hate Trump. Anyway, back to my <laughs> movie review. <laughs> God, that was such a bad segue. So funny, though find out for yourself and and the other reason like if if i do get raided you know what, what happens is that that big old dislike bar it, it... what if you're raided by somebody who likes you what, what, what if you what if h bomb because he's friends with h bomber guy as far as i know and Oof. that guy has more than two hundred thousand subs i believe so if he promoted you and people raided and started liking would you be like no 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 no, no we have to disable it because that's positive rating and that's negative information I mean, you can use the same exact logic with seeing disabled ratings because because when I whenever I see disabled ratings, no matter the video, I immediately don't want to watch it. Yeah, me too. I'm the same way. If comments are disabled and likes and dislikes are hidden, that's the thing. You have to hide them. By default, they're on. You have to go and you have to change that. Such a you have to go out of your argument. way. It's more work. And besides, yeah, and everyone can be raided or not raided, therefore, ratings mean the same. It was like, why do you you specify that these particular... So weird. Everybody just lets the ratings open, and they'll mean what they mean. And nobody hides ratings if they're very, very positive, but that mm. will color people's impressions, too. Yeah, Just true. the way that you want. So, I mean, it, it sounds like you kind of want it both ways. God, this is the stupid Colors Anita Sarkeesian method of we're we're gonna hide it so we don't get harassment <laughs> someone yeah. said i it's wouldn't all, even raid you i wouldn't <laughs> even raid you it's impressions you know like i i hide it so you you can you can make up your own i mind, can make up my know? own mind what? with the likes and dislikes shown does he think the disabling ratings has no effect on someone's assumption about your video if i see I that i'm like oh, oh yeah that makes me think worse of you in your video yeah, like, it gives me a negative start to watching it, but, you know, fine. Yeah, man, that, that's, like, the worst impression you can do, is to hide likes and dislikes, and I think disabling comments is even worse, but the number two is hiding your like and dislike ratio. Oh, I, I want to encourage just, just, just a, bit, a bit of a bit of a conversation. You're hiding the conversation. Just, like, well, what about your yeah. music ones? Does it make yeah. sense? Does it make sense, Eric? Eric, please! Well, no, Can you imagine if you went on Amazon and you wanted to buy, like, say, a new keyboard and they hid the the five star ratings or all the star ratings? Sorry. And you're like, well, is this piece of shit plastic keyboard just as good as this other uh, hundred dollar keyboard? Well, well, they don't want to color your perspective. They exactly. want you to go in with a fresh, you know, a fresh mind an open mind, so that when that keyboard arrives, maybe it's good, maybe it's a piece of shit. Exactly. Oof. This logic doesn't work, Eric. But it's you won't idiot. know until it arrives. Which means we're left to assume what the real reason is. It's like, hey, I did from criticism. Let's and, be yeah. honest. And, uh, you know, it's just a fact. You look at his channel, and all the people that he criticizes, who he hides the dislikes from, it's typically people that are either right wing 
or someone he perceives as being right wing. Why don't you just we'll disable the comments as part. well at this point, considering they can be they can make someone biased, you know? Or just disable everything. Oh, absolutely. If the, if the logic right. is only, I want people to go in without anything changing the conversation. Like, hmm. Just yeah. seems odd to me. I don't know how much more he's going to add to like this. Comments. I think forcing someone to actually verbalize their distaste for my content instead of just clicking a button. How much you want button. to bet that he disables, or er, not forcing... disables, but uh, hides comments that he doesn't like? Does he think that if you take the ability away... He, he didn't even take the ability away to do it, but he thinks that if he disables the ability to see the likes and dislikes, people will be forced to verbalize their perspective. There's plenty of people who will go, if I can't actually... Uh, make comments that I'm just gonna fucking uh, can't can't leave a rating. I'm just gonna leave it anyway. You know. Yeah. I. This is like most people don't leave comments anyway, especially when it comes to. You know, really, really, either way, all they do is they just like, dislike, and be on their way. Um, I see the logic that if you if you make it so that no one can see how much is liked or disliked, then they'll have no expectation going in. But if you remove likes and dislikes from a video on. It, from being visible on YouTube, that has way more of a stigma. Like, you should be aware of that. Oh, yeah, there's no way he doesn't know. And it's not like that's a new stigma. That's been around since as long as I've been on YouTube. Mm -hmm. And I never, even if I make the worst video ever and it gets no likes, I never want to be disabling ratings. That's... Uh... It's a bad precedent to set. Mm. Uh, actually, type it out um, is... Is is healthy, you know? It'll it'll get it'll get the the mind wheels turning. And so is it unhealthy to do, to rate a video now? <laughs> what about the people who are rating it ad leaving comments? And then what about the music videos? Eric, please. Not to mention, I mean, have you looked at the YouTube comment section on like any given video? You're saying yeah. that the haha your mom gay comments are just as constructive as like leaving a like or a dislike. Mm -hmm. I mean, well, come yeah. on, dude. Stay consistent, or at least make an attempt to stay consistent. I know that's and it, it. It has nothing to do with how much hate the video gets. The 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 mm -hmm. likes are hidden as soon as it goes up. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I I so you'd call that preemptive, then, Eric? <laughs> that's what that's what that would be. You you're gonna have to take my word for it, but the funny games video I just put up is is very very warmly received, and and the the likes are still hidden. Up. Why wouldn't you just show it if it was and true? Show them. <laughs> you could even do it now. You could you could just be like, yeah, here's a screen. I mean, even a screenshot could be faked, but I mean, on that one, I, I I think it's kind of funny because the the people on the other side they like to what frame side? it like like I'm. A what other? Oh, the other side. Oh, the other side. People. You know he's saying politics. I mean, maybe. I just, so, um, I just think he means normal people, people on the other side. Oh, no, um, I'm sure for like, this, the sake of this video, it's about the other side being the side that is concerned about seeing the ratings. But, I mean, this this channel and, and the, the, the the people that he, he's a part of the crowd of, it's it's definitely an air of, like, uh-oh, this is, this is left versus right, isn't it? This isn't just neutral. Which is weird, because everything gets turned into that. I'm just saying it's an assumption. I, I'm not saying it's true. It's just that. Um... Well, it's like that's the thing. Like, forced diversity isn't a really a left-right issue. Like the like Tim Pool no, is on the left, totally, and he hates forced diversity. It's totally a right issue. He makes this point in the video. You know, the video that shows about a minute of my 18 oh, minute video. For anyone's concerned, this is only going to last like another minute or so because he starts talking about other things. So we'll we're only going to go as far <laughs> as he explains saying. this. So you can't someone hate said, on him um, for it. Someone said, the other side of what? The wall? <laughs> the wall of no likes and dislikes. Oh, yeah, I'm uh, censoring dissent. But I can still see it. Uh, it's it's not for me. It's, yeah, it's, it's just no one what? else can. Who cares if you can see it? Nobody else... It's like... No, no one has any idea what the hell's it's received as, other than if they I go through somehow all the somehow highly doubt that he actually goes and, like, pays attention to his own ratings. Me. It's, it's not for me to be shielded from any kind of criticism, mm. cause I can still see Except it. That's you, exactly what you're You dummies? Doing. You dummies. Uh, you'd have well, to go and search it out, still. You'd have to go into your comments. Like, you, you, but you've disabled the easiest way to see if people have approved of your video from face value. 
Yeah, man. I mean, that's that's immensely used for me as a content creator. That's very useful information for me to have because you cannot use comments to really be a primary judge of whether people like it or not. I mean, the comments in tandem with the ratio can tell you a lot. That's why a Joseph Anderson video, for instance, could have way more likes than dislikes, but the comments are very mixed. That's true. Yeah, there's lots of interesting, interesting things you can get from um, a like-dislike ratio. Yeah. Next topic. Um, um, well, that's it, I suppose. Um, so, if anyone's wondering why they can't see likes or dislikes on his video that covers Wolf, it's because he doesn't want people going in to decide on how they feel about it before they've seen it, even though they could just look at comments anyway, so I, I really don't get the logic. And, and like I said, he, well, like we've said, it's opened up on his music channel. Um, oh, music videos, sorry. The whole thing yeah, doesn't really channel, make a lot of sense. But... Well, yeah, he's got a double standard because his music isn't going to be controversial from, like, people don't like the music style, or they do, depending on, you know, person to person. But that's, you know, that's something completely different. When you're oh, criticizing so you... someone and you disable the likes and rating, or the ratings and comments, or one or the other, doesn't matter, then that shows you're a coward. Well, he called you a dummy, so... Uh... How do, you, how do you feel about that, Wolf? Yeah, big dummy. I feel deeply offended, but not quite as offended as having to look at him, so I guess I can let it slide. Um, I figured since they're stacking up, I should jump into Super Chats before we get into the, the main event. But Oh um, yeah, I've seen a lot of Super Chats. So let's let's start with the, you know, I'll, I'll read these out and take careful consideration with each one. Um, your mum gay. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> thank you very much. Uh, first to have a live EFAP, excellent. Early EFAP is best EFAP. Very, I, I could see why that would be something people would want. Love Yourself Mola currently working on a critique of the Alien Quadrilogy and was wondering what advice you'd give for new critics on YouTube. Complicated, because everybody has a different method of breaking things down. If you were like me and like to do the whole chronological thing, then um, just make sure you watch the film a couple times, look at what other people are saying, and uh, redraft. Redraft is like my, my core advice to anybody. No, first draft. No, first draft for everything. Uh, who cares about a disclaimer? Stop babying people like they have no agency of their own. If you don't, uh, if you didn't tell them to directly do it, then that's that. This is the internet. Words can't hurt you. Deal with it. I mean, that, that's a principle I can respect. If someone said, I don't tell my audience to do anything because it's on them, um, I can understand it. But there is the argument of, what if the disclaimer even knocked off 5% of the hate, is it not worth it to throw it out at that point? Um, what do you guys think about that? Um, I mean, I, I generally, I, I say it because it's just so, you can just say it really quick. It doesn't, it's not like it takes up a lot of time. It doesn't cost us anything, is kind of why yeah. we say it. And, it. and it gets it in writing for, if you have to defend yourself, or if you feel like you should, you can only be like, I just, I tell people not to. I mean, what do you, what do you want me to do? But like, it is I true. Tell people don't, don't do it. If somebody was desperate to even use like the worst thing possible to insult somebody, they're not going to be stopped by me, Rags and Wolf saying, hey, don't go do that. That's just not going to happen. Uh, they want to do it anyway. But I can respect the idea that it, it can help, you know. Um, considering the doggo and wolfo, I feel like you missed a chance with the name Every Frame a Pause. With, with pause. Uh, that's, that's oh, yeah, that would have been. That's, that's actually in my, my video where I, uh, where I, I show this out a bit. <laughs> I, it's not a, it's not a, uh, it's not a, not a pun. It could be. It could be. We, we could have been cringy like that, but. Yeah, I feel yeah, like a couple people would be like, eesh, oof, ooh. We, we, we respect ourselves a little bit too much to do that. Uh, yeah. Rag, Rags is banned from Twitter, yeah, I don't know if anybody didn't know that, but that oh, is, yeah, yeah, that is true, Twitter, yeah. um, unfortunately. Uh, I most, He's been banned twice now. I, yep. mo I most appreciate good stories because my parents made me read the book before the adaption. What most contributed to your love of good writing? Hmm. Well written um, things. I mean, that's, it's, it's kind of tough to explain, but it, I guess it would just be like, uh, you, you see a story run out where everything makes sense, then you see another story that has similar elements, but they just fuck something up, and so you're automatically just like, man, I would really have enjoyed that if they'd actually managed to... This is like the sort of a younger version of it. If you, if you were a kid, you'd be like, that story was okay, it's just that they... Like, why the fuck did that thing happen? And then you start to figure out that it's, it's the consistency element and the... Um, when things just happen because of the whatever the fuck is going on, like like uh, 
I watched uh, The Three Musketeers recently, Paul W.S. Anderson's one. It's like 2011 or something. Mm -hmm. Man, that's like one of the best examples of fuck it, we're just gonna have some fun, nothing needs to make any sense, who cares, and, you, and it's all filmed so like standardishly, but it stars so many actors. You got like uh, Mads Mikkelsen's in it, Orlando Bloom, uh, Mila Jovovich, uh, Ray Stevenson, I forget one of the other Musketeers names, um, the kid who was in 310 to Yuma, uh, there's a, there's a, th the, th the Musketeers themselves are famous, and I was just like, how the fuck did you get all these people for a movie that's so like, and it's just like, that's just how it works, as long as it makes money, it makes money, and I think it actually did make a profit, um, which is, which is important, uh, you could be like, w why care about good writing if it doesn't make any more money than something that's badly written, sometimes less, and so there's a lot, there's a lot to it, I don't know if I can, uh, if either of you have anything Matthew to Mc add. Matthew McFadden? Who's that? Luke Evans. Athos. Oh, Luke Evans, that's the one. Yeah, he's the one from um, uh, The Remus. Hobbit and a couple of other stuff. Oh, he was in... Uh, I think he was in that Dracula Untold movie. <laughs> yeah, that that fucked that... up, didn't it? <laughs> oh, man, I, I'm still convinced that's a comedy. That's oh, yeah, that Tomatoes is uh, not good for that movie. Um, but yeah, I don't know. It's just you sort of create a scale in your head, and then uh, how else can we explain it? But when me and Wolf watched... House Hill, Hill House, fuck's sake, um, and some other things. Stop like saying it wrong. The Prestige or or the Cornetto trilogy, you get the, the sense of like, oh my god, this is what it means when someone puts so much effort into it. This yeah. is this or, is the effect good writing can have. This or is when what the two they of were us talking about. The, uh, we binged the Lord of the Rings trilogy and we were Oof, just gushing over beautiful. it for twelve hours. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yes, uh, it's not rags, it's rag. Get it right. Alright, sorry, Rag. Rags. That'll be awkward to keep- <laughs> if we just keep calling you Rag. Um... Mr. Rag. 31... hours, Wolf, so don't worry, you only missed one. That's actually a, quite amusing. <laughs> uh, makes sense. Huzzah, it lives. I mean, this is completely unplanned, so I would've thought that they would've, uh, been surprised. Some people have been saying that it's late as well on, on Discord. I was like, this was never even mentioned. <laughs> like, You're you late! Um, why are you back, closed? Wolf. Welcome back. Yeah, so welcome back, Wolf. Hello, Wolfman. Wolf, you beautiful bastard. Welcome back. Punished Venom Wolf returns. That was on the Pals oh, podcast. Dear Lord. What does yeah, that, mean? that guy. Um, he. It's one of the. Well, I mentioned I'm going to be doing a slight rebranding of my channel, and that includes a name change. And I still want to keep Wolf in it. And so he's been very insistent on calling me Punished Venom Wolf. I think the Punished is because of the whole situation. I don't know where it's because the of Venom Metal comes Gear Solid. from. Oh, I've never played Metal Gear Solid, so I don't. Yeah, Punished Wolf would be a. Oh, I I, I assumed the Venom part was because of the Venom movie. Oh yeah, I kind of got that too, but the, I just don't know anything about Metal Gear, so. Yeah, I don't know anything about it either, so. But you will be... you're going by Wolf now, right? That's the plan? Yeah. The Christian Wolf. God. <laughs> Who... yeah, Wolf... Jesus Wolf, or... Wolf for Jesus Christ. Wolf. Wolf for Christ. Well, I, I, I was thinking, um... I, I had a couple names floating around, I haven't chosen one yet. Yeah. But I was thinking... one was, uh... The Word of Wolf. Word for of two wolf. reasons. One, because I discuss writing mostly, so word, wolf, all right, we got that. Word of wolf plus big, you could be like, wow. But also because um, I think it would be hilarious to see the, the Patrick Willemses out there that would be like, look at him, he thinks his word is truth. <laughs> I mean, thinks you're not calling yourself God. the right opinion or anything. Yeah, but <laughs> I think it would be. Well, yeah, you, we could do a, uh, if you get a few suggestions, we could do a bit of, um, you know, a, get the public to see what they think of what they'd want. Yeah, whoever sends what? the highest super chat with a name suggestion is the one we'll take. <laughs> <laughs> oh god, could you imagine? I, well, I've already had, like, three Aidwolf Hitlers, so... Mm -hmm. Aidwolf Hitler? M maybe that's not the best idea. <laughs> who are um, you gonna, who, who, what is the, who's the artist you're gonna commission to draw your new faggy wolf? Well, I, I, it's this, the same guy who did all my other animations. He's still around, and I commissioned him to do a new profile picture, so I should have that before the end of December. Oh, God, you're um, going to be black, are you? Uh, maybe, I don't know. God, Rags, you racialist. 
yeah, how dare you? But no, um, it's just going to be a more standard looking logo. I'm dry, like I said, the the furry thing's gone. It's dust oh, in the wind. It's like the dust from Thanos snapping his fingers. Oh, so oh. it can come back in the sequel. Yeah. No. No. <laughs> He's like, look at that. No, that's, that, like that's, that. that's like oh, the Dave Batista who doesn't come back in the sequel. Be a disgusting degenerate <laughs> like me. No, it that that led to unhappy things. So puritism. That's what it led to. Puritism. Yeah. Um, the we, Jared Wolf. The Wolf Reborn. Oh, I actually like the Wolf Reborn. That kind of harkens back to the Wheel of Time books, and I really like that. Hmm. Uh, Probably Wolf won't use it just because it won't make too much sense. But that, that's a nice name. I like it. Wolf. Well, no, you could you. be like you could be Born Again Wolf. Because <laughs> yeah, you're saving just veering too close to the Christian Wolf again, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. Wolf is Christ. The vigilant Christian Wolf. <laughs> <laughs> the vigilant Wolf. <laughs> oh God. Uh, Wolf, we missed you. Also, I have no idea how much I have left, but y'all deserve this. Love you all. Thank you. Welcome, Wolf, uh, back, Wolf, and have a great podcast. Brop, sniff, Bill Bong Buggers. Um, <laughs> that's, a, that's a new one. Hello, Bill Bong okay. Buggers to you too, sir. Uh, Defending Wolf by Jared Genesis. Yeah, that that's actually. Have you seen that, Wolf? Have you got anything? Uh... Yeah, I saw that like when he first came out with it because a bunch of people sent it to me. It was a good laugh. Mm -hmm. Good old Jared. I can't wait to cover him again. Bill, oh, Bill I guess that's a, that's a fair question. Are you planning on bringing your podcast back? Um, um, yeah, it'll go under a different name, but it'll still be, you know, the same same thing that we mm -hmm. usually did. Uh, you guys okay. should EFAP Donkey's Octopath video. I have no idea what Octopath is, but Octopath Traveler. Who's Donkey? Uh, Donkey's like a more of a, like a comedian YouTuber, makes short videos that are. Can sometimes be insightful. <laughs> Let there be wolf. Uh, let's just see. A lot of good ones. A lot of Pokemon Let's Go videos. Octopath. I'm not seeing an Octopath one. Where is it? Do, do, no, 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 no. I've Pokemon given up looking. Paul Wolfsifragans. What? What? <laughs> Paul Wolfsifragans. Oh. <laughs> Paul um, Wolf what? Paul Wolf Raggins. Mm, yes. The dog father. Hey, that actually kind of makes sense. You should sense just like make a note if any of these like dog father. <laughs> dog father works. Yeah. Uh so wolves are the ancestors. Wolf's back. I missed you so much. Welcome back. Also, Mola watched Jared's video on you. Love you all. Thank you. He taught me so much about film and writing. I actually did, uh, he said he'd like to have a beer with me sometime, and I said I'm on board with that. Um, Who? Uh, Jared. He made a video reviewing me, essentially. Yeah? Like, he was asked his opinion on me, and, um, I don't think, yeah, like, he was, he was pretty nice about me, so I was just like, yeah, man. It's all good. Um. You stole Jared from me? I mean, you can have him back have, once. I've been keeping him warm around, for you. <laughs> That, Plenty that of is, Jared that is, to go around. That is true. He's a little wider than most men. Um, but yeah, thank you. Uh, now you need to do a Jared video with Daddy being back. Jared or Riot. It's going to get a lot of those, I imagine. Your new name should be Yeet Wolf. Uh, <laughs> Yeet Wolf. Yeet Wolf. Wolf needs to know that while he was gone, Rags changed his name to Rags. That's true. Uh, that is a, not true. There's an apostrophe there now, Wolf. You need to... well, I, I, I already know the lore. <laughs> Uh, no, Wolf rag. is back, Rhino Milk, I'll be boys. That's, that's okay. <laughs> I um, love the memes that our community is thought up of. <laughs> if it is, uh, Sid Sids or, or Jay helped, so helped, like, propagate it. He kept saying it when he was on the podcast with us. It's just like, he's he's definitely gonna own the meme on this one. Uh, but yeah, I mean, yeah, I if we ever make a t-shirt for EFAP, the first fucking design is probably gonna be related to Rhino Milk. Like a Rhino, like, kicked back against the couch wearing an EFAP <laughs> shirt, drinking some milk. Got a glass of milk. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, more hyped for episode 9, Unbridled Rage, the actual movie. I mean, it'll be fun to get all of our coverage on that. That's gonna be an interesting time of next year. Can't spell WeFAP without EFAP, Bilbo Baggins. That's true. Uh, hello there, Mola. Hello. Welcome. Uh, Wolf is back. You guys are a major inspiration for my work. I only have two subscribers and three videos besides my Eric Taxon response, but still thanks. Interesting. Hooray. I have heard there's a couple people who've responded to his response to you. Um, 
But um, now we've got Wolf himself taking a taking a bite. Get it? Taking a bite? You know, metaphorical response. And you're a wolf, so. J.R. Wolkeen? I no, I can't do that. Keen? <laughs> <laughs> no, Wolf Keen. Uh, is he you're Wolf Keen? J.R. No. Tolkien, Wolfkin. It could work. Could work. You gotta, just gotta uh, shove I it. Can't a bit. Do that. I'm not nearly as good a writer. I could never be as good a writer as Tolkien. I won't. I won't pull a George R.R. R. Martin and like steal the R.R. and then pretend I'm as good. That's like your opinion. Well, my opinion is his latest book was a piece of shit, and I wasted money. On oh it. shit! He's gotten a lot of backlash for that, hasn't he? Yeah, and you know I don't care at all because people, you know, people uh, started a mass flagging. Like downvoting his book on Amazon as soon as it came out. Mm. But honestly, he deserves it. You can't. <laughs> I mean, come on. It, it has been seven years since you wrote the last book. The last two actual Song of Ice and Fire books you wrote are shit. And it's like it, the new book isn't even good in the first place as a standalone. Like I tried to give it a chance because I was like, oh, you know, I like, I liked the Night of the Seven Kingdoms. It was a nice little read. But no, it's like reading the history textbook about fake things, and it's like I don't, <laughs> I don't care about fake things. It's a history book about fake things. <laughs> well, yeah, that, I mean that's essentially what it is. It's like it's not like the Silmarillion where there's like an actual narrative to it. It's like no, it's just George blabbering on about shit that we already know. People have already pointed out that he like ripped entire chunks out of previous books and just inserted them, like copy pasted them into Fire and Blood, and then. Yeah, I, I don't know what else he was expecting. Maybe if he would get off his ass, stop editing these books from other people that no one cares about, and actually write The Winds of Winter, he wouldn't have had all this backlash. But, you know. I remember thinking about Winds of Winter being out before I'd even fucking seen uh, the show yet. And I remember thinking, <laughs> like, it would be so interesting if the show manages to beat him to the end. And at this point, it's like... It's impossible for him to beat the show to the end. It's not even that I don't, close. I don't think it's possible for him to get to the end. That's another thing, yeah. It never ends. Uh, There's no ending. It just goes on forever. This ESAP, this EFAP is so juicy. Me and Bilbo bag bagging, stopped milking the rhinos and look at women and looked at women to come watch. Now that's a lot of memes in one go. That's that's a that's like a a, a lore dump for anybody who hasn't been watching. I, I loved that when uh. When I was watching that EFAP, and they were like, "Who was it, Major Lee, who said that?" Yeah, he said, "Why well, complain about there being women when you can look at women?" It's like, it's uh, like, oh man, they called me the sexist. <laughs> uh, oh, he did finish it off with saying, "I could watch this three times and not get bored." <laughs> <laughs> it's wonderful. Uh, odd question: hey. What is you guys' take on musicals? Um, uh, you better a... it better be a damn good musical. Yeah, typically I don't like musicals. There's a couple I really do like, though. I can't think of any I do like. I mean, it's just not really my thing. Um, I like Sweeney Todd. Uh, there's, there's, there's others I've seen that I know I've liked, but I can't remember the names of. There's a TV show that has a musical episode that I thought was neat. I think Scrubs I mean, had different. a musical episode. It's different if they are um, in person. Like if you're watching a play or something. As opposed to them being on TV. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, typically I find them quite distracting. You need like, uh, funnily enough, like Buffy does one, and it's they have a narrative purpose for it going on. It's a supernatural TV show, so obviously they can do something about it. But sometimes it can it can knock you right out because you're just like, what is this shit? Why is everyone running around dancing and singing? This is weird. And, the money. and people are like just enjoy the music, and you're like, all right, all right. Um, okay, it's so it's okay when they censor other people's opinions of them, and they never wrong. It's just that everyone is raiding like an infestation of cockroaches. Actually, yeah, thinking about it, he he simultaneously claimed that he was like, I'm not even getting hate, but I disable it because of people's dislikes, which would only mean they're raiding. Like, okay, Eric. Like the Room is my favorite musical. <laughs> this creature is an eyesore. How dare you say that? Wolf has only just come back. Yeah, Sorry well, about that. Why, why do you call yourself, <laughs> the the, call yourself the cackling jackal? The cackling jackal? Yeah. Sounds like it wants to be a tongue twister, it's just one word away. Like, cackling jackal of something. Crackle. <laughs> um, 
Uh, glad to have Wolf back. Now I get to mix up yours and Rags' voices again. Is everyone dreading the new Lion King? They're gonna subtly push yep. an agenda and muck oh, up the plot God. and characters. I can feel it. It looks so fucking bad. Like Mauler, I you know I was I went to you and I was like, this is bad. Why are you doing <laughs> you this? didn't seem happy. <laughs> no, I was not happy because I really like the original and this one's like. Like, first off, it's stupid to make a live-action Lion King when there weren't humans in it in the first place. Mm -hmm. But the art doesn't look good. I mean, the animation's, like, fine, but... Well, I can tell you, I have I mean, not the, seen the trailer yet, but uh, the idea, I'm just like... Mm. Yeah, no. And, I mean, not it, only the, that, but Netflix announced they're doing Cowboy Bebop, a live-action oh, Cowboy yeah. Bebop. God. So like, yeah, they're oh. doing it with Avatar The Last Airbender, too. I'm yeah, well... ER on Twitter, as a response to that news, uh, had a picture of writing Netflix into the death note. And I was like, <laughs> and I was like yeah. no, what about Hill House? And he was like, I'm sorry. It's has a price you have to pay. We have to save it. You just have to pick up all the good TV shows and run away while he kills all of Netflix. <laughs> like, no, we yeah. have to save the good ones. Uh, um, that's funny. Death Note was good. I liked that one. Good to have the three of you back together. The gang is back. Time for some fun. Also, this thing looks like the spouse of Cousin It. <laughs> that's actually... From Adam's I, family. I completely forgot Cousin It. Yeah, that's an interesting take. Um, yeah. And yeah, it's... I, it, I said, what did I say? He, he looks like a Monty Python woman. <laughs> 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 and, uh, I guess we have to say, like, disclaimer-wise, like, leave him alone. But again, anybody's welcome to make fun of me, Wolf, and Rags, by the way. Go ahead. Uh, Look, I'm not saying like go harass him. I'm just saying like leave leave a nice comment telling him why he's wrong. Mm -hmm. yeah. And leave a rating. And, oh, well. and yeah, and dislike. <laughs> it's yeah. like not that it matters. Haha! Uh -huh, I just forced you to pay attention to me. Excellent uh, move, Cinema Sins. Sins. Yeah, you, you showed us. Mm -hmm. uh, what's your thought about Black Panther just being a worse version of Lion King? Um, is there is there a lot to connect those two films? Uh, there's a little bit, I guess, like the the family member taking over after the. Well, no, because he didn't kill his dad. His dad died before the movie started. Um, well, I mean, that's, there's that's a couple racist, like ve there's like a very few vague similarities, but not enough to really. Are there lions? Justify them. Um, there are well, panthers. There, there are kings. There are kings. I will there, say there that there are panthers. Uh, that's close. All right. It's in um, Africa. <laughs> did you hear about Bill Maher, what he said about comic books and Stanley? I did, and it's... Yeah, yeah, it's like, oh, wow, Bill Maher. Yeah, it's like, I couldn't... It Every time I think I couldn't like you less, you <laughs> defy my expect. You subvert my expectations. Just, that just means it wrong timing. Good. Massively wrong timing. It's like, I used to like Bill Maher, and then he... I don't know what happened to him. I, I don't know if he got brain damage or something, but it's like, you don't shit on Stanley the instant he dies. People have a lot of trouble with that, honestly. Like when Tall Biscuit died, um, you get you get the standard like people who hated him already hating on him. Just like, well, they're assholes. But um, uh, do, do you guys? I, I can't remember if I showed you it, but like Boogie was like, yeah, it's, it's sad that he died. Also, I just want to let everyone know he threw me under the bus. It was like, why? No, don't do that. Not now. <laughs> it was bad timing. Yeah, I still get. Like, even when I wasn't logged into my YouTube account, I would still get like recommendations from Memeology. And uh -huh. they would all be on Boogie, and it's like, oh god, Boogie, why are you still doing this? He says a lot of strange stuff. The, I'm not gonna say what it was, but like, Meemology put out a video recently that I saw, and it's just like, fucking hell, some of the quotes. It was like a public podcast, Boogie's talking about some of the stuff oh, he get up to. Oh, the PKA one? And I was just like, what the fuck? <laughs> you, you, yeah. I don't know, it's man. Like, Boogie, there, there's a time and a place. It comes it's under that whole, like... You know, I'm absolutely honest. I'll talk about anything. It's like that sometimes you don't talk about some things. Some, you know, some, yeah. sometimes you keep it there to yourself. There are some things I'm like, ah, yeah. Bit weird. What do you think um, of Spyro Ignited? I love it. I've played it twice already in completion. That's your opinion. You gonna make a, you gonna make a <laughs> video on it? <laughs> uh, probably not a standalone. I probably once I come back, I'll like make a best and worst games of 2018. Do the same thing with movies I've done in the past couple of years. Mm -hmm. and I'll throw uh, Spyro on that list. I'm a little bit more focused on some bigger projects. Well, video or not, we need to know if um, we need to know what you think. Is uh, is Spyro a video game in your opinion? No, Spyro is love. Spyro is life. 
Um, oh. If you guys want to see a bad movie, check out the recent Robin Hood movie. The guards pull out riot shields and the peasants wear beanies and jacket vests despite taking place during the Crusades. <laughs> Oh no, is that it going to be one awesome. of those, I was going to say, it's, it's got to be on the nose, right? It's probably one of those absurdist sort of history things where it's just like having is it, fun. Is it like on par with Dracula Untold? Because that movie makes me laugh. It's been ripped so, to shreds, I know that much. It's got like an the, extremely low rating. The new Robin Hood, uh, yeah. critics, it is a 17% on the tomato meter. Oof. And 50% of audiences liked it. Oh, that's, uh, that's actually better than The Last Jedi. <laughs> that's better than The Last Jedi. That's our scale, we guys. Remember watch. that. <laughs> yeah, we need to watch um, Dracula Untold together. Oh, you guys are gonna love it. We gotta, so we gotta, we gotta get like Ralph, a, uh, a list of things. Ra Ralph breaks the internet. Mm -hmm. The audience score is sixty-eight percent liked it. Oh, yeah, I heard it wasn't very good. I it didn't seem very good. I, I have I have no interest in watching it at all. The, which is weird because I really like the first one. Yeah, I like the first one. I'd have to watch it again. But, it's been a while. But man, uh, this I've watched the ads for this new one, and I'm like, oh no, no, I don't. No, it looks like an emoji movie. Yeah, a little bit. Um, it's like yeah, I, I saw that there was there. like a bunch of like advertising frame, and I was like, mm, okay, I'm not watching it then. Uh, Wolf, I've missed you so much. That's that's a very kind one. Oh my god, look at this one. Uh, I'm sorry you guys have to sit through watching pedo Jesus. Here's some pity buttons. <laughs> Pedo Jesus. <laughs> he does look like Pedo Jesus. Okay, look, um, we can we can criticize him all we want. Let, let's not call him a pedophile. Yeah, of course not. No, it's it, just the stash, we're, we're right? We're also not calling him Jesus. <laughs> well, yeah, <laughs> that's that, super that, offensive. That's, that's true. Uh, I'd suggest Doctor Wolf, but that's a brony YouTuber. Oh yeah, Doctor Wolf wouldn't really work because how would you even? Plus, plus, I don't think Wolf Sorry, has doctor. a doctor. Uh, Do you have a doctor. doctorate, Wolf? Hmm? Um, you're a bachelor, aren't you? Is it like a no? <laughs> oh, no, he's <laughs> no, not. I'm on nothing. No, is can I have like a doctorate in like Spyro knowledge? Does that count? Uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure that's definitely a thing. Are uh, you up on the Spyro lore? We've got oh, at, well, uh, all the Spyro lore that matters anyway, which is the first three games, and then. Nothing so else matters. Who, who of, of all the Spyro characters, who is uh, who's the most fuckable? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Oh, well, clearly that would be Alora. I have Alora? no idea who that is, but I agree. That's yes. the. She is a. She's a fawn. Yes. <laughs> yeah, but <laughs> it's just like silence all to right. appreciate. All right, um, yeah. Well, I mean, I can see that. So we got the Wolf of Wall Street, George Lincoln Wolfwell, uh, Just <laughs> Yif. They, they, they're all came in super chats, by the way. <laughs> like, have you got a list going, Wolf? You've got to get all these up. Um, uh, you're all inspirations to me. It's my dream to be a guest on EFAP. Do I need to make a video calling you all racist to be invited on? I mean, we can't really, like, realistically have some kind of system to get any randomers on completely because... It would be impossible to sort it out. We've got a stacked up amount of guests to come on that are actual like full on YouTubers who are busy as well. Like it's it's confusing, but yeah, there's no even if they were a way to get anybody in chat to guest on EFAP, if we were to suggest it, then we would be unable to do it from then on because we'd have too many people trying to do it. You know, I don't know what an efficient way to do it would be other than like creating a Patreon tier, but I don't really want to do that. Um, how come? How come all of the dragons besides Spyro are like daddies? We was, don't need to. Was, we don't need to talk about that one. Was, Why did very they make relevant them to hot? what I was saying? <laughs> Look, it's Spyro. Just he hasn't hit that point of puberty yet to become a daddy himself. So is he going to turn into one of the other ones eventually? Um, I don't know because there's been like eleven Spyro games and he doesn't age. So he's so... like Ash Ketchum. Exactly. So mm -hmm. either everything takes place in the span of like a couple weeks, or <laughs> it's a very busy couple weeks. <laughs> well, he, All right. you know, I'm so close to the end. We're nearly there. Uh, glad you're doing better, Wolf. Don't let online autism bring you down. Same to Mullen Rags, of course. Have a good stream. So, that's a thumbs up right there. It's good stuff. Um, it's good to have friends when it comes to annoying internet comments. To be honest. Literally just sending the quote to somebody and watching them laugh at how stupid it is can make YouTubers feel better, so 
If ever you become a YouTuber, make sure you have friends. They're useful. Just saying, you know, exploit them. Right, guys? Point in them. Um, exactly. Great to see you doing a new stream, but dang, I have to head to work. I'll be sure to watch this when I get home tomorrow. It will be on Moolah. It'll it'll be right there waiting. Uh, wold, wold among the right. Is that supposed to be wolf among the right? Wolf among the right. Wolf among the right? Wolf among just right? Hmm? No, no. no. <laughs> what most aggravates you, waywardness or imbecility? Uh, imbecility. Probably imbecility, yeah. Yeah. Wandering Wolf? I think you saw that one. Um, hello, Dr. Frankenstein, I found your missing creation. Oh. Poor, poor, poor Eric. Don't worry, he's got a, he's got like a profile picture we'll see in future. Um, I'm not sure why he did it for this, but hey. <laughs> Wolf Among the Reich. <laughs> uh, what do you guys think of graphic novels? Uh, I don't read too many of them, but... I don't either. Yeah, I was gonna say, I don't read them, but they're neat. I'm fine with them, though. I have in the past. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm more, like, into just regular comics and manga than graphic novels specifically, but... I am. Um, I'm pretty indifferent to it. I'm. I'm mostly video game guy. Uh, when's the EFAP on Joseph Anderson happening? I am not promising anything. We're just gonna say that. Who knows when that might take place? Uh, yeah, it could happen next week. Could happen in a couple hours. Could, could happen in ten minutes. But it's, it's gonna not happen because we gotta take out Eric Jackson. Yeah. And take him out to dinner, I mean. We don't not take him out, like, violently. Like, Jesus, no. Yeah, I mean, well, we will feed him before we beat him. But so help me fucking God, if he opens his trap and he says, I'm vegetarian and I can't eat gluten, then Ugh. we're fucking... I'm not gonna pull up the menu okay, and he's like, no. He eat <laughs> oh, he doesn't eat... He eats he eat some kind of meat. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's true. Thank Substitute you for recommending meat. Ori, Wolf. I'm loving it. That was from uh, Glanzended. So. I have yet to see someone who I've recommended that game to or otherwise bought it for come away disliking it. I bought it. It was I terrible. Like, I hate it. Worst game ever. Yeah, I watched your recommendation we, video and I hate no. it. Yeah, oh, it was awful. Can't, well, can't be friends anymore. <laughs> see you guys. <laughs> Bye. Uh, do an EFAP on Jenny Nicholson's <laughs> TLJ video. We've, we, we'll we go back. We're, we're probably going to do a TLJ one soon because we did that. Jenny Nicholson is still a thing? Oh, yeah. she Her TLJ video is really bad, too. Uh, so it'll be interesting to cover it, but... Yeah, people want well, to see Well, yeah, it's Jenny that. Nicholson. I just didn't think that she was still around. Well, I, I liked her video on Suicide Squad. I thought it was amusing. Let's go ahead and um, let, let's uh, wrap up the super chats and everything and get to. You say that when I've literally got to read out one more. <laughs> Wolf of Redemption. That's it. Hmm. Let's oh, banter. Sorry. I think I think we've been bantering about around a bit much the last couple episodes. We need to. Forced. Are you kidding? We got through like half an hour in the other one at some point, maybe. I don't remember. Never. This is Wolf's return. He gets to talk as much as he wants. No, shut this up, Wolf. Is about, this is about Wolf. This is true. It's, it's what is Wolf who cried, boy? Like, like, this is one of those titles where you're like, what do you mean, what the fuck is Forced Diversity? <laughs> you knob. You knob. Um. But yeah, well, we'll we'll break it there because there's a couple more now, but I'm just going to I'm, I'm let him let him. Now, before we play it, before we play it, I yeah. just want to draw to everyone's attention that my video on forced diversity is 18 minutes long. This guy's video on, uh, in response to it is five minutes less. How much of my video do you think he's genuinely going to cover? Uh, ten min eight minutes. Eight minutes. That, that's, uh, I already know, so I can't say. <laughs> yeah. I do too. I thought you were like... Fishing for answers. Oh. oh. <laughs> well. Seven we'll, minutes. We'll, we'll let the chat. We'll let the chat figure it out. Oh god. We'll, we'll get a few guesses from chat. Yeah. Yeah. Someone's already like guessed it accurately. So. None of it. All of it. Five seconds. Two minutes. Sixty-nine minutes. I'm not sure how that would work. <laughs> yeah. It's a, it's a. Well, I mean, maybe if he watches my whole video like four or five times, sure. He slowed it down. You're talking too fast. <laughs> Couldn't understand your words. Go on, Wolf. Put them out of their misery. What? What was the actual count? It's like between a minute and a half and two minutes. Did oh, did he spend, and, and the and here's the best part: the bulk of it that he shows is the beginning section where I hadn't made my argument yet, and I was giving a disclaimer. Amazing. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah. So we're we're gonna 
Is what everyone ready? For? Absolutely. I am go. ready. Forced diversity is a term I've been hearing a lot. I'm not quite sure what it means, retarded. but this video <laughs> seems like it'll teach me what's what. So just, just off the bat, forced diversity, what do you guys think it means if you've never heard of it before? It's really kind of... How do I... It's like self-evident. It's in the words. It kind of is. That's the point I'm, I was about to say. Is like it's sort of self-evident. It should be, at least. It is when you force diversity. I'll just, I'll just give you a scenario. Hey, I need a plumber, and some fat guy's like, I can do the plumbing. Then you go, no, I need a woman. You're like, wait, why? What, what, why? And you're just like, because it's. I always get a male plumber. I want a female plumber for once. And he's just like, I, okay. Okay, and then the plumbing company is like, we're gonna have to fire you because we need to make room for female plumbers or some weird shit. And it's just like, what the fuck is? Or, or, and uh, inversely, it would be uh, hiring someone who's black and mm. not hiring someone who's white, even though the white guy is more qualified for it. And this goes like you need a black to guy. anything. So like, it could be gender, race, uh, political or religious beliefs. Um, like the idea that. If you're having a discussion on a topic, you need to have everyone from every possible differentiation of human being in order to have a balanced discussion. And the insanity is, it's like, doesn't it matter more so how good their critical thinking is? Or, you know, what they can bring to the table as opposed to what color their skin is or what sexuality they are? Um, it's, and then you get. Force diversity is essentially the opposite of meritocracy. Yeah, um, and you and it's happening in the BBC a lot, right? There's like actual um, requirements that they have X amount of different diversities on staff of different companies. Yes, um, we are hiring for a position, but don't apply if you are white. And of course, this goes into a lot of arguments. Uh, there's a lot of people who would argue that it's important to give people of those races, of those differences, a person to look up to in that job to make them think it's possible for them or whatever. Which, I mean, we can look at uh, another example. We can look at uh, The Witcher recently, the show The Witcher. Um, I know they changed it kind of technically, but initially they were going to cast a white role as literally anything other than white. Like they listed it as we're looking for someone that's not white. Only fan backlash changed that, but and still it, they made other white like characters stuff. black and Indian. Yeah, it's like, yeah, we're redoing right. Buffy, but she's black. They, like, announced that as if it's just like, what, 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 why, what? Just do a different character. And that's obviously the response to a lot of this. And then Wolf has made a video highlighting what issues can arise from forced diversity, which is, I, again, considering how self-evident the word is, you'd think you'd be able to come up with them on your own even, but apparently Eric has no idea what it even means, so that's where we're starting, apparently. Before we're done, I'd like to know exactly what forced diversity is, but what I'd really like to know is what makes it different from regular diversity. So one's uh, forced and one isn't. So, like... It's very <laughs> simple. Diversity that occurs organically is fine. When you hiring the best actors. Force diversity, yes. For example, Hill House. And you'll never yeah. have complete diversity, by the way. You'll never have every type of human in a project. That's just not going to happen unless you fucking have a camera on Earth. Like, and you have a room with five characters, isn't... do you think you're going to have every human of every kind in that room? Yeah, like, my favorite movie is Only Asians. Which would be non-diverse, wouldn't it? Which is not diverse, and... but it takes place in Asia, so... You know. And then if they were to remake that film, and for some reason, the government, or whatever position they, they make the films in, were told you have to have at least one black person, one white person, one... But it was just everywhere, and that could damage the film, considering... That had nothing to do with Absolutely, their intention. Absolutely, especially because it's a historical film. Um, but yeah, so the you know the difference is you just make it because it, that's how it was made versus someone has a quota for you. Um, especially non self imposed ones. But yeah, I suppose you could self impose it if you're just like I'm going to make a story, but it has to have this, 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 and if that's your focus uh, versus whatever else. Let's see. Well, that was a uh, nothing video, but it was pretty illuminating as well. So. Let's analyze it. In today's political climate, people on both sides of the spectrum like to play word games, particularly with phrases that you should or should not support, and if you do or do not support them, then it automatically puts you under some derogatory label because, hey, who fucking cares about nuance, right? The video starts with a very like that long guy and better. laborious- Yeah, I like this guy, he's alright. Yeah, I like that he guy He seems better. like a better YouTuber. He's right, though. 
<laughs> he moves as well. This, like, this Eric he, person yeah, just seems yeah. to be a Boy Scout. He's correct. He's using a picture of a much more handsome young man. So explanation as to how the dishonored. Oh, yeah, let's go back a bit though. It's about nuance, right? The video starts with a very long and laborious explanation as to how the dishonored wolf is actually a nuanced little centrist boy. I'm not centrist. I never said I'm a centrist in my entire life. I don't know what the boy comment is about either. I guess he just wants to condescend you as much as he can. Boy. But... Yes. boy. Listen, I don't... Boy. Listen, Eric, with your facial hair, don't call people boys. <laughs> <laughs> But <laughs> I'm just gonna be honest with you, man. I'm just I know you're very proud of it and you want to be a man one day, but until that time comes, man, just keep yourself clean shaven. Yeah, the, idea, the idea here is that he's he's like Wolf is saying that he does not specifically follow a, a blah blah blah, therefore he's centrist. It's like Wolf never actually said that, nor did what he said uh specifically represent that. It's just, just a weird takeaway. But um you we know why. Because it's uh, it's going to lead into his his gotcha at the end, if you remember, Wolf. Oh almost, yes, it's almost like the way that he says it too is like centrism is a bad thing. Like we talk about how you run a narrative in videos, uh, this would have been something he may have put in in a redraft. He wants to sprinkle here and in, in, in a bit and a little bit later on that Wolf is a centrist, even though Wolf never claims that, and then he's going to prove him wrong by the end. The wolf is yeah, actually going... not a, race, a, a racist, a centrist. Not a ra no, he, he definitely <laughs> thinks I'm a racist. No, wait, he, um... think, wait, wolf isn't actually a racist? Oh, no, he is, definitely. Oh, okay, okay, yeah, okay. good, good, good. <laughs> he likes wolves, he hates humans. He just has a problem with, I guess, a species. Or something. likes good, too, likes bad. Mm -hmm. Yeah, canine supremacy, but, uh, you know, you canis lupus familiaris rags, you, you aren't allowed. I'm homo sapiens, is that right? we, went, oh, wait. we don't want any of those felis domesticus around what, here. What is uh what is skull on wheels in Latin? Skull on wheels. Um <laughs> Scullius non wheelius. Wheelius scolaris. Uh, <laughs> wheelius scolaris. <laughs> Fine. Don't know why you need to dedicate so much time to convince people that you're definitely not right winged. Oh, what? Not. It's so I'm interesting not. because of the fact that at the end of this video he confirms that you are right wing. <laughs> so. I have never in my life identified as being right wing. But just, not just keep it in mind, though, he's criticizing you for trying to tell people at the beginning that that's your position, and then later on says that you are, despite all of this this effort to tell him you're not. You know, it's just like, well then, Eric. Yeah. I, I do like, want to go a little further, because it shows a little bit more into my video that he just blatantly ignores, but it will show I will have a bit more to add to it, because he I mean, does I'm, think... I'm the furthest right of the three of us, and I'm not even right wing. Yeah. Yeah, who cares? If you just say everyone's right wing that disagrees with you, then... If, if you aren't a social justice warrior, you're far right. There's literally nothing in between. Mm -hmm. Don't know why you need to dedicate so much time to convince people that you're definitely not right wing, but go off, I guess. Eventually we it's get okay to, to be right wing. So when I say I'm totally... Yeah, sorry, just to clarify, it is okay to be right wing, too. <laughs> yeah. You're not a, you're not a okay demon. It's okay to be right wing, it's okay to be left wing. Yeah, the the real thing is that he's you know he's obviously making an assumption that I'm right wing, and that assumption is based off of views that I have. That you know he's the kind of person that thinks that right wingers are racists or Nazis or uh, fascists, even though I'm every not single any of those one. Things. Well, all left wingers it, are communists. Yeah, it, it's the implication he puts behind the whole he's a right winger. Convince people that you're definitely not right wing, but go off, I guess. Eventually, we get to the point. So, when I say I'm totally against the concept of forced diversity, I want to make it crystal. F also, he's balanced this tizzy. His video, I've got the audio right for, but whenever he plays Wolf's, it like is blasting my speakers for the people watching, so I have to keep fucking changing it. Thanks, Eric. You bastard. The point. So when I say I'm totally against the concept of forced diversity, here? I want to make it crystal fucking clear that the mere idea of diversity is not what I would deem to be negative in any discernible way. I know this has taken entirely too much time to say, but believe me, I know that if I'm not as clear as possible, people will lose their minds over this shit. The difference between diversity and forced diversity is that one is natural and the other is artificial. The act of forcing diversity right. in one form mm. or another directly leads to an objective drop in quality. Quality. There is not one single form of entertainment that forces diversity on the one being entertained that is actually good. Let me explain. 
pause it real quick. <laughs> yeah, let um, me get back to that, sorry. Yeah. There we go. Skip three minutes of waffly bullshit. I, that would have been useful to discuss. A anyone curious what's in those three minutes? Uh, yeah. Probably the fucking explanation of what he just said. Yeah, and, um, you know, th he's not going to show much more than what he's already shown, and that was a disclaimer to say some very important things. First off, before I get into it, um, I was showing... It, it's not like anything to do with the contents of this video or any of the stuff that happened earlier this year. But um, th it's a fun fact to note that the mod I was playing, uh, Halo SPV3, the guy who made that mod is the one who got me banned from Twitter. Which I think is just a funny little yep. tidbit Ralph to think was about. was having fun on his mod, and then he ruined it. You know, and then the modder banned me. <laughs> so... But well, I'll um, make sure to avoid it and not yeah, recommend it to people. Exactly. Don't. So um, anyway, the whole point of that explanation, and he cuts out like the vast majority of the points I made in there, particularly like the things about diversity that I'm perfectly fine with, because they would completely defeat his argument. Um, I'm very particular with the kind of language I use. Sometimes I don't always convey my points in the way that I want to, obviously, but. Uh, I try my best to be very specific with uh, with the pe with the words that I say, so that people don't misconstrue my meaning. And so, the thing he cuts out of, or one of the things he cuts out, is me explaining that I think that the people that are doing the whole force diversity thing are on the very far left. And I even point out there are problems with the very far right. I outright say, or I don't say specifically, but I do insinuate like, yeah, I, I am a left winger or at least I lean more to the left than to the right. But, you know, that's, that's a little bit too much nuance for his video to actually uh, put up. But he's going under the idea that I'm racist or sexist or that because I'm a right winger, I can't have an objective opinion on forced diversity or diversity as a whole. And he's just going to continue to go with his false narrative that he's completely made up. I mean, he's he didn't pulling understand. a Quentin. <clears throat> yeah, he, he's, he literally is just gay Quentin. Gay, gay Quentin. Quentin, sorry. Gay Quentin. <laughs> diversity on the one being entertained that is actually good. Let me explain. Skip the problem is the bullshit. forced part of it. I am completely fine with any kind of character, be they female, black, gay, crippled, whatever, so long as they're a natural part of the character and isn't some focal point for the story. For example, Ripley from the Alien franchise is fucking awesome, by far and away my favorite female character ever. The fact that she's female is never brought to the forefront and no one ever makes it a point that, because of that, she's better than any other character. The difference between a character like Ripley and a character like Rey is that one is a naturally implemented character and the other is not so we're already hitting a couple of roadblocks now I love yeah so this this shot right here that shows these two cards one of ray one of ripley notice how he's not going to play most of this segment mm -hmm. he's going to play like a few seconds of it but he's not going to pay any attention to most of the arguments i make this is the problem with this video is that he only plays like a couple minutes worth of my video it's an 18 minute video when he completely uh, takes most of my points completely out of context or otherwise just doesn't even provide context at all. Doesn't show most of my video and bases his argument off of something that's just not even there. And just to, to clarify for viewers, uh, how would you discern the difference between Ripley and Ray uh, in terms of force diversity? One has the force. <laughs> I mean, I, 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 my take would be that uh, Ripley was um, a character, and she's played by a, a female actress, obviously. Uh, and then With there's talent. there are elements to her that you could uh, definitely uh, w there there are choices she makes and actions she takes that could be informed by her being female rather than male. Just like how that would be the same for a lot of the Marines. You could probably argue there's certain things they do. That you could be like, it's because they're, they're the man's man, you know, stuff like that. But ultimately, the important parts of her character have nothing to do with, with her gender. They're all very much um, about what she ex has experienced, who she is. You know, all, all the stuff that everybody can relate to because it doesn't require that you have particular genitals. While 
Ray doesn't have anything in terms of character, and we know that um, one of their goals when hiring for uh, The Force Awakens was that they just, I mean, JJ's dream was having it so that it was all Asian cast, but obviously you couldn't have that because reasons. I, I fucking have no idea how casting works, and obviously when he said that it could have been a joke, I'm not saying that's definitive, but they were definitely concerned with getting away from the whole straight white male cast, can't have that anymore, even though it's fucking aliens all over the place in Star Wars. Um, so you have Rey, is a female protagonist, and then you have Finn, is 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 a, a black protagonist, and then you have uh, Poe, is a is Poe Hispanic? I mean, uh, Oscar Isaac. He's something like that. I, I think I, I I think I heard where he was from. I just can't quite remember anymore. Um, either way. It's a, it's a very diverse cast, and you know what it also is? Like, it's completely lacking consistency or development for their characters. And uh, it looks like they were focusing on that element, because that was their goal, rather than focusing on characters first. And I imagine that's what Wolf was going for. That's, that's my take. It's very, it's, if you want to sum it up, uh, Ripley, uh, a woman is what she is, it's not who she is. She isn't defined by the fact that she is a woman, unlike Ray, who's defined by virtually nothing. She's got nothing else. <laughs> like, what else is there? And it sucks because I think the. However, I mean, I hate to do this, but, you know, no offense to Daisy Ridley, but, like, so many people pick up on her acting ability. Like, that's not something I'm just inventing. A lot of people find it very difficult to watch her because she has the same delivery for a lot of things she says. I'm not saying she can't act whatsoever, I'm not going to go to that extreme. But um, was she chosen because she's female, or was she chosen, you know, we'll never know that definitively, but the goal when they were making the film was to have a diverse cast. And since that wasn't going to happen naturally, quote-unquote, from just uh, casting based on ability, they had to make sure the quotas were there. They're like, this character has to be female. Like, and it's unnecessary. Do you think they really hired her because of her immense acting talent? Uh, I mean, uh, maybe uh, if she was directed by somebody who could, you know, force her to get some amazing performances and keep telling her to keep her damn mouth shut. Like, if they actually, you can get directors who are that aggressive. Uh, maybe she would maybe give an amazing performance. Maybe if someone, like, glued her lips shut. You know, um, kept her from having her mouth open 98% of the movie. But yeah, and uh, by the way, just because just why not, um, Eric, you're welcome to come on EFAP and talk about the subject, though I have no expectation. He's not you, going to. He's not going to. ever want to speak to us, because... Yeah, do, do you think that somebody who hides their likes and dislikes is going to engage in a live discussion with people who disagree with them? Because, like, yeah, we're going to get... Uh, it's, 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 it's de 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 I, just, I get the impression that we're going to be deplorable from his perspective. Um, I assume so. Unfortunately, <laughs> we're also, the deplorables. Someone we're just said, "What about EFAP not being political?" Uh, we did go over this in, I think it was EFAP, like I want to say twelve, could have been earlier than that. Yeah, you know, the, it's hard not to be political for this particular video because it's based on a political stance. Yeah, me, Wolf, and Rags I mean, definitely I've... have politics, and when you when you're off the cuff discussing random things, politics will come up. EFAP is not going to be. Strictly non-political. Yeah, you know, like I, I, I don't generally like talking about politics. I mean, the three of us, we've only talked about politics amongst ourselves once, maybe ever. <laughs> yeah. And the thing is, it's not like we're talking about candidates or policies. You know, no, we're, we're, we're talking, talking about pretty much pretty, about. I mean, forced diversity is something that people on the left hate, and it's something that mm -hmm. people on the right hate. It's like really the only people who, like, that's a social justice thing. Is forced diversity. I mean, that's why Sargon hates. Hates it. That's why Paul Joseph Watson hates it. That's why I hate it. That's why Mahler and Wolf hate it. That's why Tim Pool hates it. I mean, it's. I mean, it's if I was writing a story and then someone told me I have to change my protagonist to female just because, whatever, I'd just be like, excuse me, and you just said that's still political. I I just said it. EFAP is not not political. That's not something any three of us will ever claim. Uh, we're definitely going to drift into politics every once in a while. A setting policy, because if you set the policy of um, your project or your company must have a diverse set of people in it, that is obviously setting a policy, and I disagree with it. That is my politics. Yeah, and ultimately, we're very concerned with the quality of art that's made. We're concerned with the quality of films and movies and shows and games and. This is a aspect of politics oh, and, this forced diversity stuff yeah. that impacts that. And someone just said, never become Jell-Apocalypse. You are not going to catch us um, 
telling you to vote a certain way. Yes, I'm not going to tell you that you're a bad person and you're responsible for all these terrible, horrible things and that you're an immoral person and that you should leave and that you're nothing but dollar signs to us and we're glad you're gone if mm -hmm. you disagree with us. Yeah, and as Jazz Bullshit just pointed out, he called Wolf a little centrist boy. How do we not... Like, what do you want us to do? Just ignore <laughs> be like, well, if he talks about politics, we can't address it. Well, the thing is it's that, okay like I said, he, he constantly tries to go out of his way to say that uh, I'm on the right wing. And yeah, it's not and there's, that... there's an implication to that that he puts in there because, you know, typically who cares what side you're on if we're talking about something like a movie or a video game or many other things that Eric conveniently doesn't put in his video. Uh, the problem is that he wouldn't try to paint me as a right winger if he didn't have an insidious implication behind that. So, yeah, I mean, may call me a centrist now, but at the, at the end, he does make an, a very strong implication. I will be voting for Hillary Clinton. <laughs> I, uh, I I didn't even watch a Casey Neistat video before that, but when I saw it, I was like, what I are you either. doing? I was like, uh, he got reamed for that pretty hard, too. People it's, were not happy. I was surprised to see it still up. He uh, He's left it up. And a lot of the comments are like, this is aged horribly. <laughs> it's like, yeah, yeah just like, a little bit. Yeah. I can't watch Casey Neistat because his eyes bother me. That's um, why I no, can't yeah, watch he's, Jackson. He's got an interesting, um, I don't know, composition. I'm trying to remain as not insulty as possible, but his... It's interesting, <laughs> so to say, but anyway, c carry on, Mr. Eric. ...and the other is not. So, we're already hitting a couple of roadblocks. Now, I love Alien, but do you think it's any coincidence that Mr. Wolf's first example of a positive... That's from Aliens. Uh, it, it doesn't matter, I mean... Yeah, I'm, I'm okay series. with that. What I would say, though, is I prefer Ripley and Aliens to Alien in terms of... I agree. ...character growth, um... But it's okay. First example of a positive use of diversity in fiction is a character that was written as gender neutral and made female at the casting stage. I don't think that's a problem. It's yeah. A, I mean, what's the issue with that? And I mean, first off, I wasn't aware of. That. I just liked her as a character. Yeah. And second, I don't see what the problem. He's is. saying like, isn't it a coincidence that she used to have no gender before fin finalizing her character? And I, I just sit there being like, she had a daughter in Aliens, and they made that a part of the story, and it wasn't forced. Like, it, point being. Her being, having female elements, is not something Wolf has a problem with. So saying she started out without uh, the intention of being female, it's like, who cares? It's like she was a character before a gender. Yeah, that's what I'm getting. It's like, uh, that's almost a good thing in a way, unless, yeah, like, unless it's that, really that important to the character. Say, for example, yeah. you have a protagonist with a mother and father, you have to cast them to match the fact of being mothers and you know what I mean? Like uh, th then you're, you're you a little trying bit more to trapped. Why fictional characters to modern gender binaries? It's strange that he thinks that's a, something to highlight, but I can't remember if he actually makes a point on that yeah. or not. That's yeah, but weird. to dial it back, the, the fact that he mentioned Alien instead of Aliens, despite me showing okay. a picture of it, I, I don't think that really matters in the grand scheme. I, I think it matters else. more that he just completely uh, takes me out of context and doesn't play oh, the yeah, vast yeah. majority of the He's doing way worse stuff than just that. Alien, but do you think it's any- You get to see women in Aliens. ...coincidence that Mr. Wolf's first example of a positive use of diversity in fiction is a character that was written as gender neutral and made female at the casting Wouldn't stage? you like gender neutrality, given that you're a he they? I mean, I just don't- what's his problem exactly? Why is that- Yeah, I don't understand what his issue is. Like, yeah, I mean, yeah, I, I'm sorry to make us pause the video again, but it just, like, occurred to me, like, what, what does it matter? She's still a good character. Diversity in fiction She's also is a, a woman. Mm. Character that was written as gender neutral and made female at the casting stage? I wonder. He's also comparing her to Rey from Star Wars, so let's see what he has to say what about do you that. Wonder? Where Ripley was codependent on her friends, Rey is so independent that she lacks any ability to come off as halfway likable. Her natural skill with the Force, despite having no training, her ability to beat a Sith apprentice trained by Luke Skywalker and even beat Luke himself in combat, her ability to get a triple kill with a single shot from the Millennium Falcon gun despite never using it before, becoming a better shot than a stormtrooper who had trained for years within seconds, discovering Force powers she never knew existed, flying a ship she's never flown before fixing problems on said ship it's just funny because it's like how the hell did that stormtrooper lose that he had a I rifle like, she had a pistol pistols are insanely hard to shoot <laughs> like people don't understand a lot of people don't understand 
Pistols are hard as hell to shoot at things. I love as well the shot where he's she like realizes he's dead. He's just I, I kind of want to go back, but fuck it, I'll leave it now. Uh, the he's just like staring off into the distance. He's just like, hmm. and then she goes shoot. It's like what the fuck was he doing? Like he's supposed to be looking around for it. He's just like, hmm, this tree looks interesting. It's like what good is this armor? <laughs> I like the color of that moss. I mean, yeah, it's always good to check out the moss. New existed, flying a ship she's never flown before, fixing problems on said ship she's never flown before, which honestly isn't even an actual <laughs> fix, she just broke it. Everything in general can be explained away because she's a woman. That, and because she's a gigantic Mary Sue. I'm gonna level with you here, Power Strikes Back, like, three years ago, and I thought they were boring. I'm saying this because okay. it doesn't really matter. Oh, All right. by the way... Eric Taxon thinks The Last Jedi is the best of the Star Wars films, including the OT, and that The okay. e Empire Strikes Back is worse than um, The Last Jedi and Revenge of the Sith. Jesus Christ! He's got Why a very odd uh, choice of favorites, but... Yeah, it wasn't his first three, it went uh, The Last Jedi, Revenge of the Sith, then Return of the Jedi? Then... A New Hope, then Empire. And I'm not saying, because this just seems to happen. Whenever we have people responding to us, we're always curious, like, did they love The Last Jedi? And it's like, yes. <laughs> okay. Again, Sin Sins didn't. Uh, there are people who don't. It's just interesting. It's like, does this have something to do with the fact that we didn't like The Last Jedi? Uh, but he said I'm he wondering. didn't even care about Star Wars, to be honest, so... You would have to not care about Star Wars to think The Last Jedi is anything other than crap. How dare you, Rags, you, uh, sub-thickest. Empire Strikes Back, like, three years ago, and I thought they were Homophobist. boring. I'm saying this because it doesn't really matter. For the sake of argument, I'm just going to assume that The Force Awakens is the worst movie ever made, and Rey is an underdeveloped blank slate, just as Wolf Daddy says she is. So I have a question, and it's important to pose this question to you specifically, Musky Husky. Flex your creative muscles. How would you fix this? How do you take right. Rey and make her more like Ripley? How does one Are you fucking insane? this um, Hold on, keep, keep playing, because yeah, I think we, this is the part where... It were. Keep the answer in your brain pockets for now, I'll ask again later. Yeah, we'll, we'll answer oh, that. Okay, actually, so it comes up later, right? We'll answer yeah. it later. Does, does he actually think that it would be difficult to write any sort of character into her? He's gonna like, be making... that's not something that could be done. He's gonna be making a point about... It. He's. It's not just, how do you fix her, it's... He's gonna... I feel like it's a spoiler for this video, <laughs> but he's gonna be arguing... Whatever fix you apply to her does not change the fact that she's forced in as diversity or not. Disney confirmed that they hired people for diversity. We, well, like I said, we'll get to it once he says it, but for now he just all he wants us to do, chat and, and us, is to kind of just think of a few ideas of why he can, uh, you could fix yeah, Ray. So keep, keep those ideas budding, because he was going to ask us. Yeah. And uh, this is where we can stop responding to him point by point because is that he's coming, done. Is that noise coming from his point. video? Okay, pa pause it again. So three minutes and forty three seconds have gone by. How much of that was my video? Like a minute, maybe. Seconds. Yeah. How long is my video? Eighteen minutes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and that's what, it. What does that What does that tell you about how honest he's being? Not to mention. That's weird. Uh, yeah, people just commented, you can hear crickets, and you can hear loud static. Yeah, that's what I was saying. I was like, is that coming from his video? It that, is. That, the, the, I'll the ask. Jungle noise? <laughs> he records in a jungle. Oh, that, that's later. not even the worst part. Just wait until we start getting into the video. Oh god, yeah. Keep an eye on the video editing, folks. You'll start to see some strange Yeah, if shit. you're an aspiring YouTuber, what he does on the screen, don't do it. And uh, this is where we can stop responding to him point by point, because he's done oh. making new points. He's already painted himself you, into a really? corner. Painted yourself into his, a corner? In his, Get fucked, Wolf. In his 18 minutes, he doesn't make any new point. Nope. Any points except within that the 45 seconds or so that you played. He doesn't expand on anything. <laughs> Offer examples... He didn't even play my whole disclaimer. <laughs> <laughs> so... Don't, like, uh, like, folks, don't do it like this. It's really disingenuous. Just, man, that's fucked up. That's it's the Quinton method. And before anyone says it, because I don't, I don't want to be misconstrued here, when I say play the full disclaimer, I don't mean play the full unadulterated thing so that people would say, you know, uh, you're a hypocrite, you pause videos all the time. He can do that. It's just, he didn't do that. Yeah. He played, like... And, like, a small snippet of my disclaimer and made an assertion based on something that's just incorrect. 
And let's be fair you have here, to play like, the relevant parts. pausing through sections and rewinding to listen to them fully is way better than I'll only play, what, less than half a percent of your video? Half a ten percent, sorry, so less than five percent. Yeah. Oops. Yeah, those are totally different things. See, that overlong intro where he goes through in laborious detail why he's actually a nuanced little centrist puppy, wasn't never, just there- I never said I'm a centrist- He changed why? it up. You are a nuanced little boy before, now you're a nuanced little, little puppy. Yeah, he well, really. You know, he, he, do you feel condescended yet, Wolf? <laughs> not at all, man. I, this well, guy's so. Polite. It's awkward coming from him. That's all I'll say. Yep. Especially with the fucking Boy Scout Wait, and, avatar. And Shuan Head liked this video. Yeah, I was gonna get to that at the end. I mean, it doesn't That's really matter when we talk about it. Well, but... It's very clear that she did not watch my video. So Shuan Head thought this was a good take. Uh, you can find this a comment on his so video, boring. and then she says, "Do you mind taking a look at mine?" Because she was obviously like, clearly I said something, this is Wolf's video, and then he checked it out, and apparently he said yours doesn't say anything either. <laughs> just like, oh. Well, if all he takes from an 18 minute video is like 45 seconds, then hers had better be pretty damn long if he's going to get anything. He's like, oh, there's probably nothing useful in here. And then, you know, it's a shame, because like, a lot of people will watch Eric Taxon's take and be like, fucking hell, Wolf, this right Nazi idiot hates women potentially, depending on all the different messages here, it's like he made a fucking faulty ass video with this forced to There is thing. a guy, there is a guy in the chat who seems to be a very big Eric fan, actually. Oh yeah? Yeah, he, Why? he's been, I, well, that's a good question. <laughs> he said, uh, everyone except you guys and your fanboys liked my video. Wait. I, I didn't know I had like somewhere around 400,000 fanboys, that's pretty, that's Neat. pretty cool. But, right. uh, wait, wait, wait he's, Sorry, me. so he's saying the only people who liked your original video are, are, are people who are biased. Yeah. Okay. And, uh, that's fair. Okay. Yeah. Just pay attention. That sounds pay reasonable. And if you had disabled like the, the ratings, he wouldn't be able to make that statement, Wolf, so get fucked. Yeah, oh, right. absolutely. Yeah, yeah. should have just disabled the ratings, ratings, dude. Just like my yeah. biggest fan, Eric Taxon. <laughs> ah, it's part of his deflection. If you haven't noticed, that defensive screed never really ended. He's dressed up his argument into such a delicate little package of rationality that it can't really be disagreed with, but this is at a cost. Uh, Mr. Wolf, wow. this isn't what? about diversity anymore. He yeah, it is. Okay, it's exactly so what the whole video is about. The, ac well, the claim there was that you're trying to, to hide, like, the truth behind something, right? Was that what like I was getting in there? Like your centrism? I think he's implying you're hiding behind centrism. He wasn't just there to kick everything off. It's part of his deflection. If you haven't noticed, that defensive screed never really ended. He's dressed up his argument into such a... Defensive, deflection, dressed up? He's saying... Or he's explaining what his point is accurately. Is Eric trying to say that you said over and over again that you're not a centrist, which... Oh, no, that you are a centrist, which isn't something you said, uh, because you actually you're really right wing yeah like and that's it is is he trying to say that your goal here was to just present a right wing idea uh hidden under a, a centrist well, yeah that's idea? the implication he makes through the whole video is that i'm pretending to be a centrist to hide behind to hide the fact that i'm right wing which both statements are completely incorrect if he had actually shown you know the whole disclaimer i made at the beginning of the video i give examples of you know uh, far left wingers doing stupid shit, but then I also give examples of far right wingers stupid doing stupid shit. It's, it's funny to me because it's like it has to be nefarious, doesn't it? It can't be that you just fucking had some points to make about writing, irrespective it, it, of the, politics. The whole point of me making that disclaimer was to prove that I'm not coming at it from some overly biased far right or far left point of view. It's to show that I am self aware that there are problems with both sides because I mean I, I can't even. Uh, express how many comments I've seen in uh, the past and how many I'll definitely see in the future. People saying, oh, you know, uh, liberals are a disease. Mm. It's like, I'm, I'm a liberal. So that's, <laughs> oh, that, that's the point. That's the point of my disclaimer that you completely missed. Well, not just missed, you completely didn't uh, address it in your video. So is this like when ContraPoint said, I'm not a Nazi, is what a Nazi would say? Much, oh, that's yeah. yeah, that's that's parroted by a lot of people, and it's not necessarily um, untrue, but it's also what a non-Nazi would say, by the way. Yeah, do you know what I mean? Like, like if you go, well, yeah, hey, Muller, yeah, are you it a Nazi? Get you any closer to the, it's a statement that doesn't get you any closer to the truth. It's worth. It's a worthless statement. Yeah. yeah the, to be fair, to be fair, I, he doesn't like 
uh, strictly call me a Nazi in this video, but oh, there is there is a derogatory implication that he well, he's, he's, a, he's puts practically accused you of trying to trick people into what your politics actually are. Yeah, and obviously, since he paints that in such a negative light, there is, uh, you know, given the mm. stigma against right wingers that we've seen echoed throughout the left, there is a reason why he makes this implication throughout the video. Yeah, why doesn't he just talk about the diversity stuff instead of bringing your politics into it? Like, why do you? Because he doesn't have an argument. At all? Well, he's gonna. He he's gonna be trying to blame. Like, he's trying to say that Wolf has a different problem, and Wolf sees it as a specific problem because of his politics. I'm pretty sure that's the goal, anyway. And, uh... Okay. Well, yeah, we'll just let him... Notice it. That defensive screed never really ended. He's dressed up his argument into such a delicate little package of rationality that it can't really be disagreed with, but this is at a cost. Uh, Mr. Wolf, this isn't about diversity anymore. It literally you, is. Y you just didn't like a movie. No. Like well, first that off, was the intro, I, didn't, I guess. I didn't. I didn't just dislike a movie. I didn't even just use movies as an example. I used books. I used TV shows. I used comics, and I used video games. He's he's ticking this all up to you not liking the Last Jedi. Well, much, Force yes. Awakens was the example, I suppose. Is there a text well, he, he he fucking use, stupid? Uh, yeah, I mean, he did use uh, Last Jedi throughout the video, but. Hmm. Like, like I said, he has to ignore the vast majority of my points to make his. Well, Mr. Wolf, what is Force Diversity? I guess we're gonna find out. What's this noise? Jesus Christ, <laughs> if it could just end, I could turn it- If you make- if you make videos, don't do this. Does- wait, what's- so was the- the static of the- of the, uh, the crickets deliberate? Because you would have just maybe cut it out here, video. wouldn't you? Well, maybe he made his video outside at night. <laughs> He's like uh, on his computer in the fucking middle of a forest. <laughs> like, yeah. Well, this is how I do. Commute with nature. Oh, explain why. The quote usually goes, Oh, I'm a supporter of diversity, as long as it isn't forced. Exactly. That's yep, that's good. Yeah. Moving on. <laughs> yeah, that, yeah, I agree with that. I have what, no what, problem what? with diversity. You, like, you gonna refute that, that, Eric? What Prince or? Fuzzy Butt over here is saying. Fuzzy butt. Oh, I'm a, I'm a prince, though. Fuzzy butt. <laughs> prince, prince fuzzy. I mean, butt. I'll say I, I, I got like royalty, in blood, I guess. Yeah, that's but true. It's an fuzzy upgrade. butt. As care. long as it isn't forced. That's what Prince Fuzzy Butt over here is saying. Diversity yeah. is a positive thing, but things get dicey when the diversity is. No, diversity is not always it's a neutral no, thing. Diversity, yeah, diversity isn't positive or negative. It can be positive. Your it content doesn't automatically improve by having. A, a race in there that wasn't in there previously. That's just that's contextual as fuck. Like it's, it's it's almost there's a lot of things that can screw up, especially historical accuracy. That would be mm. one of the biggest ones. Someone said I should name my channel uh, Prince Fuzzy Butt now. <laughs> <laughs> I have a, a, a couple questions. Part okay. one: What the fuck do you mean? Oof. It's really it's really simple. You don't need it, to yell, but yeah, it's, it's, really, it's really, really simple. simple. I explained it in the first three minutes that you cut out. Of that yeah, wasn't important. When you take out the argument, the argument doesn't make sense, and so he's nailed it. <laughs> yeah, what it, is it... the difference between forced diversity and unforced diversity? Are you well, retarded? We've already been over that. And Wolf yeah, my, has, my so. whole video covered my whole video covered it. If you if you actually watched it, you'd know. Um, we've. Been, I was gonna say we could explain it again, but we've done it in this podcast already. So. M moving on. Well, as it turns out, just like with all art, everyone has their own opinion. Some people, like uh, Name Drop, Revenge of the Dreamer, speak know, exclusively of diversity that goes against historical record. Mm -hmm. You see the writer says that there's no lead actors of color, even though that would be historically inaccurate, as this piece is a historical retelling of a World War II battle. I don't but you know see, that's anything not what we talking about. about. Yeah, I don't even know what the, the subject yeah. is. But... Well, well, I don't, well, in yeah. fairness, he uses a couple examples. This is the, the weaker of the two, but he, he does uh, get to a point eventually. Well, I mean, he's not wrong. The, 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 the concept of putting diversity into something can be a negative outcome when you're trying to depict reality. Absolutely. Um, yeah, but but if you're well, no, because not well, and it depends on how you want to frame it. Because if you're trying to apply to history, then it's I mean, you're then you've set a goal, and the goal is to recreate something. So it, it's kind of it's it's a little different in that aspect. Instead of saying our goal is diversity, 
versus our goal is recreating historic uh, historical accuracy. Well, you, you remember people are upset at Dunkirk for not having women in it enough, right? Yeah. Which it's just like, but but that was there what was, that was the case. <laughs> And so we can discern that diversity was not forced in, while if the film had 50-50 men-women, people would be like, what the hell? That's not how it went down. Like, eh, it's fine. Yes, if you have diversity as an aspect of obtaining historical accuracy, that is different than having your primary goal as we need to be diverse. Also, let's make a historical movie. By the way, Those having completely different things. Having women in Dunkirk wouldn't necessarily have ruined the film, but it would have. Uh, like, I, I'm, I'm not saying you know it's possible, but um, it would still be forced diversity because it was not natural. That's not how it would have happened had you uh, had the goal been in a historical accurate film, which is clearly what Dunkirk was going for. Um, so that you know, he's already asked about what's the difference between forced and unforced. Like, does that work as an explanation, uh, Eric, or no? I don't know. Well, look, why, why would we have a problem with women in Dunkirk? You can look at them. <laughs> yeah, you get, to, you get to look at women. Well, I, mean, I wish Lee would come on this podcast. It'd be so embarrassing for him. <laughs> it's, it's like people who, um, the, when Call of Duty World War II came out, there were articles talking about how come there's no like queer people and transgender <laughs> soldiers and stuff like that. Like, unironically, wondering where are all the trans soldiers and things like that. And I'm like, you fucker, that's you forcing diversity. Yeah, it's, it's, not, it's, it's almost like, I don't know, it's, it's not hard to follow to me, it's so simple. They don't care about historical accuracy, they care more about cultural relevancy. Cultural Which is relevancy. Uh, not very persuasive, because historical fiction is only one genre and- And that's where he fucked it up. Historical fiction is not historical depiction. Like, it's, you know, the historical fiction is more what I would call stuff like Inglorious Bastards. Yes, you've got a, a Fall, film, uh, Wolfenstein. Uh, I think that new, um, yeah, Overlord. That's media that is designed to take the ideas of a thing that did happen, but then fuck with it and do whatever they yeah, want. Yeah, I mean, look, I, I like uh, historical fiction uh, from time to time. It it depends on which one it is, obviously. Um, most of the time, no one no one really cares about that. If someone uh, does like a, you know a Black World War II, but they're like, this is historical fiction. It's like, okay, whatever. Mm -hmm. As long as it's good, I'm fine with it. The problem that we have, like in the case of Battlefield Five, putting like uh, cyborg Asian women women on the front lines, yeah, um, it's just spitting in the face of history, and that's the issue we have with it. And those those projects are not the same as something like Dunkirk. Some, someone yeah. someone pointed out uh, the article about trans soldiers in Call of Duty. Would you like to link that? It's a Polygon article that I covered. If you Google or um, YouTube my name in like Call of Duty World War II, it should pop up. You can find it yourself. You're a big boy. I've got, <laughs> I made a video about it. You can do it. Yeah, it's weird that he like. I don't think that's what this guy was talking about. Assuming that was this is the problem. I don't know what his subject is. If his subject was Inglorious Bastards, that I'd be like, yeah, that's weird that you'd say that. Considering there's a lot of stuff that happens in that film. It's completely yeah. at odds with history, but I don't I know what you're talking isn't about. Isn't that like pretty uh, well received? Oh yeah, yeah people, I love Inglorious Bastards. Yeah, they kill Hitler in a movie theater. I mean, it's just <laughs> like it's obviously not. I mean, come on. People aren't like a, a new thing, but more importantly, it's a different distinction than the one Wait, from what? our Red Rocketeer who goes. But that's that's fine. Do you want to rewind that and the? Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm gonna it's rewind the... it. So. Historical fiction is only one genre, and also black people aren't like a, a new thing. But more importantly, it's See, a that doesn't even like that. that doesn't counter that guy or what he said. Yeah, so that it's doesn't just, counter that guy. Eric, okay. this doesn't look good. Okay, Eric, you're no, dumb. For relevancy, which is uh, not very persuasive. Because... And I don't even feel like I have the full context of this guy here. That's what I'm. That's what I was saying. Talking. Like, I don't really I don't, know I don't enough. I don't know exactly what he's. Yeah, I don't know exactly what he's talking about. What What is his subject? Is he referring to a, a specific time period or a movie or a piece of work? You know, it's it's too out of context. Historical fiction is only one genre, and also black people aren't like a, a new thing. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We no one is arguing that black people are a new invention. <laughs> they were invented twenty years Fuck, ago. Stupid idiot. What a what a disingenuous prick! But I mean, oh, that. come on, come on, Rags. You, you standing in line at GameStop for the new Black Man Two Thousand? It's a it's fucking ridiculous. It's one of those things where if someone says, "Oh, I'm trying to depict this event that happened in history where no black people were present," and you're like, "Yeah, but black people existed." 
black people aren't new. It's like it's completely irrelevant. Total <laughs> shit. Asian women fought in Norway in World War II, Mauler. You're uneducated. I didn't say no women fought in World War II. It's not something I've ever said. Just, just Ugh. FYI, I said that there wasn't 50-50 men and women in Dunkirk. If I'm wrong on that, I, well, that's uh, welcome to prove it. Well, that's not very uh, progressive of you. Yeah, I know, right? Black people are, people are discussing when black people were invented now. <laughs> so thank you, Eric, <laughs> for opening up that discussion. And also, black people aren't, like, a, a new thing. But more importantly, it's a different distinction than the one from our red... Oh, oh so Eric, okay. okay. Oh, this, Eric. Uh, Ooh, boy. I know this clip. Ooh, boy. Yeah, this is a clip from my video where I point out the reason why this is forced diversity. Because I don't have a problem with a transgender character being in the game, but even transgender people hated this character they for being hated, in the game. They hated this because it was so... They, it, they said it was tokenism. They said it makes them look bad. It says that it dehumanizes them and turns them into essentially a representative. I mean, she literally uh, opens up the conversation by saying something to the effect of, my name used to be Stefan, but now I'm Stephanie or something like that. I mean, obviously I'm paraphrasing it, but... Yeah. Why would he... It's like, it's like transgender people they don't they don't just say i used to be a guy and it's like oh, but he okay. does this as if you needed to have seen wolf's video to get the reference like what is he trying to sell here because we know, we know it just because i'm aware of the controversy surrounding this character when mass effect andromeda came out because everybody hated it even like polygon and kotaku were like yeah this is obvious tokenism this is not the hill to die on eric yeah, and it, but it's weird because he, it's almost like he's referring to it as if he showed us the clip, but he hasn't. It's just like yes, this is a thing Wolf said, and it's just like wait, I don't what, what trust is this? you. Yeah, you didn't play someone this clip. Who isn't smart enough to find out what forced diversity is is not someone I think I can trust. Deep into criticizing science fiction and fantasy, historical accuracy is only one of many grievances he has with how things are going right now. See, Ray is an example of forced diversity, because she is no. explicitly written to be a Wands, and that is the entire focus of the character. While Ripley is a better example, because okay, we, her we actually know for a fact that she was forced diversity, because J.J. Abrams literally said that he did diversity. So and, unless you're going to deny reality... And man, yeah. it's starting to flip out on these visuals, too. Yeah, th yeah this, this, is is when the, this is when the visuals start, like... Well, you'll, you'll see. Just because, you'll see. You, just because you have a button that makes the th screen do a thing doesn't mean you should use it. I sincerely Earth? apologize to all the people that are about to suffer what? severe epileptic seizures. He must be doing it on purpose because nobody's this retarded. Well, yeah, so you can't accidentally. What is the goal here, Eric? Is it to make it feel like an acid trip? Like, why? I wish I was on acid watching this video. Well, I mean, you're about to see like a visual acid trip in this video. Mm. And, I, and I think it's also important to note that you can have a character who the narrative um, is built around her being a woman. You know, if she was a suffragette or if she was yeah. trying to do something that women weren't historically allowed to do at the time or, you know, things of that nature. Like if you cast a suffragette so as a black bad, you might be like, hmm, this is a bit strange. Yeah. Someone said uh, this is diversity editing. <laughs> diverse editing. But no, Incidental. diversity is good though. Forced diversity is good though. Mm -hmm. A natural aspect of herself induced from her personality traits. She's a well written protagonist first and foremost. Ooh, Ray? And again, I haven't seen The Force Awakens, but I'm taking Wait, Fluff Ray? Boy. We need to go back. Did you say that about did you say that about Ray? Her femaleness is incidental. No, I'm pretty sure he's talking about, uh, he said, like, by comparison to Ripley. The entire focus okay. of the character. While Ripley is a better example because yeah. her femaleness okay, is incidental, a natural aspect of herself induced yes. from her personality yes. traits. Yes. She's a well-written protagonist first and foremost. And again, I haven't seen The Correct. Force Awakens, but I'm taking Fluffboy's word here because it helps my point. But you are going to disagree with it. But you saw The Last Jedi. It's editing, he's even fucking tilted the, the film. Why? Yeah, man. Well, well, I don't know if he's seen The Last Haven't Jedi at this point of the video, mm. but, um... Maybe. Maybe not. Yeah, it, it's just... It, I mean, I, I don't know how you can possibly try and refute this point if you haven't even seen the movie in question. I mean, not that you would even agree, because you I mean, clearly... We've got, like, a whole half a video left, right so... <laughs> Who knows what he's gonna do? Also, they said they were memeing with the woman comment. Um, that's, that, that's fine. It's hard to distinguish when I have no idea who, who the person is, and it's said in text because there's, there's no tone but um even still uh women there are there are women who fought in world war ii 
correct? In some way, shape, or yes. form, in different whatever yes, cultures. Very small amount, yes. So if someone said no woman ever fought in World War II, they would be uh, incorrect. Yes, generally when people say women didn't fight in World War II, they mean that in a broad sense, because there were negligible numbers of women who did fight in World War II. And yes, we should appreciate whatever sacrifices they may or may not have made, yes. but... It's obviously not there's... devaluing what they did to yeah. just be truthful about what the statistics are. It awakens, but I'm taking Fluffboy's word here because it helps my point. But meanwhile, some guy called The ATZ Show is pointing to Pixar's Coco as a positive example of diversity because it takes the setting of Mexico and shows it in the most authentic way possible, extending Mexican culture all throughout that's, every square inch. What that's a... not diverse. That video isn't diverse because it's only Mexicans. Yeah, I don't. This is, this is weird as well. Why are you jumping over to a different channel's opinion yeah, on a different man. film? Like, it's Coco okay. Coco is an amazing movie and you should all see it. But it is not diverse, because it's only Mexicans. If diverse means to have multiple races, if, then... <laughs> if diverse means what its definition is, then no, that is not... Unless you're, like, diverse not, characters, it's like not a there's problem. a dog, and there's humans, and there's skeletons, but they're humans too, but... Hmm. I guess, it, yeah, it has dead people in it, so that's diverse. Yeah. It, has, it, has a, it has a lot of dead Mexicans on the other side of the border. But still, Oof. it's like, he, he like, goes... <laughs> He's like, Wolf says that uh, Ray's bad because it focuses on her being a woman, and, and, and Ripley's good because the aspects of her femaleness are ancillary to, to, to the core parts of her character. And it's like, okay, so what's he going to say to counter? And then he goes, now there's this other channel that says Coco is a good example of diversity. And it's like, whoa, whoa, whoa like, what are you doing? Like, why, why are we jumping over? What, what, how's, this, how's this factor in back to what Wolf... Uh, shows it in the most authentic way possible, extending Mexican culture all throughout every square inch of the screen. Mr. ATZ doesn't want characters made different races without owning that decision and having it become an integral part of the story. Why so are you a smart implying... person? No, why are you implying that Mexicans have to act a certain way? What does this have to do with Wolf's point, though, even if this guy said something completely different to... Do you know what I mean? I'm like, why are we... How many layers are we looking at right now? Three, which is just <laughs> awful. It's one. Uh, it makes me want to look away. Like, don't do that. Characters made different races without owning that decision and having it become an integral part of the story. And for those of you who you, but it's not because they are. It's not because they are that race. It's because they are that culture. Yeah, it's a result of the place that That's they're the depicting. Thing. These are the people yes. who are there. Like, do you think is the dog Hispanic? Is it a Hispanic dog? You know. It's like it's a character that grew up in Mexico. They will have they will be part of Mexican culture regardless of their race. Races are not nationalities. It's like if I was born is it's like if I was born in South Africa, if I was born in Japan, I would be Japanese and Japanese culture would be my culture, but I would be white. I mean, yeah, if the, if the parents stayed the same as well, I guess. I mean, it's kind of, the thing is, is it's kind of implying that if you're Mexican, or sorry, if you look this way, this is your culture. And and the other thing of, like, it's creepy that he's, it's almost the implication is, like, white is not diverse, but black is diverse. That's how it works. Well, yeah, a lot of people unironically treat the word diverse as less white people. The less white people there are, the more diverse it is. That's why Black Panther was called an extremely diverse film. Which makes even no though it's 95% black actors and again that's not why it was bad we don't even have a problem with that or coco that's fine but calling it yeah. diverse is weird this doesn't make sense this this part video is this. terrible yeah i think that's one thing i'd like to ask eric if he agrees or disagrees with the statement that a film filled with one race would be diverse in terms of race i wonder if is there a contradiction there or is he fine with that Story. I mean, if you if you found a bunch of Hispanic people who lived in, I don't know, uh, North Dakota, if there are Hispanic people in North Dakota, if, if there's you, anyone if you, in North Dakota, yeah, if there's anyone in North Dakota, and you plop them down in Mexico City during a Dia de los Muertos celebration, do you think they'd like know what to do? Like, you think that they would genetically, being Hispanic as an ethnicity, just know what you're supposed to do? in that culture that isn't their own, you know? It's like, do you think, I'm a white guy, I'm a white, um, I got German in me. I don't know anything <laughs> about Oktoberfest. I don't know anything, I can't, I can't speak German, you know, stuff like that, I don't know. 
but that's essentially what he that's the equivalent of what's being the point is being made here apparently someone just sent me a message because they've been back and forthing with joseph on twitter about the the, the subjective video apparently his conclusion is you can't call an opinion objective but you can call it informed versus non-informed What? That makes sense to you guys. <laughs> you can have um, an objective. You can have an. Ob We're gonna get to that we, uh, yeah, eventually. Okay. We'll, we'll get into one, that, one yeah. century. We That's gonna be a whole it. different thing. Yeah, let's let's make yeah. sure Eric has his time first. Yeah. Actually, watching this video, I want to put it this way: I want diversity. Why? But I want it to be <laughs> quality material, and not just like baiting people with token characters. Right. Earlier this year, a movie called Latin Lover came out and it had box office success. It had Latins in it. But the whole thing was geared on the lowest jokes possible. They're pretty much just summed up to, ha ha, he got, he got hit with a tortilla and you know, I'm Mexican and I- Well, it just looks like stereotype jokes that are relatively bottom of the barrel writing. As for like, is it, is it tokenism? I don't, I think that's what they're going for. How to be a Latin lover, is that the name of the film? Yeah. I In guess. that case, they're uh, clearly they aiming to have a a silly. Yeah, you could like, have good natured like uh, ethnic humor. I mean, you got Homer. Homer is an example of this, but for American. Look at every Medea movie. <laughs> yeah, that too. Uh, I don't, because that's another thing. Apparently, because I, I did look at the comment section, they were like, "What what Wolf calls forced diversity is actually called tokenism, and it's the idea that it, South Park illustrates it perfectly." There's they have the entire school is like filled with white children and then you have token comes in and he's the black kid it's like the idea that you bring in another race <laughs> no, as yeah. the as the token of being like you know there's people who are well lelishly refer to Abbebed or friggy as our token right because we get to be like hey we're not racist if they're on it's obviously a joke but the that's what people are accusing forced diversity of which i think is i think that's two different things um, you can force a, a, I, I, if you bring in one and they don't actually do anything in the story they practically just stand there uh, as opposed to Ray, who's basically the protagonist it, you know it's complicated I think there's a bit more nuance to it but uh, even if it were the same thing it wouldn't make um, it wouldn't change Wolf's points if they thought of it as the exact same uh, idea there's similarities um I suppose, thinking about it, I guess because if you did shove one like a black character into an all-white cast and they didn't even do anything, uh, you could be like, "Well, that was trying to force diversity." I just, I would just, it's so incompetent that um, I, I, I would actually prefer referring to it as tokenism because it's just like, yeah, you just brought in a token, um, and that applies both ways to any whatever you, you're up to. If you if you introduce a character that has nothing and no reason other than uh, they're identified purely by <laughs> something like their sexuality, like their race, like whatever else. It, it is it's the kind of writing that's just like, ugh. Someone said, are you saying Appa and Fringy don't do anything or contribute to the EFAP plot? <laughs> no. Nope. The, the only reason we have them around is just so that we can say, see, we don't hate brown people. I mean, we have enough, green friends. Uh, yeah, we have green friends. Fringy How many green friends do like, you have? Fringy, yeah. Fringy usually expects people to assume that he's white as well, which is Kind of I genuinely did think he was. I but... thought so too, and then he just mentioned it when I was like, "Oh, I thought, oh, all right." I never. I, I I thought it could go either way. I, I had no idea. He's tall I, too. He's I, like, I didn't, like six I didn't six really ever. Shit. And I guess like, really, he's six five. He's like tall, some like that. He can correct Jesus, me later. But midget, he, he mentioned the like his height once, and it, I I know it started with a six, and I'm like, damn. Well, okay, I guess, I, I guess I'm looking up at the tall green man, got it. And you know what, it's not forced diversity in, in the EFAP writing, the EFAP episodes, because they, they, they just happened to be people we knew. So, yes. Uh, it's completely no natural writing. Here. The our, EFAP our, writing our team... Is, is natural. We have organic diversity on EFAP. The EFAP writing team. They're great. Well, Jared Genesis is the chief editor of EFAP writing. I guess uh, doing a really great job. Um, you know how to, he knows how to pick them. They, uh, you know, you got a lot of people invested. Uh, uh, yeah, you, everybody we've covered on EFAP, they usually are writing team. They become a part of the writing team once we've covered them. It's a very strange system, but it just it keeps it, it keeps it fresh, you know. Yeah, you know, if you went up to Jared and asked, "Hey, what do you think of EFAP?" He'd be like, ah, "They did it okay the way that they did it." <laughs> <laughs> um, 
Oh, Jared. But yeah, I don't know. See, there's a lot to talk about with, with what's being covered here, but it's just so brief. I mean, we can only really go with whatever uh, conclusion Eric makes from these clips, I guess. Up to, ha ha, he got, he got hit with a tortilla, and, you know, I'm Mexican, and I eat tortillas. Here's all my money. See, like, I actually Yeah, but Mexicans hitting each other with tortillas like is kind of funny. <sighs> this is the thing. Like, what, what what's the pro- Are you saying it's bad because it doesn't represent a fully-fledged character? And I'd be like, well, what do you think they were doing? Do you think they were trying to present a fully-fledged character? Or they were trying to make jokes out of stereotypes? Yeah, they're just trying to make people laugh because people hitting each other with tortillas is Homer funny. Simpson is one of the most classic examples of an American stereotype. He's the Dude, stupid he's guy. He is so bigoted and racist, he just makes all yellow people look bad. Exactly. That's true. That's uh, true yeah. Yeah. But, yeah, like, uh, I wonder, because I haven't seen this film, but I wonder if there are uh, Latin, Latina characters who are actually, you know, not stereotypes in this film. Because <laughs> I'm willing to bet there's at least one. Someone said I took a vacation and stayed in the sun too long, so I turned black. That's how it happens. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I guess because yeah. the wolf is black now. Interesting. Crispy baldy. Tortilla, and you know I'm Mexican, and I eat tortillas. Here's all my money. See, like I actually agree with this guy. I like him a lot. WTF? I hate forced diversity now. Anyways, the ATZ man. Wait, what? Okay. Okay, so video. Was that a joke? Was that? I don't, I don't know. know. <laughs> I don't know because the ATZ show. What he said made sense. Well, yeah, you definitely see the the why you would be frustrated with if you wanted a, a Latina character yeah. and then they just introduced a stereotype. That's absolutely going to be fucking way, annoying. Because the way that the ATZ show was talking about diversity was pretty much just variety in a medium. He's like, yeah. not everything's the same. You know, it just spices it up because it's different. It's a different setting and different people. But he doesn't want it to be forced for its own sake. He wants that to be natural and organic. And that's fine. That I agree. I yeah. have, is he about to turn this around, though? I really can't remember anymore. I don't know. With this guy? While you like while you discuss it amongst yourselves, let me use the loo and grab a beer because I need alcohol. Yeah, fair <laughs> enough. I'll I'll read some slumber chats. Uh, slumber slumber chats. Uh, Ralph's av uh, Ralph Rags avatar looks like he saw me drop the soap. Ooh, beautiful way to start these. Remember when Dunkirk movie came out <laughs> and some people attacked it for not having a diverse cast for a historical event? Yeah, that's obviously what we were referencing. Well, if he called you a boy, don't you see how offensive that is? Yeah, Wolf. Boy. Boy. Write your credit card number so Wolf don't die. What? Uh, <laughs> that, I think he might be uh, referencing... Have you, have you seen the videos of uh, Attention All Halo Gamers or Attention All Dark Souls Gamers? I think I sent you one. Uh, I think, you, yeah, I have a vague memory of that. Yeah, it's like some old dude on Fiverr who, like... Like pretend, like makes joking videos. Uh, or he's not on Fiverr anymore. I think he got banned. Um, he made videos like "Attention, all Halo gamers! Noble Six is alive, and he needs your credit card number, the three-digit code on the back, <laughs> and the expiration date, so you can save him." And it's, it's just funny. So I think he might be, I think he might be referencing that. If not, well, I'm, I'm stupid, but no, oh well, I'm going to interpret it as that. Um, I'm moderate and I approve. Wolf is not moderate. Well, there you go. Uh, well, Force yeah. diversity is when they have a strong female character instead of having a strong character that is female, or when the race gender becomes more important than the writing, uh, the writer for the character. Yeah, they're, they're, if you're going to sell them based on the fact that your character is female alone, it's just like, what? That's fine. Why, why, what does that have to do with anything? It's just like, that's the. We've written 90% of the character already because she's female. It's like, oh. Uh, welcome back, Wolf. We missed you, man. Good to have you back. I'm assuming this 25 all goes to Mola, but I hope the three of you can somehow share like good little boys. Gonna go play with my Dangus in the shower now. <laughs> <laughs> what a way to end. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, uh, thanks. Uh, yeah, yeah um, I'll I'll buy Wolf a game on Steam at some point to somehow oh, that's flush nice. that through. Uh, Eric the Straw Man arranger taxon. It's, you know, you could definitely go there. Uh, Ripley is a character first and a female second. Ray is the female first and a character, well, maybe in episode 9. <laughs> it's like, yeah, she'll finally be a character. Hopefully. Uh, welcome back, Wolf. Uh, take Muddy. This is, this is, this is, this is, this doesn't go to Wolf, guys. If you, if you want to donate to Wolf, you're gonna have to wait for him to, um, do a stream, I guess. Or if you got, like, a PayPal link yeah. you, you use. 
I'm not going to ask people for money. I mean, if they want to donate to me, if I like actually make something, that's one thing, but I, I don't like asking for money and shit. I didn't even want to, I didn't even want to promote my old Patreon because I was like, that just seems shitty. Make a video and then do it as much as you want. And don't forget Skillshare, Audible, uh, Skids, SoundCloud, (laughs) all of the things. Uh, Ray is a force dumpster. Tortillas. To celebrate diversity. You freaking stereotype. <laughs> uh, Ray is clearly an avatar for Kathleen Kennedy, a brunette girl like both leads for Solo and Rogue One, just like Kay Cray. Uh, possibly. Uh, can't wait for episode 9. Reveals that Ray is so bland because she's just a manifestation of the Force, and then all the apologists flip and start praising how bland a character Ray is. <laughs> I mean, I'm I'm interested to see what if, if, if he's got any plans like that, because what do you do with Ray in episode 9, you know? I love politics. I love democracy. I love arts. Yes, love the bull. What are you gonna say? I assume her parents. One of her parents is that that alien from the Force Awakens that sold her or she sold shit to. Oh, uh, Unka Plus. Is is that your daddy? Has a name? Yeah, yeah. He's. uh, I don't even know why I know that, but his name is Unka Plut. No, I'm pretty sure she says his name uh, when they're talking about the compressor. I haven't seen the movie in a while, but that guy and the spaceship that flew away is a separation. Snacks, give him up rags, this is a communist stream. No. <laughs> he called him a boy. Uh, Hitler is an example of forced diversity. I'm not sure I understand that exactly. The Metro games uh, made me centrist because shooting both Nazis and commies just felt right. Oh. Hey, Pavel was a great guy. At least you get to see women in Aliens, that's true. Very true. There's plenty of good female characters where being a woman is central to the character, but none of these uh, bland rays are allowed to be feminine either, beyond being just simply being a woman. Yeah, I mean, what like what you know, like how you got uh, uh, Ripley's got like a nurturing sort of motherly attitude towards Newt. It's like what yeah, can you reference? Yeah, something I mentioned in my video that Eric. Dis- yeah, Eric didn't cover that. Fuck that. He's, he's, that that would get in the way. Wolf can't cover that. But um, what? This is the problem. It's like what? What about Ray? Blah blah blah. It's like every time you ask that question, it's like there's nothing to grasp about Ray. So yeah, the answer to that question is just nothing again. Um, and plus nowadays, look at it this way: whenever something is, um, when whenever you have a female character and there's some sort of a flaw with her, or she's portrayed as stupid or any other negative aspect, it's called sexist, and you're not allowed to do that. It's a negative stereotype of women, and you can't show that, and it's offensive. But with men, men could be fucking stupid and retarded and idiotic and selfish and cruel and mean. You can make a man anything you want. Nobody will bat an eye. That's because they are selfish, cruel, and mean. Look at you two. And me. That's true. Look at you, fat. It's horrible. That's why I fuck them. Uh, remember the black actress who played Anne Boleyn? I do not know of that one. Who? Anne Boleyn Anne is from. Uh, that's a Henry VIII thing, black. isn't it? No, that's the, that's probably what they're referencing. I I don't know the movie or TV show or project that that happened though. I've never heard that name before in my life. Wow, you don't know your fucking history, Wolf. God. It's not, uh, no, Wolf, it's yes, we missed you, Muzzletov, Lachaim. How are you doing, my good man? <laughs> <laughs> he said, buy a beer. Seagull. Uh, thank you for calling the BF5 nonsense. A lot of YouTubers tiptoed around it. I, yeah, I, I, I mean, a lot of people covered it, from what I remember, but... Yeah, I know I that there was a lot um, of people like, making a lot of videos on it. There was a lot of people who didn't want to have a take on it, though, right? They were just like, eh, fuck it, you know. Eh, well, yeah, the people, game. you know, the, the boogies that don't have opinions. Well, there, I think that there was a controversy about, like, how a lot of channels that are basically thriving thanks to Battlefield games were avoiding talking about that a- aspect. They were just like, I just yeah, want to play I the imagine. fucking game, okay? I just want to cover the fucking game and go on with my life. I don't know. Yeah, it's, kind of, it's kind of like the people that are playing Black Ops 4, even though it's like an awful, terrible, horrible game. But it's like, oh, you ever... No. It's bad. I've not played it. Um, I wish I didn't play it. Great to see you back on, Wolf. On Battlefield 5, a YouTuber named American Krogan went through the campaign and pointed out all the diversity manipulations, like replacing yep. an entire Norwegian squad with two him. Yeah, I really like that video. Yeah, that uh, was a good video. American I Krogan should... is—he—he uh, he makes some good stuff. He, he pops up every once in a while. I like his stuff for the most I, part. I should check that out. Uh, if Patrick, Just Right, and Quinton band together to create an anti efap what would they name themselves? My money's on evolved critics. Also, High Wolf. Uh, I'd want it to be a reverse of efap so <laughs> um, I guess Paffy. 
Pafe. Pafe. Pafe sounds just pathetic enough, doesn't it? <laughs> fucking Pafe. Uh, is pathetic your cut, and fucking egregious. Is your cut for getting Wolf back? <laughs> also, egregious. someone needs to introduce diversity fanatics to international cinema. Yeah, the, that's something that they don't like to acknowledge, is that Bollywood and a lot of cinema in Asia will be very non-diverse, but that doesn't matter. I, I don't know if, the, does the argument evolve into Black Panther is diverse because when you drop Black Panther into all of American cinema, it now has, we now as a result have more black people in cinema. Do you know what I mean? Well, well if you use the same logic, then every film that has nothing but white people is very diverse because whites are a minority on the planet. Yeah, and, and not to mention that that's a bit reductionist to only consider American cinema versus Bollywood and, and other yeah, parts of the thing. world. Uh, glad you're back, Wolf. I missed you. Thank God Emperor Wolf is back. So this is how media dies, with thunderous fapping. <laughs> For, uh, someone commented uh, after that saying, not my most thunderous fap. <laughs> Rag, I hate people who eat in video slash streams. Zzz. I mean, it's okay. No, I, I was doing it for the purpose of being obnoxious, so that all of so only the real fans would stay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I saw the trailer for Mary Queen of Scots, and there was a black guy in the English court. Would this be forced diversity since it's based on history? If, I, if there was if there was a black guy there historically, then I have no problem with it. Yeah, I would need to know more about uh, it, even I, though I do. However, I doubt that Sir Lancelot was a black guy, so. Yeah, it depends on how you do it. I mean, if somebody was black historically, or if it makes sense that there would be a black guy there, then yeah, go for it, absolutely. But if you're going to try and portray a historical setting, I really value accuracy. It helps with the immersion a great deal for me, and I don't think that you should just throw in stuff, especially because depending on how serious you try and pass it off, it crosses the lines into historical revisionism. Dude, are you kidding? Lancelot was totally black. Yeah. He always... At the As round someone, table, he was always like, "Yo, nigga, po passeth that weedeth." You guys weren't even the there. Weedeth. Passeth well, you know? the herb. You guys weren't the there. God. Passeth the devil's lettuce. <laughs> Angry Joe demonized those who had issues on with Battlefield Five, calling them MAGA hat wearing Trump supporters, and called them all SJW insult in the book. Oh, I remember Rags that. Rags made a video on Rags that. made a video on that. <laughs> it was the I last video he ever made before he died. Correct. <laughs> and it was, it, it was not monetized, so hooray. Thanks, YouTube. I and to clarify, uh, it's not that, like, you have to have an issue with what the guy said. It's just the idea that if you reviewed the game and say, like, you should buy it, it's quality. Like, Downward Thrust uh, did that. Then you should expect oh. people in the comments section to rip you a new one because they're like, have you fucking seen what they've said to their fan base? So, someone asked. Um, they expect the advocates for the for covering the game to to stick up for the fan base. You 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 probably understand what I mean by that. Well, the the idea is that EA decided to inject politics and diversity messages and social justice stuff into the game, so it's not fair if you demand reviewers not cover that. You can't, I mean, you can't just have it one way where the company can say, yeah, we're doing all this stuff in the game, and reviewers aren't allowed to cover that in their review of it. Like, it's clearly an aspect of the game that EA put in, so it should be reviewed and commented on. It's part, it's part of the game. It was made a part of the game. And the last one is, uh, have you guys ever noticed that Red Letter Media, despite consistently shitting on the obsession of nostalgia in film, are in fact nostalgia-obsessed themselves? Um... I mean, if I was to be specific, I don't know, they, they, they usually have a problem with the arbitrary references, like fan service or, or reigniting an old good thing into a new bad thing. But uh, they do reference, you know, a lot of their old stuff as an example of stuff that was better. I don't know if... I don't know if I'd say... I, I'm assuming you're trying to point out a bit of a hypocrisy. I'd probably need a bit more detail before I would agree, because, I mean, we kind of do the same thing a lot. We, a lot of our favorite things are from long ago rather than new. Then we will also claim that we hate the shit out of things getting rebooted and re redone. So, yeah. Um, I don't watch Red Letter Media, so I don't know anything about it. I mean, it, 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 it seems fine to me. Like, it seems consistent to me, is what I was saying. Anyway, let's continue with Eric. A lot. WTF, I hate forced diversity now. Anyways, okay. the ATZ Man, Revenge of the Dreamer, and Notices Bugle all have different ideas for what I constitutes even... a. That was a joke. I don't even. I don't, I don't. I don't. What was the joke? I don't know. <laughs> it might be an notice inside is, joke. Notice is bulge. 
Oh. And then that was the sound of uh -huh. a bugle, so. Of the dream. Okay. That's Where fine. Notices bugle. <laughs> All have different ideas for what. Yeah, because he had the OWO thing on his face it for a second there constitutes a forced diversity. This is because well, art is cool like that. We all get to bring our own opinions to the table, but I'd like everyone to be honest. Who isn't being honest? <laughs> but, <laughs> Let's see. I don't like the structure of this. It's like, presents Wolf's opinion on two characters in one film versus another one, and then this guy's opinion on how you should have historical structure accuracy, then this guy's opinion on Coco, and how that does or does not count as diversity compared to a film about uh, a Latin, uh, a Latina uh, stereotype. And then he says, and everyone's allowed their own opinion, but I want them to be honest. And you're just like, which one are we, what are you? Yeah, which, which one's <laughs> dishonest? Which, are they all three? Or is he implying that they're all three liars? I don't know, I guess we're going to find out, hopefully. I, don't... I just like that he's the one calling me dishonest when he deliberately took out like the vast majority of my video yeah also this is uh this is i, I remember this shit this is the voice of h bobba guy people oh god in short diversity should not be your first priority and nor should any other political message a few examples hiring for diversity instead of competence Building a bridge to make a political point about borders instead of building it for structural integrity and usefulness. Creating an animation so you can put furries in it rather than creating an animation to tell a compelling story. Sure. The general principle? If anything but quality is your primary goal, your work will suffer. Yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> I love the way they paint this comment as like a monster. <laughs> yeah, like this this comment makes a lot of sense. And if we all adhered to these rules when we were making things, then our work would all get better. Yeah, guys, like, imagine if Tolkien was more uh, more concerned with dwarf representation in Lord of the Rings than I, actually I mean, telling a good story. The part that gets me like, is that isn't isn't this self evident? The if anything but quality is your primary goal. Your work will suffer, i.e. lose quality. If anything but quality is your primary goal, you will lose quality. Yeah, I mean, that... What... I, I really hope he expands on this, because this seems like a very sensible comment. Especially the hiring for diversity instead of competence. Is that deniable? Is that even possible to deny when the goal yeah, is competence? Yeah, like... Like, yeah, you might be the best for the job, but, you know... She's black, so we're gonna hire her. Also, she's she's a black woman, so we're gonna hire her because it's diverse. <laughs> she's gonna though, be playing Gollum in the new. <laughs> like, yeah, wait, what? Even, even though you worked harder for it and you're more um you, you're more suited for the job, more qualified, you unfortunately are not as woman or black as she is. So we are going to hire her, even though she wouldn't do as good of a job. Can you like, imagine just? Can you just imagine reading this comment and thinking bad? Like, I don't get it. What part of this comment is- I hope they elaborate on what comment well, is terrible. yeah, I guess we'll find out. I like how you're still calling them they. Part two. Who the fuck do oh, you Oh, they're not even fool? gonna- They're not well, even gonna I'm, talk about Apparently I'm fooling you, Eric. What's with the spurging? Genuinely. Yeah. Why are you, you spurging out? <laughs> what the fuck? Who I, the fuck I, do you- So what was wrong with that comment? That comment we'll, uh, made total sense. I guess we'll find out, but also, structure, man. You presented three different people's three different arguments across three different things that you said, I want you to be honest, and then have this whole comment, and now you're saying, who the fuck do you think you- who are you talking to, everyone? I don't know. God damn it, what Eric. Is... I wanna- I wanna help you, man. <laughs> just give me you a might... hand. <sighs> Part two. Who the fuck do you think you're fooling? I can just picture him recording that, and he's like, I hope the parents are out. How many takes? Like, yeah, how many otherwise... takes did he take? He's like, stop yelling in there, Eric! <laughs> At the oh, computer no. box, it can't hear you! Mr. Wolf, have you flexed your creative muscles yet? I don't yes, know I where you are, but there's a small chance that you're like two hours into a stream with your friends, and you have- Oh, let's pause it, let's see how far we are. Two hours and 42 minutes. Uh, You're wrong. Closer, closer to three hours. Yeah, Sorry. fucked, Eric. You fucked Sorry. it up completely. Yeah, you suck. God, you need to guess it yeah. right, Eric. Get a job. What the is best wrong part with is, you, this, Eric? Isn't, this isn't even the first time he mentions this show. Oh yeah, he's he's very meta. He's very self-aware. Unfortunately, he thought this would work well. Some reason he's, I don't know. He's welcome to come on and defend his shitty fucking video. <laughs> Have an audience watching. So, if you don't mind, please take a second to pause the okay. video and tell us your better version of Ray.
Okay. Well, that, right, now, we now's go. the part where we, we take we, it one at a time. Probably... Who wants to go first? Rags, you want to go? Let me see. How would I make Ray a better character? Well, I would start from the very beginning. Maybe I, instead of having her parents, the, the issue of her parents be shrugged off like that, you know, where she accepts it. Uh, I think a lot of it has to do with the acting, honestly. They well, have let, let's structure. pretend like we let's like let's pretend we can get like a great actress, yeah. And but we need to have the writing down. We'll if we don't want to get complicated, <laughs> then we could keep the structure of what they have in the Force Awakens, where her yearning for belonging, right, from her parents is shifted for is shifted towards the resistance as being her family and the people who care about her. The problem is that Daisy Ridley does such a terrible job acting in the film that that potential idea isn't really going to be realized when the audience looks at it. And so it's going to be passed off because it's just so easily shifted away from. And we don't see any difference between her before, you know, when she's looking for her parents and afterwards when she finds belonging in the resistance, even though she doesn't really even have any point to be in the resistance. They need to expand upon that point because right now in the movie, it's a reasonable thing to ask. Why exactly is she part of the resistance? Why does she hate the First Order so much? There's no reason for her to even be here. All right. I even, think for... Or, sorry, yeah, you ahead. can... No, go ahead, go ahead. Oh, okay. Um, so for me, I would try to, like, make a solid... Like, solidify her character in a way that actually makes sense. Because if you notice, it, it's more of a problem with the Awakens, but it does kind of trickle into the last jedi a bit i'll start off at the beginning with her character development or rather lack thereof if you notice throughout the force awakens uh, lyle mcdouchebag points this out a lot in his video on it she changes her mood and personality all the time sometimes she's all wondrous and like uh, explore uh, wants to explore the world other times she's like i hate everyone i want you all to leave me alone stupid droid go away two seconds later I'm going to be your mother, poor little droid. Come with me. We're going to we're going to have a little fun chat. I think she just lacks any solid motivations for anything she does. She doesn't have really anything going for her character wise. I mean, that's, yeah. that kind of applies to all the characters. But mm -hmm. since we're just talking to, about Ray in this instance. We really need to solidify why she would feel the desire to help anyone or do anything, why she would care about Kylo Ren, why she would care about Han Solo or Luke, who she didn't even believe existed, like, uh, however many days before. Um, That's where I would start. Yeah, my question would be, can I do this from the ground up, or am I forced to use not only the actress, but basically the same structure? I could only change maybe dialogue and histories and stuff, and you'd be like, hmm... Well, yes. at best, then, I can only hope to improve. I still think it would be, it's it's kind of, it's it's, it's hopeless in that I w if I had my choice, I would just undo all of the sequel trilogy and change it all, like, go to a completely different radical direction. But if it's a question of, I don't know how I'd improve her, just make a simple setup and payoff about her character and allowing her to grow. For instance, she has no shits to give about the Republic, yet she somehow does in the film. I would I would definitely need to make a reason for that. Give her a reason to be invested in it. Um, really focus on her and Han instead of, I don't know, just, just cut as much time as you can to push as much time as you can with those two connecting. And um, make her... I, I know it sounds cliche, I was just like, give it some goddamn flaws. Make her wrong every once in a while. Make her angry. But, yeah, for, make her too emotional. Yeah, And make to bounce off and, of that, like, uh, give her a reason for being able to use the force as proficiently as she does. I would just, yeah, I, I genuinely would reduce her force power by, like, to a tenth of what she has at most, if it were me. Yeah. Make it really yeah. shit. And even have it, you know, when she's eating her food and stuff, you could, have, you could just try and drop hints that she she's trying to, she'd notice something. You know, Broom Boy, they're trying to argue that he would just figure out that he has the force by accident, but it's nothing impressive he could, if all he can do is grab a broom. Maybe have that set up with her a little bit. Just just have her focusing on like a pebble or something. See it move a little bit, but we don't know if it was the force or the breeze. And then It would be so easy to show that in the film, in growing up on Jakku, where she's having a desperate moment or she's angry or 
you know, she's lashing out at something and she loses control and a little force comes out and she notices it. And so she tries to tap into the potential of it. Yeah. Uh, and all these suggestions would still be on the assumption that we've been told our protagonist has to be female. Let's mention all these assumptions have been echoed throughout the Star community since The Force Awakens came out. So, and so I mean, all I was saying was like, do we want to try and make something that's intrinsic to her being female? Is that a part of our requirements too? Because I don't really know. I mean, that would have to depend on the situation she's in. Because I mean, uh, uh, for example, Ripley, um, she her femaleness, her uh, motherly instincts kind of kicked in around aliens when Newt became a character to And they did set with. up with the, her natural daughter had died of old age at yeah, that point. Yeah, because she was in cryosleep, yeah. 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 Which is great. Alluded uh, a little bit to it with the cat, too. Yeah, yeah, there's yeah. nothing, it's, it's not, um, no, out of Not nowhere. so much, obviously, but, you know. Um, so, yeah, I guess, so a follow-up question to this, then, would be, um, can you have forced diversity plus good writing? Is that possible? It's possible if the writer is good. Yeah, it's absolutely can, possible, yeah. but it, it, that doesn't erase the fact that it is forced diversity. But the, the bigger thing here is that can any of the three of us think of a single example where forced diversity resulted in good writing? Because that's the point I was making in my video. It's not that forced diversity sure is totally incapable. Because they never would have been a good character because of forced diversity. It would have been because of good writing. Do you know what I mean? Exactly. So yeah, forced diversity just doesn't result in anything but forced diversity. <laughs> and then yeah, uh, the that, only that's the argument, point I was. The only sorry, argument I think that you could make, and it's a terrible one, but the only argument I think you could make on that side, is that well, because of our inclusion policy and diversity policy, we picked this actor who otherwise wouldn't have gotten a shot, and as a result, it turns out they were a pretty good actor. Yeah. Uh, you could, and you could be like, we brought in a um, a female black writer just because we've had straight white uh, uh, writers this whole time. Turns out she's an amazing writer, so the yeah, forced diversity essentially... actually didn't have a problem. But this is the thing. Um, but that's just playing the lottery. The whole thing is forced yeah. diversity has the potential to where you get lucky. You take a selection it's like, it's of playing the lottery. You take a selection of people and you choose the best writer. You get the best writer. If you choose the the black female you might get the best writer you also might get the worst writer we have no idea because you've not chosen on that criteria which is is um that's, that's why it's a, it's a complicated thing and, and i'm just saying from the perspective of many artists you do not want to force them to make the stories as you think are, are politically correct or better for Freedom is what artists need, is, is kind of what I'm getting at here. I'm sure a lot of people would agree with that. He, here's the problem that Eric and anyone that agrees with him completely missed the point of my video is I wasn't arguing that forced diverse. I mean, yes, I don't think forced diversity should ever be a thing. And I wasn't arguing that forced diversity never, absolutely never results in um uh, good writing because you can have a good writer that forced in a diverse character just for the sake of diversity i can't think of any examples i i'm perfectly willing to say that sure there may be one out there i don't i can't think of any off the top of my head but the problem is that how many uh pieces of media be they or uh, entertainment in general be they uh movies video games books comics tv shows how many that force diversity are actually good. I mean, are they good because of it, or are they good despite it? Yeah, someone pointed out uh, in the chat, um, uh, Morgan Freeman in the Shawshank Redemption. In the book, he was white. Hmm. Part partly, you can chalk that up to the fact that it's actually really accurate to the book, and it's pretty difficult to go wrong with Stephen King. So, it, I mean, well, that, that same director did make The Mist, so I guess there there is that. Had cool monsters. Yeah, not really much else. <laughs> um, but anyway, there he didn't really differentiate from that character. They just made him black. So I, you can kind of chalk that up to, okay, well, they just follow the source material aside from the skin color of that one character. And Morgan Freeman's name carries a lot of weight to it, especially and when it comes to box office stuff. Yeah, because he was the only real big actor in that movie, wasn't he? And it's like so. it's about the precedent as opposed to the definitive results. 
because it's not like we can predict every single time, every single scenario, it'll always be bad. It's just not a good place to start. There's no, as that comment pointed out that they practically sold as basically being from Satan. Um, Matt Damon in that Chinese movie. Yeah, I, I forget what that was called. The Great Maximum Wall? Maximum Overdrive. It? Yeah, no. that, that was a bad movie. Um... I'm trying to think of like. Oh yeah. Um, well, you know what? So, uh, someone said a relevant example someone... would be Phasma. Yeah. She's in there I mean, she, because she's. Because you had those, uh, yeah, those interviews where sexualized character. She's a woman, but she's strong, and so she's, she's a female villain. Four... The first female villain in Star Wars, guys. She's got four minutes in both movies, but together and she died and... twice. Yeah, and and this is the thing. She's a pitiful character, and she's only there because they wanted a woman there. That she's there because they wanted to sell toys. That too. I mean, like I said, J.J. Abrams already admitted that he did diversity hires. Now, what Eric is going to say after, what once we start playing the video again, he's trying to back us into a corner and say, someone in the chat pointed out, he's basically trying to say, if you can't write a better version of Ray, you don't have a uh, leg to stand on. But uh, he does point out, it doesn't make it... Le uh, is it forced diversity still? And the answer is yes, because J.J. Abrams hired based on diversity, not on talent. So it's still forced diversity, but as we said, you can theoretically have a well-written uh, story with forced diversity. It's just very rare if it ever happens at all. And it wouldn't be a result of the diversity. It would be a result of lucking out about that person's talent. Yeah, or just having a good source material to back up. Yeah. Sometimes when you gamble, you win. And mm -hmm. usually you lose. Someone did Are point out um, Maximum Overdrive in the chat when I said it's hard to go wrong with Stephen King. I never Tell said it's, it's impossible to go wrong. <laughs> yeah. And plus, to, uh, on the Morgan Freeman thing, Morgan Freeman's a good actor. Oh, so he's an excellent actor. It probably didn't have anything to do with the fact he was black. It's just, he's Morgan Freeman. He's a good actor. It's like, let's get this guy that everyone in the world loves. And yes, oh, it yeah. is te still technically forced diversity, but again, it's already based off of an incredible story itself. And like we said, Morgan Freeman's an amazing actor, so. And you could argue it was in spite of forced diversity in that they lucked out as we've gone over. But it's Morgan Freeman, so they knew what they were, they were doing, right? They didn't just hire a random black actor that they hoped to that was good. Like Morgan Freeman yeah. at that point would have had... Was that... I don't know about it, Morgan Freeman's career exactly, but I'm not sure how much he'd done up to so, that point. Someone in the chat's saying, if you concede that people of color are disadvantaged, why wouldn't you want to hire people of color? They're just powerless, and there should be no attempts to help them? Well, maybe the difference between you and me is that I don't think so little of people of color, that I don't think they can't earn things. I think we've, didn't we have a black president in America at one point? Yeah, didn't we? Yeah, we elected Obama twice. Yeah, he, he was only half black, so he doesn't count. How many yeah, successful yeah. black actors are there before any of this stuff was even discussed? Yeah, this is a ridiculous thing to say. Um, black I, people can yeah, be disadvantaged, not, and, especially in terms of, you know, income and all that stuff, but... And I mean, what about, all of, the, what about all of the white actors? The cure for racism is not to mention, someone pointed out in the chat, Morgan Freeman has, in the past... Uh, spoken out against political correctness in labeling and identity politics. So that's true. That's true. And yeah, the cure and to racism say... isn't to be racist in the opposite direction until you get the results you claim to want, and yeah. then you'll just magically stop being racist. Now, is it a matter of numbers, by the way? It. So, what about all of the good white actors that are powerless to get the jobs they want, or well, what about the good white actors in... that are booted out of their chance because of diversity? Well, no, nobody out there. There's no out. There's no outcry out there to reduce the amount of black players in the NFL and the NBA so that it's there's equal representation. Yeah, and it's, it's just the principle this is based on is just not sound to me. The idea is like, the less black people we see in films, the more we have to hire them. It's like, that doesn't seem right at all. It's like, I'm fully, I'm fully of the opinion that if an actor is very good and that actor's black, that actor could succeed. Yeah, I'd, I'd happily watch an, an all-black film if, if I, I wouldn't have a problem with it if they're all talented. It's, it yeah, there's plenty of black and... actors I like. I even like uh, Chadwick. Yeah. He's in Black Panther. I didn't like that movie. I liked but, him in Civil War. Uh, <laughs> yeah, perfectly. Yeah, yeah that, that's a good example. He is a good actor. It's just that that movie and, was not again, good. My favorite film, Masquerade, all Asians. They don't even speak English. 
I don't House care. of Flying Daggers to... was pretty fun. Yeah. Yeah, there's a lot of uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. a lot of films with no white people that I enjoy. War so. of the Arrows is a great. I don't one. know. It's, 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 the whole thing just doesn't seem doesn't seem right at the Prince base of uh, principle base principle. Could he um, become Mongol? That was another good one. I really like that movie. But uh, let's let's hear the counters. Has the forced diversity become unforced? Now. Oh wait, sorry, we've gone a bit ahead. Yeah, let, let's uh, Pause rewind the video the and tell us your better version of Ray. Are you finished? Did that. Has the yes. forced diversity yeah. become unforced? No. 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 It just means that we wrote a better character. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's we, we part of my premise. Yeah. I was like, if you could let me go from the ground up, I may have had a female protagonist, but I need to sort everything else out first. Like, yeah, I have no problem with her being a woman, but if you say it has to be a woman, now we're like, oh. Which is what J.J. Abrams did. He hired based on diversity first. Yeah. That's the problem. Like, it's still it's still di forced diversity, but we can still make and, it work. Yeah, and I think the writing kind of reflects that the focus was not on the characters being characters. <laughs> it was Yeah, uh, because characters none of awful. the characters are characters. And if you know any sense of character they have is inconsistent with some other action or theme within the films, it, it, there's conflicts everywhere. Now, Mr. Wolf, you're a smart puppy. I know you I care sure deeply am. about these movies and storytelling in general, and I have faith that the analysis you just brought to the table was well thought out, and you've really let... Wow, you ignored me and Rags' assessment. What the fuck? Yeah, that's very rude. Also, if you have any grasp of Wolf's uh, content, you shouldn't have to have faith. Oh, that's a very nice thing to say. <laughs> <laughs> Ray flourish as a character. Therefore, I have a reasonable expectation that your character fix didn't begin with rewriting her to be a man. <laughs> That's not... You, like, you could have forced diversity where someone says this character has to be a man yeah. because everyone yeah. else is a woman or something. Exactly. Remember, well, no, guys, because remember, uh, if you're straight, white, or male, you're not diverse. If, if there's a female writer out there who wants to make a story about a sorority house or whatever, this all girls, and then some guy says, you have to have at least a male character in there. You can make him gay or whatever, but he has to be male. I would have just as much of an issue. I'd be like, leave her alone. She can have an all-female yeah, like cast. If, yeah, like if they made a documentary about Shaka Zulu and he was played by Sean Bean, like, I would have an issue with that. <laughs> well, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't be down for that. Like, it works I feel like ways, we're man. getting a framing here where this only applies to anyone but white males. That's strange. Yeah, it is a bit odd. Think that? that seems like an odd thing to think. Our principle that? applies to everybody, not just a select group. I mean, maybe it did, but then I just have to give up on this entire conversation because you're beyond saving. So we're beyond saving if uh, <laughs> we have like a straightforward definition of forced diversity. I'm sorry, I have a principle that we're I We're beyond like saving, <laughs> guys. I'm sorry for thinking something and applying it equally to things. Our conversation because you're beyond Unsaving. But assuming you're a reasonable analyst and you came up with other reasons to fix Rey that don't relate to her gender, Which then is what we perhaps did. the inspiration mm -hmm. to make Rey a woman isn't to blame here. There is something independent of her womanhood that is yes. ruining her. Video right now. Why is going on the screen? <laughs> yeah, okay, so so what we're seeing here is um, my animations flashing in front of my video. Zoomed in as fuck. Which is flashing, yeah, which is ridiculously zoomed in which is flashing just over Eric's face. And then it's going to Eric, go into Eric a- Eric wishes super... that was his face. Oh God, yeah. And, and it's well, like, he's... he's like half op opacityed his own image and he's also like inverted the colors or some sh or like parts, parts of it look inverted. Oh God, this isn't even how, I mean, Mauler, you already know this isn't half as bad as it gets. Yeah, this starts to get really, really bad. I don't know, just, it takes work to do this. Just don't. <laughs> <laughs> Save yourself it takes work to do this, just don't. I mean, I, I prefer yeah. I prefer Shinobi Gates' little, you know. I do too. I unironically prefer script. Shinobi's um, action figures mm -hmm. because at least we could like laugh at it a couple times. Yeah, and I'm like, that's his. That's who he's supposed to be. Think, like, that's his character. And I'm like, I, mean, okay. I think you could make it work if you know. I'd say his voice is a bit of a, a wall for a lot of people, but having action figures represent you know different characters as you tell a narrative while an yeah. anal analysis. I think that could work if you. You know. Yeah, and a character could be the devil's advocate, and what other character could be this, and what other character hmm. could be... Yeah, you could do yeah, that, I mean, different parts just of your to, personalities could be different characters. As long as you didn't private all your videos just because people criticized you, and you could, like, make a solid sentence cogent. And I don't mean cogent in the sense of, like, okay, you made a good argument. I mean cogent in the sense, like, I couldn't understand a word he said. 
confirmation v. that Wolf watched that beef app. <laughs> Kick V. <laughs> Kick V, indeed. Um, but yeah, this is weird. Like, I think th this is me giving maximum benefit of the doubt. He's trying to present, like, how you've been an idiot this whole time and you haven't seen the truth. And he's throwing this shit on screen to try and make us feel like we're in a trance of like, oh shit, here comes the the truth bomb. Maybe. maybe. I'm Someone called it editing tripling. Editing tripling. You just told us all of it. Expanding beyond Ray, the solution to every problem posed in this video has nothing to do with focusing less on diversity. The solution is writing movies better. Yeah, the problem would still be there. It just would have been yeah, written well. Yeah, the problem's well. still there. And this is the thing, Eric, like, how do you miss this? It's like this the whole really point. <laughs> you miss, yeah, you missed the whole point. You just, like, glossed over it. Again, super benefit of the doubt. If he's saying, but that doesn't matter to the outcome, as in the art would still be fine even if it was forced diversity because it was well written, that's the point, though, is we're talking about that's a bad principle to start with. Yeah, why would you gamble on terrible odds? Yeah, Maybe someone in chat just asked as well. See, what would be the problem? Even if it is forced, as long as they're well written, it's fine, right? And it's like, what, you want to take that gamble every... It would be the same as any other writing standard that you someone says. You go, oh, you want to make a, a movie based in a jungle? You have to have at least one building in it. You're like, why? It's like, well, that's our quota. Like, okay. It... And then he's like, I want to make a movie in space. And then they go, yeah, we well, have to have at least three planets that are either visited, seen... Or you actually go on on to them for a portion of the film, and you go, why? And it's like, oh, quota. And it, it'll affect, if you have a, a vision, and then you have these quotas to have to deal with, especially ones that change characters, like, that. that's serious when it comes to uh, storytelling. Um, if it was well written, then it wouldn't be forced. Yeah, the character can be a forced character, even if that character is well written. So, you know, and I can, I can understand people being like, but it doesn't matter ultimately, right? Because you would still be good. It's like, yeah, in that instance, but that, that, that... But there are very, very few instances that you can point to where forced they, diversity uh, resulted in a good movie. And in fairness yeah, to Wolf, his video was called The Problem With It, not forced diversity will never result in anything that could be considered entertaining. Forced diversity sometimes can luck you into something that isn't terrible. Forced diversity doesn't make things better because of forced diversity. Yeah. Things can be good despite it, though. Duh. Let's look at the Ghostbusters reboot. I Oof. haven't seen it, so I'll again assume it's awful for the sake of argument. There is no reason that an all-female Ghostbusters reboot can't be good, though. Give uh, look, so the I don't know if any, any, uh, how many people know this, but... Red Letter Media put it on their video, but the, one of the leaked emails from Paul Feig is pitching this film, and it like opens with him being like, so Ghostbusters, but with girls. And it's like, from the get-go, it's like, what are you doing? And if you know anything about his directing style, he was basically just like, I'm going to put a camera on these people, give them a vague outline of the actual plot, and then we're just going to we're just gonna joke, we're just going to have fun. And that writing principle, those set of principles, results in a mess, and it's not a surprise why you would get this when your goals are that or your restrictions are that. Um, yeah, quality was not their focus. But what Wolf never said was that having female characters in a Ghostbusters film means it can't be good. This is a bizarre yeah, there take. Are, there are more than four good female you know, actresses out there. These were not them. Yeah, and it, you know, it would be tough to write uh, because of considering what comes before it, but if Someone tasked me, you have to make a Ghostbusters movie that is continuing the universe and it has to be four females. I would be like, first of all, why? Second of all, this is going to be annoying, but maybe we can do it. Again, not impossible, but why the hell have you put this fucking restriction on us to begin with? Yeah, if they focused more on writing good stories and having characters and just making a quality film instead of, oh, it's women. Like, our, our po the point is they're women, then maybe you, the film wouldn't have been terrible. You guys pretty much on board with like how you really shouldn't restrict artists in any real way? Like it, not, not to say that there's never an instance where an artist should be told that maybe they shouldn't do X, Y, or Z, because I'm, I'm trying to think of one in my own head. But like, I'm sure you can get too crazy. Yeah, the, the principle I'm trying to run from is that artist tries to create a thing, and then you're like, no, do this. No, do this. It's like meddling and restrictions. and Yeah, let people can create whatever they want to and i think they should be allowed to but at the same time i think a creator should 
focus on the quality of what they do because ultimately I want better and higher quality pieces of film and <laughs> games and books. I see the chat. No country for old women. Uh, <laughs> the <laughs> Saving Private Ryan. Godmother. Women. Saving Private Ryan. Dirty Dozen. Hello, angry women. <laughs> Jaws, but with women. <laughs> it's just... Uh, like, and I think, I think that we're, we're, I think that we're being more than reasonable here. Uh, like I said, if it comes down to the fact that don't tell an artist they have to do something arbitrary because it can affect, uh, the, the the thing they had in the first place. And if you start writing your story from the get go of these people have to be these genders, these uh, sexualities, these uh, ethnicities, you start to be like, what? The, what, 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 what? You're not writing a story anymore. You're just doing some kind of weird representation thing. It seems that we're nine minutes into this, and he hasn't offered an example of how forced diversity has helped something. I mean, he's, it's, it's, I hate to use the word straw man, but I mean, let's be fair. He keeps trying to counter Wolf with examples, that, examples that, that Wolf is actually, like, n not necessarily against. It's weird. Yeah, I, I just want an example of how forced diversity made something better because of the forced diversity. Anyway, I'll again assume it's awful for the sake of argument. There is no <laughs> reason woman. that an all-female Ghostbusters <laughs> reboot can't be good, though, given a good enough cast and crew. Diversity, even <laughs> diversity included for superficial reasons, can lead to both. But the Ghostbusters aren't diverse; they're all women. <laughs> Rise of the planet of the women. <laughs> I mean, it's it's just like I guess one of them's black. That's sort of diverse. They have three white chicks and a black chick. So, I mean, however, I don't know how you rank diversity, but that's not very diverse. You know what, I will admit, because uh, someone pointed out in chat, it's like, this is still uh, better than Quentin, because Quentin literally played, well, he took Rags' argument and just extrapolated something that is yeah, just... Yeah, he just took a sentence. At least we got a little bit more than a, or a sentence fragment from Wolf. But like, I can stuff. see how you could get here with what Wolf said if you're... Of Eric Taxon's. If you're not smart. Uh, yeah, if you just ignore the other 17 minutes yeah, of the video. <laughs> what I'm getting at is just that with, with Quinton, he would just draw something that Rags wasn't even near. While with you, it's it's clear that he's trying to skew what you've said. Uh, so, yeah, it's not quite the jelly man, but it's still a straw man. Womanator 2, Nagging Day. Oh, that's already going to happen. That's Terminator 5, remember? Oh. Bad art. The only reason this <laughs> wouldn't be true is if you were. Check out this editing, folks. <laughs> Why is, is that, that, a thing? that looks like a, so... a crosshair in the center. Is that from your gameplay? Yes. So. Good lord. Yeah, because that's that's the BR crosshair. Simply opposed to seeing minority characters in your movies, which what I else know is you're going not. On? And let's take season three. Jesus, there it goes. Yep. The only reason it has to be because you don't want to see minorities. Wolf. Oh wait, he did. Let me let me clarify. I, I'm I'm sure I heard that he said he's he's sure no, Wolf let, doesn't take that position. Like Both things. good and bad art. The only reason this wouldn't be true is if you were simply opposed to seeing minority characters in your movies, which I know you're not. And let's take good. season three, episode four of Black Mirror. First drafts of San Junipero had the main couple written as straight until Charlie just kind of decided to make them lesbians. It's as forced as diversity can get, but San Junipero is great. Mm. Same with Legend of Korra. Yeah, well, yeah, but I, it, doesn't, uh, it wasn't good because of that. And I, I haven't seen it, but yeah, that doesn't necessarily fly in the face of what Wolf has said, unfortunately. Yeah, like, is Theodore, um, is Theodore Crane, is she better because she's lesbian? Um, the, the other interesting thing as well is that it's a problem because I haven't seen the example you just gave, but uh, um, Joss Whedon planned from the get-go in Buffy to make one of the characters gay eventually because they're all straight and then he decided that he was gonna and there was plans for it to be one of them but then plans changed and it's like from a writing standpoint he wanted it rather than it being forced upon him so he was like how do i do this and it it happens over like a season of a person meeting getting to know each other falling in love that sort of thing um and the assumption i suppose you would have is that they were always uh bisexual to begin with or something like that or, you know, people change. I, I knew a girl who uh, was straight and became gay after a... It, it took, like, half a year that the change happened over. Like, it does happen. Uh, I don't know if that would be considered forced diversity, but it's written so well that uh, you wouldn't know, I suppose, is, is, is kind of what we've already been over. But you do know in this case. Well, does it count if 
if the author wants it that way. How does that work? Hello? Hmm. I mean, I... Like I said, from the beginning, he wanted to have a gay character. He just wasn't sure how he was going to implement it. It's, that doesn't seem like it would be too much. It of doesn't seem like it would be forced. Yeah. At least not in that case. The the reason why I don't consider it forced is because he didn't just go, the episode begins, and they go, I'm gay, by the way. And she's like, oh, okay. Especially compared to the reboot of Buffy where she's going to be black. It's just like, what? What? Why? What? Uh, but I guess you can't really have a story of a character turning from white to black over time, so that was the only way to do it. But yeah, um, do, you want, do you want to carry on or do you guys want to say anything else? No. Okay. You're homophobic. Mr. Wolf, this... Wait, what was that? Hold on, rewind like five what seconds. Was that the homophobic thing? Get, but San Junipero is great. If you don't like it, you're homophobic. Mr. Wolf, oh, okay. this entire video is just you complaining that Hollywood movies are bad and wistfully imagining a bright future where they are good, which is fine, I guess. That's how opinions work. But please be yeah, honest. Don't don't you want Hollywood to make good movies? <laughs> yeah, and I doubt Wolf believes that this is the only thing facing Hollywood as an issue. I, uh, it's just one of many. Yeah, I mean, like, don't you? It's like I would like. I, I mean, I, I'm to pretty sure in movies. the video I outright said this is not the only or even the biggest issue with Hollywood. But again, you had to leave that out. Christ, look at this screenshot, though. What's happening? <laughs> <laughs> Help me. You can't sincerely believe that the simple act of including like marginalized white. characters. Yeah, in a star story exploded on a... in his video. Oh, like it's geez, bright, Eric. like I. Like, it's not even, I don't even want to look at the video. Mm. That the simple act of including marginalized characters in a story on a whim is such a massive act that it necessarily... No, no, it doesn't demand it, it, if it but if it succeeds, it's despite it. Yeah, and it's just a terrible principle to have in the first place. It makes no fucking yes. sense. It's a terrible principle to have. You should hire people based on their merit, not because of some characteristic of theirs that they did not hone, that they had no access in changing, that they didn't have any say in. Which I suppose is a policy, and that means what we've just sat on one side of the aisle with whatever this discussion is. But if someone said I'm, you know, I, I am absolutely A and then weird because I hold that position, I'd just be like, man, yeah, whatever. But I don't, I don't think he's going to do that. Well, give him time. That the writing quality must suffer. This is why I'm responding to this video in particular. It's the perfect example of the phony centrist version of the forced diversity argument. Like, who do you think you're fooling? No matter how valid your reasons for hating the Ghostbusters reboot are, you've still hampered it all on the very inspiration to me. Yeah, because Paul Feig said that had to be a thing. Ghostbusters is inextricably tied to the negative aspect that forced diversity demanded that those characters be women. Yeah, and his focus wasn't on writing good characters. Acting. It was, I have these women, now we're going to make jokes. I've made my movie. Also, it's this disingenuous thing that he, he says about, oh, you see, you're just trying, you're pretending to be centrist because you can't be a centrist. And not even, like forced diversity, I guess. Didn't even say he was. <laughs> it's like the, yeah. the weird thing. Like yeah, you're Eric, trying you to doing? fool us into thinking you're that thing you never tried to be. Yeah, so, uh, I suppose our response to you, Eric, for this whole video would be who, you, who do you think you're fooling? Yeah. One pupper? To say that forced diversity made it bad is conceding that somehow the idea to feminize the cast led to it being yes. a bad film. When in act. It yeah, it did in this case. To, to, I think yeah, that's a pretty fair thing to say. To yeah. it led to that, yeah. I mean, a bunch of women making queef jokes just didn't really sit Ugh. with the audience all that much, you know. So bad. We watched it drunk, me and a few friends, and we still had trouble getting enjoyment. Weird. Actuality is just the bad film. You can't make a dichotomy between hiring for diversity and hiring for competence without implying that hiring for competence will result in hiring. Whoa, I feel like my retina's about wow. to light on a fire. No, I was like, well, that's kind of racist.
Yeah, let's Eric? listen to that fully again. I just want to make sure I got that. It's the bad film. You can't make a dichotomy between hiring for diversity and hiring for competence without implying that hiring for competence will result in hiring a bunch of fucking white dudes. Whoa. Ooh, that's ooh, that's kind of ooh. ooh, that's a sp ooh, so Eric, just, uh... just to repeat what we said earlier when we said if you have ten people and you choose the best actor, you may not end up with the black one. But if you choose the black one, you will. Uh, but, but but the best one may be the black one. It's a gamble. That's what we kept saying. So if you're like, we have to have the black one because everybody's white. It's like, wh why don't you just choose the best actor? So we never said what he's just implied. Just just putting it out there. Bit of a weird one. I mean, gosh. I mean, is he implying that if we hire for merit, only white people will get roles? That's kind of... Oof, that's not very that's not very nice to say about the abilities of people with color. Like seriously, <laughs> there's so many ways you could respond to it. I'm just like that was that was a weird one, Eric. That's that's, that's strange. You jumped the shock there, buddy. You can't make a dichotomy between focusing on a diverse cast and focusing on writing a good story without implying that including a diverse cast of characters leads to bad writing. You Forcing it, not including it. Yeah. Did, it's the whole fucking point of the word f forced. Forced, I mean, look at Eric. Aliens. Aliens is very well written. It has a diverse cast. Yeah, well, I, I, I don't know if it's diverse by their standards. It has one female, one Hispanic character. I'm trying to remember all of them. There's a black guy. There is a he black dies. guy. There's two black guys, I think. The black guy was the leader, too. Apone. Yeah, he, he was the uh, sergeant or whatever? Yeah, I think, yeah. He, I think he was... I think he was above sergeant, because sergeant was... Uh, Hudson was, was a sergeant Hicks? as well, right? Or, I don't really remember. I only remember yeah, I don't, Hudson, I don't remember Hicks the ranks, and, exactly. And, uh... God, what's her name? Machine Gun Lady. How can I forget her name? I liked her. It was uh, also a black man in Alien? Um, oh yes, true. He was, it was a woman. He was the second. Well, yeah, he was the last to die. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Three women and a baby. Oh, Hudson was a private. Okay, I need to look at the ranks again. Vasquez, that's what it was. Oh yeah, that's what I meant by Hispanic. I, I don't remember there being more than one, but they could have been. I'd have to watch it again because it wasn't a fucking shoved in your face to speak like the most important element of their characters. Here are people. And every person will have a gender and a race also. But these are people first. These are characters and people first. They're fun they, characters. Like yes, them. They are not representatives of whatever arbitrary race and gender they were born as. Oh yeah, that would be three females then as well. Not one, obviously. There's a newt as well. Does newt yeah, count as diverse or does that not count because she's a kid? I don't know. I have to check the rule book from Eric. Yeah, she's yeah, but she's still white. Uh but yeah. The, the point was never that if you have a diverse cast, you automatically have worse writing. That's not how that works. Yes. The forced part, <sighs> the part that's in his fucking title, that was the important bit. You know. I still want if... that example, Eric, of where forced diversity made something better because of the forced diversity aspect. This leads to bad writing. You know, as if making a character a different race, gender, or sexuality is anything more than a simple creative choice. What? Huh? Hang on, I need to hear that again. <laughs> including a diverse cast of characters leads to bad writing. You know, as if making a character a different race, gender, or sexuality is anything more than a simple creative choice. Uh, if you made a new Black Panther and he was white and gay, and I'm pretty sure you'd get a lot of people very, very, very fucking upset. It's gonna- it depends on the fucking context. You could have a character that's actually, like, uh, intrinsically important to whatever race they have, or whatever sexuality they have, depending on what the story is. And obviously we're mainly gonna be referencing reboots and remakes at that point, when they change something that was established, or an adaption, and it always depends on exactly what they did, what they were at first, and how they've changed it, but if... Yeah, let's say if Ray was a lesbian in all of the the newest Star Wars films, that does that changes nothing. He's right. They could tell us she was all along in Episode Nine, and we'd just be like, okay. Rags, you might find it funny. Someone in the chat said that this video has more God Ray seventy six. Has more Pride what? Does, but Fallout seventy six doesn't hurt my eyes as much as this video. <laughs>
Making a character a different race, gender, or sexuality is anything more than a simple creative choice. Part 3. What I Want So, uh, just in case you're new here, I'm, like, extremely gay. I know I act pretty expertly closeted on this YouTube channel, but if you follow me on Twitter, you'll know it's a pretty big part of my brand. Naturally, I'm a pretty oh. big fan of gay representation, but what I actually Why? mean by that is a bit more complex. Now, of course, I really like seeing queer people in my movies. It's actually Why? an objective fact that your favorite movie would have been better if the main character was gay. Sorry, I don't make the rules. But you know what I also I want? I think I was supposed to be funny. I, don't know. I guess? Yeah. Um... I I think a lot of gay characters are insufferable. For me, it always depends on execution. Them being gay, yeah, them being there is not enough for me. Same for straight. Yeah, I mean, I'm bisexual, and I don't give a shit what the <laughs> sexuality of the character is. We, we, like, need, we need Jared here for the, oh, God, he's a yeah, queer. It's like 95% <laughs> of the time, it's not even an aspect of the character that even matters. It's like, I just don't care. I don't care what you're attracted to. It's just so, I don't care. It doesn't have anything to do with your character. <sighs> yeah, and again, it goes it goes for everything. Um, it, having them there just doesn't do anything for me. It's about who they are. Yeah, I mean, if I never saw another gay character in films or media, I was like, I just wouldn't. It wouldn't bother me. I don't care. Would you say annihilation is forced diversity, or because they were meant to be women? This may not be true. Is it unforced? Uh, I would need to know more about the production of, of Annihilation. But if I remember in the storyline, it's very fucking confusing as to why they're sending these people. Meme Wolf had a lot of... <laughs> that's a video Meme Wolf may make one year, you know? Yeah, I, I don't really... I mean, there's a ton of crazy shit in that movie. I don't think the women were the biggest issue. Um, although yeah, and I, it never shoves it in your face, and it's never like, we're women, yeah, women they are, power, girl power. They attempt to make characters out of them instead of just being like they're women. There's no, I don't remember that. Yeah, being I, I, I might be wrong on this. I haven't actually read the book, but I thought I heard that like all characters were men. I'm not certain that could be wrong. Like I said, I never read it. So if that's the case, then I would count that as forced diversity. If not, and they are, and they were women in the book, then I mean, I don't really care. I don't think it made the film any better or worse. It's just there were. Yeah, the, fi the film was already fundamentally broken without the women. I want gay representation in trash movies, trash books, and trash games. More importantly, okay. I want gay characters written into trash movies, games, and books without the poor quality of these works being blamed on the decision to include gay characters. Okay. I why don't you right, just I understand want that, good that's, books, good movies, and good... Yeah, that's not what Wolf said, though, so... Like, he's implying yeah. that you're saying that you take a bad piece of content and you spot the gay character, the female character, and the black character, and then you say it's because they were forced in. That's what he's saying you're saying, essentially. Which is not, not the case. Um, not to mention that uh, I think he's advocating for it to just be normal that gay people, black people, females, they just pop up everywhere anyway. And for me, I'm like, is isn't, isn't that what we have? Yeah, I didn't think being gay was, like, weird. Or Unless you strange. take a I mean, fucking it's, it's a tally deviation. and then say if the numbers aren't exactly equal, then it's not right. It's just like, hmm. I mean, it's not normal in a statistical sense to be gay. I mean, it's it's a minority, but I don't think, like, we have... I don't think people are like, oh, the character was gay. That means it's terrible. I, mean, I just don't... I mean, I'm sure maybe some people I mean, think you, that. That's silly, but... If you ask me what the potential origin for Ray's lack of character would be, I wouldn't hesitate to say that she was possibly they didn't really focus heavily on making a character for her because they were more concerned with her being female they're more concerned with her hiring a female and bringing her in was, that's certainly something you'll get from jj abrams is uh, and it's just should have started from the ground up with character instead of uh, what gender they are especially with star wars where it literally just it's not supposed to come into play really it's, it's supposed to be about the people um but, you know, like, as, as Rags pointed out, it's like, if you did, like, a suffragette story or um, a slavery-related story, some characters will have to be a certain uh, portion of those things. Which is why I found yeah, it interesting that he was, like... is the goal, it's historical accuracy, that's the goal. Yeah, and, and it's funny that he was, like, it wouldn't matter, and it's like, if you made a slavery movie talking about how bad slavery is, and every character was white, including the slaves, could you imagine the fucking reaction from our culture? People would be like... Very upset would be the word I'd probably Get go with. Get back in the fields, you wigger. 
<laughs> and then you can be like, why are they upset? And it's like, well, you've you've misrepresented what happened. And you could write the, the characters to be really, really uh, in-depth and, and sympathetic. But the race is an important part of that history, I, I'm sure many people would argue, for accuracy. It's, it's, yeah. it's an interesting subject, but it's just unfortunate that he's put this like pinpoint narrow right. view and said that like, this is how it works and this is what Wolf's saying and I've counted it. And it's like, not really, mate. He's not even addressing Wolf and his points are bad. It almost feels like he wanted to make this video and he's just used Wolf as a jumping off point, even though he's just not even really listened to Wolf at all. Yeah, it's like he didn't watch Wolf's video. A little bit. Also, yeah, I'm not... See, I have to cover my, cover my own ass with this shit. I'm not saying there's no such thing as a white slave. I'm not saying that never happened, guys. Don't worry. I don't want every new gay movie to be required to be excellent, lest it make a poor case for making gay movies in the first place. And that's why I need to disagree with pretty much the- Also, but that's a thing that people say. That's a thing that SJWs say. You what can't now? negatively portray gay people. You can't negatively portray black people or women. You can't negatively portray- minorities of any kind because it feeds into a stereotype or because it makes people think that that's how the real world works like you might not believe it personally but there's a reason why so many people are against that notion because there are a lot of people quite frankly on your side of things who do believe that and they write articles about it and they hire people based on that idea and they change the way that characters behave based on that idea or they invent characters based on that idea the entire premise of this video, Mr. Wolf. No matter how unintentional it might be, the main takeaway is that a diverse cast is something to be earned, that diversity needs to justify itself, or else it's not worth it. This yes. is a blatant double standard. Ow. Just Ow. think about it. Did Ow. we give up on stories with male leads after The Room came out? That's like, what yeah, the that's f- that's how do you get that from what Wolf has said? How, what? Oh my god, okay. Well, I, you know, I bought a PS4 because I thought Horizon Zero died. And that's a female lead. Yeah, well, he said that you didn't stop watching movies with men in them because when you watch The Room... It, it, I, Eric, I don't know where you, you're coming from with that one, mate. It's, like, that, that's confusing. You might want to clarify that. Maybe make the video slightly longer. Cover more of Wolf's actual points. I don't know. Obviously absurd. Yeah, maybe the no other 17 was... minutes worth of them. Stories with male leads after The Room came out? Like, this is obviously absurd. No one would say The Room failed because a man led in it, but... <laughs> yes, but you could yeah, have... And, I, and a... I also never said that we should stop making movies with females in it just because there's bad... Fa- That's not the point I was making. And Wolf never said... There was never a point where his comments did not apply to males. It's just so few examples of males being forced into something. But you can definitely have that. It's theoretically possible. Show me a director who said he's tired of, I don't know, the, the people having a full cast. Of, I use the example with the sorority thing. If a, if a woman was forced to put a man into a, into a storyline that he didn't fit, or for whatever reason, like that, that could easily lead uh, to negative elements in the film. That would be forced diversity too. It's not specific to women. Yeah, it's to... like, we have to, we, we're going to make another Tomb Raider movie, but it has to be a man playing it. Uh, Larry Croft. Larry Croft. <laughs> Lawrence Croft. <laughs> Lawrence. <laughs> but here we are. A cartoon wolf is telling us that Ghostbusters 2016 failed. You're a painting? I don't even think I used Ghostbusters that much. I don't remember. Not to mention why it failed. Is, 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 there's a lot of reasons, but there's, there's no denying that the fact that they shoved... They, they were just like, it has to be women, go. Like, that's I mean, of course going to have an effect. It under that impression they clearly played up the women women yeah and they said in interviews like people are hating on it because a lot of people hate women and it's like what well they did the same jonathan mcintosh has a channel that's focused on this (laughs) like this is propagating this idea that people like wolf or whoever else he's aiming at hate things literally because asian people are casted or women are cast it's like what the fuck yeah i don't i don't remember specifically if I mentioned Ghostbusters in my video on it. Do you remember, Mahler? Um, Because I know we watched it together. I just don't remember if I actually used that as an example. I know I used a lot of examples that he didn't address, but I don't remember if I even talked about Ghostbusters. We would have no idea, because he didn't fucking play it. Well, we'd have to watch your video. I mean, obviously you should know it being it's your video, but I'm more concerned about the audience here having no fucking clue. 
You, I don't think you yeah. ever said Ghostbusters is bad because women. Like it's it's yeah. it's certainly a, a one of the elements, but like I would certainly target how bad the humor is. Like that's a huge deal. Yeah, the the horrible comedy, the disgusting visual effects, the bad writing, terrible story. Mm -hmm. Here, let let's think of it this way, Eric. If you wanted to really get your point across, you would have taken that comment and you would have told us why it's wrong, not just mockingly read something that sounds really reasonable. I don't think he's interested in convincing us. It's more to it's it, like sorry, Eric, but it feels like, it feels like you're kind of pandering to your audience as opposed to sort of uh, trying to bridge a gap here. Yeah, well, I I think it's almost certainly the case because that comment illustrates that it's almost like there's a re. He's implying that it's terrible, but he doesn't explain why. And if he was trying to change people's minds, he would explain why. I'm sure he feel, well because he showed all those other people. He showed Wolf, and he's I suppose he's arguing that everyone has just been countered by the things he said. But like it's so non-specific, and I don't. A lot of the stuff he's countering Wolf with doesn't counter what Wolf said. That's the problem. <laughs> this is like Eric. Either you, do, either you're incompetent, or you have no interest in actually having a conversation. You can pick either one. Because the inspiration to star women was so drastic and poisonous that it infected the rest of the movie and made it bad. Honestly, it just goes to show how much the status quo can fuck with your head. The status it's quo? It's a venom. That's the status quo now. The status quo is that movies are... I don't even know what exactly is the status quo. Yeah, the, uh, yeah I'm not even sure what you know, context he means that in. having a job is the status quo. Is that bad? Should we change the status quo? We should all be unemployed. I guess he's saying this element of the status quo, but again... Maybe. I wish uh, he... Which part? Clogging the veins of your mind, making you say shit like this. We truly do live in a society. Anyways, I want a gay remake of La Pianiste. Oh, jeez. So that's it. That's my argument. The entire premise of this video is completely bunk. But, uh, he's not done. Remember how I mentioned that... This is his best editing yet. <laughs> <laughs> That Mr. Wolf kind of dresses his arguments up in a nice yeah. little centrist sort presentation. No, not at well, all. He, no. He kind of. How, how many times do I do I really need to use like? I mean, I, I don't know how many times I have to literally say I voted for Bernie Sanders and I own a, a book written by him. It's sitting right behind me. Before people realize I'm not a centrist. Doesn't matter, okay? And I'm just gonna play a this again. Can own a book. A, a centrist can vote for Bernie Sanders. Well, yeah, sure, but completely, he has nothing. Well, to it, go not on. Wolf, Wolf is saying that Wolf is claiming he voted for Bernie Sanders because uh, chooses label, and then Eric is like, "No, you're this label." Yeah, this is the part where he's like, "Oh, he's not actually centrist. I'm gonna expose him." Mm -hmm. he, so but, here's uh, what I really am. as if it has anything to do with the argument, but okay. uh, he's not done. Remember how I mentioned that Mr. Wolf kind of dresses his arguments up in a nice little centrist claim? Piece of what does that? this have to do with anything anyway? Was it yeah. was it just just a, a snipe? Was he just like I me? Mean, it was like he claimed. I mean, Eric made the claim, but I don't see. I did, I don't. I don't think it exists in reality. Sensation. So. Well, he he kind of drops that halfway through. I'm sure you're familiar with Emma Stone. Not because you've ever heard of her before, but because this was probably the first time you've ever heard of her, or the first time you were reminded of her existence in life. Oh, Jesus Christ, Eric, your editing makes me want to fucking kill myself. I had to look at I was about to ask, was that you, That's Wolf? not Wolf. I was about to say, Jesus Christ. As if Emma Stone is the only character in Birdman. As if... <laughs> what the... Oh, Jesus like, fucking... Please. <laughs> if, you are, if you are... Think, if you are... If you make videos, if you are thinking about making videos that noise never ever ever <laughs> use that noise ever balance and if the goddamn sound if you do kill yourself balance the goddamn sound please people never do that shit nothing makes me stop watching a video or stop watching a youtuber faster than them doing shit like that where i'm listening to a video and i have this obnoxious <laughs> loud creepy ass bullshit Dude. noise that all of a sudden blares into my ears someone I'll said never you guys are getting angry again. at edits made to be comedic it's like yeah yes never... <laughs> it's <laughs> shit. true they are like how do you not as everyone's describing it's fucking ear rape like what the hell is he doing yes don't fucking make ear rape noises in the middle of video don't do it i'm Especially... just glad my headset wasn't turned all the way up like christ jesus christ
But yeah, Don't moving do on. It. It's not funny. It's not clever. It's not edgy. It's just noise. You're just pumping noise into people's ears. Like, quit the that. fact that she decided to call out Hollywood for not allowing women to do more shit is stupid as fuck. Maybe, and bear with me here, I know this is a lot to take in, but maybe, rather than whining about it, they should just, well, fucking do it. It's not, so, um, it's not at all. So, so much to unpack there, holy shit. <laughs> First of all, this does not make, uh, Wolf right not a centrist yeah well yeah, yeah this is very if confusing if your claim is that he if your claim is that he's a centrist this does not make him not a centrist so uh, this doesn't even debunk a point that doesn't exist except for in your head and then uh wolf did not set up that clip with i know how to solve sexism and then said that he's more highlighting something that i pretty much agree with which is when people are like women can't do x in hollywood um, it, it, it strikes me as odd. I'm always like, are you? What are you looking for? Some a producer to find a woman and give her money to make a movie, or are they going to find someone who's got a track record of making good things and make a movie? And if that's the case, and you're like, yes, but there's there's more men to start with that have been doing it. That's not fair. I'd just be like, as as Wolf said, I know how this sounds, right? But you gotta go and do it. So like, and. There's a lot Let's of directors out there who started out with nothing, and they made shit on a low budget. Like it's and presidents even. Yeah, and to to be like we have to solve it for them. It's like I'd rather encourage women to get going to to go. You know, fuck this. I'm gonna work my ass off. I'm gonna make a great film. I'm gonna write a great film. Like I instead, wh why do you need someone else to force it for you? Like it's how do you think men did it? If if that's like, your yeah, issue, yeah. Do you think? If you're trying to fix a problem, though, if somebody, let's say somebody comes up to me and they say, Rags, I am poor. What should I do? I would say, well, you should get a job. You're unemployed. That doesn't mean that I am saying or claiming that I have solved the concept of poverty into perpetuity. Yeah. That is saying that if you get a job, that will help you with your situation. And obviously, everybody, there's this context for every single scenario, but... Emma Stone, I can't, I, I'm not 100% sure of the context of that entirely. What was it, Wolf? Was she saying? Uh, she um, said something, she, it was like the uh, Oscar acceptance speech or one of the speeches before they actually announced the Oscar winners. Uh, she was saying something to the effect of um, there's too many men at, in Hollywood and women don't get to do anything. And it's like I can name you several female directors, many yep. female actors. It's like if you want to do something, don't expect it on a silver platter. And like, you go like out and do it. A producer it's gets like to buy CEO whatever thing. they want. They get to fund whatever they want. To say they have to fund females because there's not enough of them. What the hell are you advocating for? How how fucking condescending is that? If you're a woman listening to that, exactly. <laughs> it's like you can't do it on your own. You need help. <sighs> like what's stopping them yeah i just give and you know if you have an example for just just you you show some woman is is making a film and then this guy comes in and breaks everything and he says i fucking hate women and i don't need to have a chance i'd be like well that guy is sexist it doesn't you know like the idea that it's like sexism uh is is i don't know culture wide and women are oppressed to be able to make movies i'd be like give me examples I'm a little bit confused on how that works. And Soft again, bigotry of low expectations. And again, I, I wasn't even saying that that solves sexism. I wasn't even talking about sexism in that context. Uh, but it was totally funny. Oh yeah, gotta get you. I mean, really, with how incredibly far left Hollywood is, incredibly far left Hollywood, far left Hollywood. The simple Hollywood truth is, is that SJWs do not. Are we really gonna? Talent. Is so? Does anybody disagree that yeah. Hollywood? How is could you any... possibly disagree with yeah, that? Yeah, of the seventeen hundred or so people watching, is there anybody of the seventeen hundred who disagrees that Hollywood is not far left? Type H if you think that Hollywood is far left. Why I mean, H? I I can't. <laughs> oh, Hollywood. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I just I there's no way. Like people, leftists brag about that. They brag about how Hollywood is super accepting and they brag about how hollywood is super diverse and all this stuff and i like, it, like honestly it, if you, if you don't think that hollywood isn't super left i would be curious to hear if you exist 
Eric and, might and be this the only one. Pointing that out does not make you right or centrist or anything, really. It, it, it doesn't, doesn't even make sense that you would be no. able to draw. It's weird. <laughs> I mean, Karl, Karl Marx is far left, but saying that doesn't make you far right. Yeah, I, I don't get it, Eric. Weird. I don't get it either, Eric. This is a retarded point, and you should be ashamed of yourself. Incredibly far left Hollywood, far left Hollywood. The simple truth is that SJWs do not. Let's think, but there's a lot, there are unironic communists in Hollywood. Yeah, but he's making a joke, so leave him alone. Simple okay. truth is that SJWs do not have talent. Hey, Wolfie. I sure am. Funny. Yeah, we are actually. <laughs> wait, <laughs> yeah. so I gotta play it for the stream. Somehow you guys are ahead of me. <laughs> Even though it's supposed to be synced. Enjoy oh, this bit, chat. We are have talent. Good. Hey, Wolfie, are you having fun in your fucking okay. five hour takedown stream? We don't need so. you. We've got uh, other people who do. So, um, Eric knows that we were going to respond to him, but he said, How long are he, we said he said two hours at the near three hour mark, and he just said five hours at the not even four hour mark. Sorry, Eric. Oh, we beat you. You fucked I think it up Eric, again. Eric thinks that he's good enough to demand that kind of time from us. Well, I mean, yeah, an extra hour for you, Eric. I mean, come on. That's, come on, man. that's pushing it. And, that's uh, pushing it. And he said he's never going to watch it, guys, so... Um, okay, that's fine. That's that's on him. He's, he's welcome to not. still... He hides his likes and dislikes. Of course he's not going to watch this. Um, but yeah, he, he's still welcome to come on, of course. I just, <laughs> there's just no way he's going to, but it's like, you can. Um, but yeah, and that's it. So... We so did Wolf it. is a far right neo Nazi because reasons. I mean, I could, because Hollywood is far left. Got I it. I can't even really make a summary for that video. It's, a, it's no. There's a very fucking wibbly wobbly structure. Like considering it's a response to the Sonic Wolf, and it has five percent of Wolf's videos put in near the beginning, and then a slight bit at the end, and then a bunch of other people he's sort of responding to, and then this whole commentary on whether forced diversity exists as a, as a defined thing, how it affects stuff, and you just you just sit there wondering, like, wouldn't this just have be... You don't need the, a response to Dishonored Wolf part, and you could have taken Wolf out and just had your view on forced diversity, because you barely even consider what Wolf's saying. You just treat this as like a, aha, I've counted you. It's like, Yeah, this you? is... I mean, this is... Even calling this a response to the Dishonored Wolf is kind of like... I mean, technically, some of it was, but mostly you were just making shit up about him that he I didn't suppose say. In some definition, it was in some way, but most of it wasn't. It, it's weird because he even has in the title is a. Even in the title, it starts off with "What is forced diversity?" That's not the title of my video. The problem with forced diversity. Yeah, but he, in, at no point in this video does he explain what forced diversity is, like the title would suggest. Yeah, define your terms, man. It's basic shit. It's like you... Uh... Um, <sighs> yeah, I'm gonna finish up on some super chats and then we will be able to do our outro in which there will be a, um... Well, a surprise of sorts. <laughs> I just realized, like, I was expecting us to get through Eric Taxon in, like, two hours, maybe three. We've managed to go to nearly four. It's like, fuck me. So, um... <laughs> <clears throat> hey guys, I was wondering if any of you have read any of the Horus Heresy series, and if so, what are your thoughts on what you've read? Love to see you, Wolf, do a review on a few of them. No I've idea what that is. I've not read them. Never no, heard of it's it. It's a Warhammer 40k. Oh. I have not read the books. I'm afraid I've not heard of them. Uh, in Egypt, we love Braveheart, and it's 100% white movie. Also, I love The Godfather, and it's a 99% white movie, and I'm black, and I love it. But anyway, guys... No, they're yeah, down. Well, they're from Italy. See, that's a whole other conversation. Uh, the idea of, should... Uh, you know, like, can, can black children uh, be inspired by white characters? Um, I know, when I was a kid, whenever Static Shock was on TV, I watched the shit out of it. I mean, Ripley was one of my, like, childhood heroes, so... <laughs> it's like, uh -oh. I'm glad I'm not the only one that remembers Static Shock, because yeah, I boy. genuinely liked that show. <laughs> yeah, Static Shock was good. I don't think I ever watched the end of it. Didn't they get cancelled after, like, two seasons or something? I don't know. The show wasn't bad. And then yeah, again, I, I was a kid, so I don't know if maybe. It yeah, was I mean, gra I granted, I. Yeah, sure. I could do the same thing. I, I, I mean, just have fond memories of it. Was good, so. Yeah. Um, the old gods pissed over the desert and made mescaline. A quote for the return of Wolf. I don't. Um, what does that mean? Uh, I don't know. All my favorite people on YouTube. Hi, Wolf. That's uh, neat. Uh, hey, Wolf is back. How's everyone doing? Doing good. I'm swell. 
great. Magical evil. <laughs> Uh, I wish my GF put in my place like Ray did to Kylo in TFA and just tell me you'll never be as strong as Darth Vader. Very powerful scene. Couldn't sleep. Cry face. I mean, I, I reckon you're being sarcastic. The Room is a white movie and it's written badly. I mean, I just, the, the comparisons he brought up were very, very odd. This is the thing. This would all be sorted if he actually did come on this podcast, but it's just never going to happen. So why is it it, be, no, it, it would have been yeah. sorted if he was even remotely honest with his depiction of my video. Hmm. Or if he offered one example of Force diversity being good. Got Lady of the Rings, of the Rise Earth. of the Planet of the Apes with women. <laughs> he just put with women on the end of movies. Rise of the Planet of the Apes with, with women. women. <laughs> yeah, like I said, Rise of the Planet of the... Well, I was going to say, it's so clunky. You just start putting with women on the end of known titles. Did you guys like that movie, Sea Biscuit with Women? <laughs> with women. That was a good one. That was a good one. I really like that one. Jaws. I like, I like with women. With women in it. Uh, Snoke is forced diversity. If he were a deformed female, he would have been a good character. True. No, they Absolutely tried to make true. a they tried to make a quiet place with women, but they just didn't think it would be realistic. Personally, my favorite was the woman in the striped pajamas. <laughs> with women. The woman in the striped pajamas. <laughs> uh, forced diversity ruined modern comics. Yeah, see, that's another whole thing. Uh, what's damaged the Marvel comic industry of? Like, oh yeah, they don't sell shit anymore. They're, yeah, their comics are like fucking tanking. Uh, also, did you guys catch uh, that new movie, Thelma and Louise and Women? <laughs> <laughs> uh, F.E. Bad? Fee Bad? Uh, Star Wars had zero... Iron, I'll... Iron Man. Oh. <laughs> is iron. Oh. Yeah, yeah um, in Latin, ferrum. It's so, iron. It's a good one. It's a periodic uh, table, yeah. So, yeah. Star Wars had zero albino uh, Africans. Star Wars is racist. It's true, it's true. Fun fact. Just because they're albino doesn't mean they're not black. I have, I, I don't yeah, know enough I, about that. <laughs> I think he was, I was joking around. Anyway. I don't even uh, know the. I don't even know how I'd respond to that either. They're black on the inside. Fun That's fact: it's dark. in the deleted scene from Alien, the guy attacked in the vent is revealed to still be alive, and the Stromo explodes. Uh, so the black guy is second to last if we include it. So yeah, yeah, Wolf, idiot. Yeah, stupid. Yeah, uh, I don't, I don't know my Alien more. Fallout 76 Game of the Year Edition review, 2 out of 10, not as bad as what is forced diversity, a response to Dishonored Wolf, rags. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's, that says a lot, because Fallout 76 is pretty bad. Mm. I'm late, but welcome back, Wolf, we missed you a lot. Oh, it's just so many nice people today for you, Wolf. It's, it's so Hooray! Uh, the new Bond movie won't have Craig. Sad, though, I will vote either Will Smith or Christian Bale, because they're good actors. Thoughts on this, guys? Isn't it Idris Elba is, is who they were going with? That's what I thought yeah. it was. Yeah. Which is um, weird. Yeah, it's not gonna, even the first time that Idris Elba is going to be playing a white role. <laughs> he did the same thing with the Dark Tower. Yeah. It's really irritating. Granted, he was like, prob in all honesty, he was probably the least offensive thing in the Dark Tower movie. But, um, yeah, it's, it's weird. <laughs> We've got a super chat that says, okay, I'll say it. I'm lost. What's going on here? What's this guy going on about? <laughs> um, <laughs> if, you, if you turn off the audio and just stare at the video, it'll probably make more sense. Hey, Wolf's back. Hope you're okay, my dude. Yeah, this is, this is a, lot of, a lot of nice stuff, like I said. It's really good. Uh, we are now yeah. dumber for having heard him. May God have mercy on his soul. I'm sure Eric will be fine. God doesn't like the queers. <laughs> oh, God, he a queer. <laughs> That's what the stories say, so I don't... Uh, so glad you're back, Wolf. Messages. For more on communist Hollywood, a video by Razor Fist gives compelling evidence uh, that they've always been read. People oh yeah, Razor gonna... Fist made a really good video about Hollywood and communism. People are not gonna like me if they <laughs> like Razor Fist soon. <laughs> I think the problem with writers that force diversity is that they put politics ahead of the story, hurting the overall experience. The American comic book industry is a primary victim of it. Yep. Um... Welcome back, Wolf. I love you. I also love Muller and Rags, but I like Wald more. Fight me IRL after school, 3.30 p.m. Um, I like Wald, well, too. Well, if, you like like Wolf, if you like Wolf the most, you're probably a weenie, so I could take you. Mate, he likes Wald more than me, you, and Wolf. Who's Wald. this Wald guy? <laughs> Who's fucking Wald? Get him on this podcast. Yeah, we Wald on the podcast. Where's Waldo? <laughs> uh, Wolf's back. All is right with the world. What are your thoughts on Dirty Harry movies, guys? It wasn't as good as the sequel, Dirty Harry with Women, but... Dirty <laughs> 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 with Women? <laughs> that just sounds like a sex thing. I, you know, I, I think women. someone actually put down Dirty Women in the chat earlier. 
<laughs> tying this meme to the fucking Major Lee one about you can see women. <laughs> it's like, yep, this is all starting to come full circle. Uh, yeah, as for Dirty Harry movies, I, I, like, I, I like them, but I've not really got much passion on the subject. I haven't seen them since yeah, I was Clint, a lot younger. Yeah, Clint Eastwood's a good actor. Um, Dirty Harry wasn't as good as his best to film, which I think was The Good, The Bad, The Ugly, and Women. <laughs> <laughs> This is going to evolve, isn't it? <laughs> There's just so much you can do with it. Uh, Robert Downey Jr., but a woman. <laughs> can EFAP stand for existential fapping, too? Yes, yes. Yeah. We're very yeah. diverse here. Existential fapping is allowed. Deliverance with women. Yep, this is, like I said, never going to end. Um, but yes, that is, that is, I've read this, the Super chat, so I suppose what I should say now is, well, closing up stuff. So, first of all, I don't know if anybody doesn't know, but I'm releasing part one of the critique of The Force Awakens on Christmas Day, as I don't Yay. even know if that's wise or not in terms of like yeah. how your videos will do, but fuck it, I just think it, it matches. It's like maybe, Christmas present. Maybe Christmas Eve as a little stocking stuffer. Oh yeah, could could do it that way. I'll, I'll yeah. figure it out. I'm not sure exactly, but yeah, it'll definitely come out Every one frame of those of days. Um, I don't know if, do either, I, I figure it makes sense for people to want to know, but both of you can talk about what's next for, uh, what's happening with both of you. Uh, we're, uh, I'm, I just, I'm just kind of working away. I got two, I got two kind of projects going up uh, around, still working on them. Did a lot of work on the Jello one yesterday, uh, night, and I woke up right before this, so I haven't had the chance to work on it yet, but I've also got a lot of stuff collected, um, for a Fallout 76 review. So that will be fun. And Wolf? Uh, well, got a couple things to say. Uh, don't, I don't have anything coming out anytime soon, because right now I'm just focusing on finishing my last semester of college, then going to be pretty much hardcore looking into trade schools. This college, you don't learn anything there, aside from shit you already know. And uh, yeah, I, I have some ideas for some videos. Like I mentioned, uh, if you're a Razor Fist fan, you might not like the video I have planned for him because he uh he made a video. Well, it was a while ago. I think it's almost two years now, maybe more than that. Uh, basically saying that The Witcher is blatant plagiarism of Elric. Well, I've actually decided to read the Elric books, and it's like the furthest thing from plagiarism as you can get. There's a couple of things you can like point to as being just totally worthless. Uh, okay, it's like. What's the word? It's I keep thinking cosmetic. It's not cosmetic. Aesthetic? Just, uh, not aesthetic. God, I can't Prost think of the word. Prosthetic? But no, there's no there's no robots. <laughs> Amnes <laughs> amnesiatic? We'll figure out the word of With women? Yeah. With women? <laughs> With women. <laughs> With women. Uh, well, anyway, I actually uh, went out of my way to read the books. Well, I already read the Witcher books on my own because I was like, I just like it. Um, but yeah, he's pretty wrong on that so it's just what a centrist would say definitely but anyway um i it's not like i've worked on any scripts or anything i've pretty much just got like ideas written down of like oh, i might do this eventually one day mm -hmm. uh but yeah it's more so um obviously i've been gone for two months i don't think i really need to get into th the reason on this stream because it's way too long to explain um but yeah, obviously, Wolf, went came, some... Wolf came out as a centrist to his parents. <laughs> <laughs> so we needed some alone time. Yeah, it was some it was horrible. Story. Very, very horrible. But yeah, uh, it's just a couple more of these float in. I'll just get them out of the way. Uh, so someone said Furiosa is an example of a good, a great character from Mad Max Fury Road. Um, I don't think any of the characters were very good in that movie. I think she probably had the most going on in, in I mean, that she, film. She fit. Character wise. Yeah, I wouldn't say she's like a great character, but they weren't like women, 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 women. I need to see it again, honestly, because I saw it, I loved it, and then I watched Yaz's video of it, and I was like, "This has made me rethink my position on this film." <laughs> uh, I would never deny the action is fucking fantastic in that film, though. Um, but yeah, I, yeah, I, I like the cinematography. I didn't really care much about it. So, else, uh, Rhino Milk with women, Warhammer, the Warhammer, the Women Times, Woo Molar episode for Christmas about time you. Uh, again as well it's nearly three hours the video so it's not like I'm putting out a half hour thing it's like finally a big chunky 
thing to actually watch for my channel because it's been like two months since I put anything out and I do feel awful about it, but it's coming, I swear. Um, I'm hurt my spelling was made fun of. Check your privilege, check your privilege, you animals and Mola, of course. And finally, water is not wet, which, uh, beautiful. So, before we, we go out, um, as we did mention, Joseph Anderson did release a hilarious video. And, uh, the thing is, Wolf was coming back, so we couldn't do that. We had to do the Eric Taxon thing. So we decided that we may do two episodes in one night. Um, if you guys... We're not going to sleep, people. Oh, if... shit balls. I was just asleep before I came. <laughs> so, we're gonna go offline. Of we're gonna go offline ten minutes from now. We're gonna boot up EFAP number 16. And who knows how long that'll last, so... Hopefully you guys can survive such a crazy thing. Yeah, chat seems relatively we happy go, with this. <laughs> before we go, just real quick, thanks for all the nice comments. Rags has sent me a ton of the ones that he's seen. Seen a lot of the chats and comments of the past EFAP since I left. Yeah, I mean, obviously there's going to be people that are shitty and are going to continue to be shitty. But um, yeah, I just want to say thanks. It really made me feel better. Yeah, man, it's good to have you back. Uh, we got the powerful core of EFAB. You know, EFAB isn't the same without you. We've got we need... the axis of evil. Once again, mm -hmm. we're formed. Prepare for us to make a whole bunch of enemies. <laughs> the Illuminati triangle has finally come in but full. But a whole lot of friends, pyramid. too. So yeah, for the for the people on, on the Moolah channel, they'll be like, a four-hour EFA. Actually, that's a long one, so they should be happy. They're getting a whole bunch, so... Um... Well, they're getting two EFAPs in one night. Exactly. So we will be back. We're going to go offline for probably 10, 15 minutes to just, you know, pretend that we actually have lives briefly. Stretch our legs and But pee. next up will be Joseph Anderson versus subjectivity, I suppose, which who knows how long that'll last. So thank you all for, for the generous donations, the kind words to... Uh, to Wolf and, of course, the, the podcast itself. We always have lots of fun here. And thank you, Eric, for trying whatever that was. Um, good luck in the future, my friend. And uh, yes, Heil uh, Quentin. Heil Quentin, <laughs> indeed. Thank you all, and goodbye. See you soon. See ya.